Good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're watching. Welcome to Sim Broadcast and welcome especially to the Argentina Turismo 6 Hours of Aston, the second endurance race we've hosted on our channel this year. Part of the endurance, uh, sorry, the uh, endurance series from Argentina Turismo and this event also 
supported by New Dimension Racing. I'm Peter Butcher, you're watching Sim Broadcast on Twitch and YouTube, and joining me in the commentary box throughout the day, we're going to have a number of the Sim Broadcast team in the background uh, for as much of the broadcast as he's capable. Chris McElroy on direction and replays. Yes, you heard that right, replays are back. Um, then alongside me right now, it's Travis Mellinger and Owen Harmon. And then later on, after his stint, it's going to be Sir Dravko to Polnyak joining us in the commentary box uh, later on. Uh, we'll start with you, Owen. It's another endurance race in LFS. It's great to be back. You bet, everybody. And it is indeed a welcome return to endurance racing uh, near the end of 2022 after we had a summer edition in Kyoto. So I'm really looking forward to this. Travis, you're up at uh, what time is it there? Uh, I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and right now it is 10 till 6 in the a.m. It is still dark outside. I'm looking out my window, and I can't see anything. Uh, but I am I am thrilled to be here. It is bright and sunny in uh, in pretend race car world, so I'm thrilled to be joining you guys. Yeah, welcome back to the Sim Broadcast booth. You're, you're doing this in solidarity for the enormous amount of uh, Americans on, on that side of the world that are joining uh, the action today. We, we don't actually have any representation from North America, Travis. You are the only one. Yeah, there is a uh, there is a team in the entry list called Team America, and I saw that and I thought Team America, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it is South Americans, no uh, nobody from the United States here. But a uh, since you mentioned it, huge representation from Argentina. The uh, the Argentina Turismo team has put on a couple great events, and they've got a lot of people excited to join from their home country. So I think this will be great for us, great for them too. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, let's get down to our formalities. We have around 10 minutes to go before we hit the track, before the drivers start their formation lap around Aston Grand Prix. And we need to tell you a little bit, a bit about Aston Grand Prix, the track that we're using today. 8.8 kilometers, 5.5 miles is the longest standard configuration that LFS currently offers. And you heard it right. We have six hours of racing action coming your way around this 19 corner uh, behemoth. And we are thrilled. We are absolutely thrilled. This event organized, of course, by Argentina Turismo, uh, sponsored and broadcasted by ourselves at Sim Broadcast with support from New Dimension Racing. And you can catch all of the live timing at tracker.newdimensionracing.com, the link at the bottom of the broadcast there. So that's tracker.newdimensionracing.com for all the live timing throughout today's race. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that's the track. Let's talk about the car that the drivers are using. Now, a bit of a change from the previous um, endurance race that the Argentina Turismo team had in that that was a multi-class race. This time we've done away with the GTRs and instead we are going to just be using the Prototype 2, the LMP2 mod by Chemblock 30 in collaboration with uh, Bar SS, GTA Max 89 and Facu 23. Uh, these guys actually are members of the Argentina Turismo team. So they they built this mod um, pretty much specifically for their endurance race but then obviously it's available for you guys to play around with in the sim as well. It's a 4.2 litre V8 rear wheel drive car with 604 brake horsepower and it weighs just under a tonne. It's rapid, Travis. Uh, we've talked about its comparisons uh, between LFS and, and the other sims that it's available in. Um, but all that really needs to be said is that it is a very, very nice mod. It really is. This car is a weapon. It is so much fun to drive. Uh, I, I prefer, and I'm sure people remember uh, Tom and I talking about these cars on past broadcasts. Um, well, I, we love prototype cars, and I the LMP2 in iRacing, ooh, I said it, is, uh, is my favorite car in Sims to Drive, and this one is even better. Uh, you can feel so much of the grip, and you can feel the, the, you know, the weight of the steering wheel in your hands and lift for speed because the, you know, the feedback is so good. Uh, this car is really fun to drive, really challenging to drive. We got uh, we got some inside information from uh, Stravko about what the uh, what the strategy will look like and how teams um, may have tried to set up their cars for this event. So, fun car to drive, uh, very rewarding car to drive. But especially around this Aston GP circuit, I think it's going to be pretty challenging for a lot of the drivers we will see on track today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, we, we take your word as gospel because you do have a lot of experience uh, with this car, both in uh, LFS and iRacing. So um, thanks for that, Travis. We need to talk about the qualifying for this race because the qualifying happened in two sessions over the last week and that has whittled down our grid to about 24 cars. And we're going to show the, those on the stream right now uh, because the pole sitters are Yes Motorsports. Kabor Gure put that uh, car on pole with a 225.44 alongside Very Fast Monkey Sport. That was Yoni Katilla who did that. Uh, he's driving alongside Nico Pantola. And uh, yeah, you can see here that we have 
um, well, this is our this is the top fourteen uh, that we have uh, in, in in representation today. Rejected by Yaroloko Esports in P3, Born to Race P4, Furtive Junior P5, Knight of Velox team with Alan Terzic and Dennis Lind in it in P6, Team Siders Far Off Pace in P7. Then the first of three Furtive Racing teams in uh, P8 and 9. Uh, then we have Imbica Racing in P10, uh, with Furtive, uh, Furtive Racing 11 in P11. Lycan Racing, Race Green North Sports and Team America round out our top 14. Uh, there is a second page of entries into this race. Uh, a few DNFs, unfortunately, well, DNQs, um, but there we go. Furtive Junior, the second Furtive Junior team in P15. When Update, Aston Simsports, uh, Eric Blix and Martin Capal uh, in P16. Lost Connection team, Gum Garage, MRC Brazil, Team America and Road Appraiser Racing Team in P21. Then we've got Gum Garage, Ferret Motors and Road Appraiser Racing Team in number two. Uh, the only team that didn't set a time in qualifying but will qualify for the event there in P24. And then Ford Rally Sport Team, two other entries did not qualify along with Hormiga Loka Racing. Uh, Owen, we have six minutes to go. We have a fantastic grid here. Um, a lot of familiar names, a lot of familiar teams. Um, we've seen them out before. But there shouldn't be any surprises with the sort of uh, excite excitement that this is going to generate here. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, lots of familiar names and indeed... Uh... The mixture of uh, regular team names and humorous uh, entries that will uh, make things extra spicy in the commentary box. Uh, but yeah, obviously qualifying, uh, when we look back on the six hours, certain teams might feel, ah, that didn't matter. We were probably like uh, in the middle of the pack and we did really well for ourselves. But yeah, uh, with the first four drivers uh, and teams there, I'd say they are the outstanding candidates. Uh, we'll be watching them from the very start. Yeah. Uh, Qualifying is just a, a way of getting the cars on the grid, but six hours, anything can change and very, very quickly. Yeah, it can. Uh, Travis, especially with the length of some of the straights around here, it's going to be a mad, mad rush to turn one. Yeah, this is a, it is a mad rush down to turn one. And then it's a little tricky because the first quarter is so quickly. You've got those you know, very gentle sweeping bends right and left as you go toward that first corner. And then that first corner is a very fast fourth uh, at the start of the race in, in heavy fuel, probably a fourth gear corner. But uh, later on in the race, it uh, might be a fifth gear corner, just a, a dab of the brakes and lift. Uh, I think it's often a bit safer to go into a slower corner with that many cars bunched up because everybody needs to slow down and you know, the... Uh, you know, the consequences of coming together with another car aren't uh, aren't quite so severe when the cars are you know slowing down to you know hairpin speed, uh, but it'll be tricky for them to get through the first sequence of corners. And then there's another long straight after that very first corner down to a hairpin. So cars should be strung out by then. Hopefully they all get through the first corner just fine. It's tempting to go side by side, but on cold tires and a full load of fuel, it can be pretty tricky. You're exactly right, Pete. Yeah, four minutes to go. Uh, this race will have um, the full complement of rescue cars and safety cars. So as um, as we saw in the previous six hour at Kyoto in February, I think it was, um, we will have a, a warm up lap, a pace lap behind the safety car. And then the cars will line up side by side for a flying start. Travis, we love flying starts. We do love flying starts. I enjoy a standing start, but uh, a flying start, especially here, uh, because they will be going at terminal velocity going into the first corner, uh, just gives us a little bit more excitement than we might see with cars coming off the line. Um, yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> I also I have a bit of a bias here. It's a, I'll, I'll call it American style racing for cars to roll off with the safety car peeling off before the uh, uh, before they come around to cross the grid for the first lap. Um, but yeah. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this very much. Yeah, the the, uh, the preparation is done. The drivers are ready, or at least we hope they're ready uh, to go. We're all ready. Uh, we'll, we'll find out how ready we are by the time the, the lights go green. Um, but yeah, the, when all said and done, this has been an incredibly uh, you know thorough um, build up from the Argentina Turismo team. They always put so much effort in, and there's a few surprises that are going to be thrown in during this race, I'm sure, um, because you know they. They really do a good job of organising these races, so we're excited for instalment number two. The Six Hours of Aston uh, coming up very, very shortly. And before we hit the grid uh, for real, um, the team have pre prepared a, a little graphic for us that we're going to run down as quickly as we can. So um, let's see how this goes. Uh, we will do the grid presentation before we go to the track. 
So here it is, the starting grid for the six hours of Aston. On the front row, it's Yes Motorsports alongside the number 77 very fast Monka Sport. Then on row two, the 99 rejected by Yara Loco Esports alongside Born to Race number 23. On row three, Furtive Junior and Knight of Velux. Row four, Team Side is far off the pace with Furtive Racing. Row five, another Furtive Racing car, the number 10 alongside Imbica Racing number two. Row six, Furtive Racing number 11 with the number 75 Lycan Racing Machine. Then we've got Race Green Autosports alongside Team America. Furtive Junior number 30 alongside Side when update Aston Simsport, the number 69. Further back, Lost Connection 56 alongside the 42 Gum Garage car. Then Master Race Cars Brazil entry, the number 51 alongside Team America 55. Then it's Road Appraiser Racing Team, the number 40 alongside Gum Garage 43. And at the back, Ferret Motors will line up alongside Rose Appraiser Racing Team number 57. Gents, that was a nice graphic. We enjoy that. And uh, yeah, we are moments away. It's a nice graphic and an impressive presentation. Uh, I was I was really hoping you were gonna you were gonna throw the qualifying drivers' names in there too, but I think that might have been a little much. Either way, hats off to you, Pete. That uh, that was great. Thank you for presenting that. It would have taken about seven times as long if we'd have added in drivers. And uh, well, yeah, there we go. We can talk about the drivers to the end of the earth during the actual race, but the the, the order, the qualifying order, we can only talk about during the first uh, couple of moments here. Um, and yeah, it is 12 o'clock. The race is due to get underway any second now. So we are just waiting yeah. now with bated breath. Do see drivers readying up in the lobby. Um, while they're doing that, let's talk about strategy a little oh, bit, guys. Okay. Good. We got uh, we got some inside information from uh, Stravko, like we usually do before every event. He gives us a very detailed rundown of what he expects before the race. And the, uh, the thing that is most interesting to me that he told us uh, was that he expected we might see three or four different strategies. So he was pretty clear with us that R3, R3 is the way to go unless there are some enterprising teams who, who want to take a chance on, on the harder compound and go longer. Uh, but he proposed a wide variety of fuel stops. I'm curious what you guys think we might see. Yes. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Good one Any word answer. Uh, it's impossible uh, to say you're at, if you're at the back, yeah, you should be on your toes uh, in case something happens. But if the front runners, yeah, as Stravko knows what he's talking about, and I'd say you'd be able to formulate that plan um, and see if it pays off. Yeah, so he's proposed for our for our viewers. Uh, he's proposed uh, 36 lap stints, so 18 and 18 laps. You can go full tank of fuel. Uh, lasts about about 18 laps around this track. Um, but uh, he said it's difficult to keep the difficult to keep the pace up when the, the tires start to wear off. About four or five laps left on them. Uh, so then he suggested that we might see a mix of teams going longer stints, 18 laps, with shorter stints on fuel um 12 12 12 so i think i'm kind of hopeful he, his predictions are usually pretty good i'm hopeful that we'll see a mix of these strategies and then perhaps with the safety car here and there uh blow it wide open with cars getting off cycle and maybe trying to stretch fuel at the end um but we got six hours and it's uh you know there's always always something surprises us as it pans out toward the end of the race i think we'll get to see a good variety of uh of strategy calls today yeah, almost certainly. Um, you know, it's impossible for us to say which teams are going to go for which strategy. Um, Owen alluded to the fact that it's going to differ up and down the grid, and it absolutely is, depending on, you know, where you end up being after your first stint will depend on how you're going to run the rest of the race. Um, yeah, how long do we reckon stints are going to be then, each individual stint? Stravko said 18 for uh, for the first one on a tank of fuel, unless unless some drivers choose to go short on fuel to help save the tires. Um, but yeah, I mean, 18, 18 and 18 gets two full tanks of fuel. Um, one set of tires will last almost that long. Um, what I wonder, what I really wonder, among all the other things that I've wondered in the last couple minutes, is uh, if some teams will try to take a chance on stretching the tires because they do, you know, they get so cold and the grip goes away so quickly when they've worn, you know, nearly down to the belts on these uh, on these cars. If some teams will try to take a chance to stretch their strategies and give them more flexibility in the end of the race, or if they'll decide to play it safe and just try to run on pace to stay at or near the top. 
again, yeah, both viable strategies. Um, apologies here for the delay. Uh, we are three minutes behind time, and it is because we have drivers that are still getting ready in the background. Um, but we ensure you that we will have some some pictures of race cars on the track very soon. Uh, just you know, th these things never get away on time, do they? Um, but there we go. Let's head to the track then and see our warm up lap. I uh, just spotted on the in-game interface that wind speed is 13 miles per hour. I couldn't see where it's uh, blowing, but uh, that's very hefty wind speed that will uh, affect the drivers in particular. Uh, I just need more information exactly how that is going to uh, be produced on the track, but yeah, we are waiting for a formation lap now. Yeah, and that uh, I recall that wind produced uh, an exciting finish to the, the six-hour race at Kyoto. Um, we hadn't realized it at the time, or if we if we had realized it at the beginning of that race, we had forgotten it by the time we got five and a half hours in, uh, that uh, Stravka Toponiak was right on Pablo Saitone's tail, you know, racing, racing nose to tail for the top spot at the end of that race, and they both went into the, I can't remember the number of the corner at the Kyoto Grand Prix circuit, but the Degner corner. Um, they, uh, they both caught a gust of wind and went into the barriers one after another. And, and we all went bananas because we didn't expect them to follow one another off the circuit and into the tires. Uh, so that could be a factor today. 13, 13 mile per hour wind is pretty strong. And if they get a big gust across one of these fast corners, you know, in particular, uh, you know, the very first corner or any one of the sweeping bends around the backside of the circuit, uh, a surprise gust of wind could completely change the complexion of the race like it nearly did for the, the six hour in Kyoto. Yeah, this is a long hold on the grid at the moment. So um, we are going to we are going to be waiting for a while. I think, um, unfortunately, we have some technical difficulties in the background. So we are going to be having a little bit of a hold here and an, and an eventual restart uh, so that the drivers don't have to start this race on entirely cold tires. Uh, here is the safety car, by the way. We haven't talked about this yet. But this is a great mod that's been put together by the Argentina Turismo team, replacing the Aston Martin we had last time out. Gents, I think it looks stunning. You bet, yeah, it's absolutely magnificent. And uh, we'll get to see the livery on the side as well uh, when we get going. Yeah, it's absolutely spot on. It's a, you know, true to life Mercedes. Isn't yeah, this is a, a beautiful car. I love the uh, the nod to sim broadcasts on the on the sides, on the doors of this car. Um, Pete, uh, Pete had some influence on the livery for this machine while we were getting prepared for the event. Um, and uh, I think... I think you had you had great suggestions, Pete, because this car looks brilliant. Yeah, well, and uh, as well as that, while we were talking about it, we have some movement, um, and we have our cars ready to go. And this is exciting. This is where the the feet start to jangle, the the the, the palms start to get sweaty, uh, not just for the drivers, but also for us in the commentary box. Uh, we have Zdravko Topolniak taking the Yes Motorsports machine. Um, on the parade lap, he is going to be starting this race from pole. His teammate, Gabor Gure, put the car on pole position. Uh, gents, anyone else we want to talk about as we weave around the formation lap? Well, I could talk about Stravko uh, until until I'm a horse and unable to speak anymore. Uh, I really like this car, by the way. The uh, the the uh, Fragmaster, you know, teal blue replaced with the S Motorsport purple looks really, really good. This guy that we just put the camera on right here, Isaac Price uh, with Tadis Lagutskas, uh, he is always quick, and he tends to, he used to be a regular in uh, in Live for Speed events, and now he tends to turn up for these bigger ones, and he always impresses. If I recall correctly, did he and his, did, did he and Vitalis Lagutskas win the GT category in the six-hour race at Kyoto? I think they did, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, we'll have to dig him out to get the results. That's uh, a little bit of a... Um... Well, uh, hindsight issue there. Uh, we should definitely have uh, pulled those up, but there we go. We can look at it. And uh, well, they, they certainly finished pretty highly. Um, they did. Uh, I had the graphic handy and I just had to switch over to it, and they did indeed. Vitalis Lagutskas took that car over the line ahead of Gabor, who, uh, who finished second in the GT category in XRR, who's now driving in the top class today. Well, only one class today, but in, uh, in LMP with Dravka Dupanya. I want to mention very quickly while they while the cars head onto the back straight, uh, a big shout out to the Furtive Junior team. <laughs> you know why? Furtive Junior, one of the Furtive Junior teams, there are two of them here, um, out qualified everyone else in the Furtive uh, lineup. So even uh, three of the Furtive racing uh, outfits. 
And I'm a little skeptical that they're junior too, because uh, I don't. We haven't seen much from Federico Fernandez, who is the second driver in that car. But uh, we know Alejandro Trespalosios is uh, is a very talented driver. Um, he he ran in the MRC BF1 series and was uh, was pretty competitive. I recall, I think it was at Fern Bay, he had a uh, a surprising result where he was driving consistently. Um, he was driving consistently while other drivers were were bumping each other off or otherwise just having a lot of difficulty. Uh, you know, we're not supposed to have favorites in the booth, but uh, I think we were rooting for him as he steadily crept his way up the other while while his competitors fell by the wayside. So, yeah, not not we don't we don't think of Alejandro Trespalacios as a junior driver, but perhaps his teammate somewhat less experienced. But either way, as you said, hats off to them for putting the furtive team, the furtive name uh, above all of the uh, the regulars, if you will, from uh, from that garage. Absolutely. We're making our way down the order here. We're down to the uh, Lost Connection team. Oh, Isaac Price has spun it. Oh. Isaac Price is stuck in the middle of the road here. Oh, what's oh, going on? Me. And the S Motorsport driver as well. So we've got uh, two cars spinning out. These these guys will surely be allowed to... Uh, will they be allowed to, to rejoin Zravko to Polniak? Has he got damage on that car? I mean, yes, he has. He does. Uh, okay, so they're going to have to go for a second, second lap around. This cannot stand. Um, Driver spinning on the formation lap is not what we want to see. There's a significant amount of damage, at least cosmetic, on the front of uh, Zdravko's car. He is re rejoining. He's very quickly moving his way through the pack here. This is uncomfortable viewing. Um, and we completely didn't see what happens. We will grab a replay of it, of course, when time allows, um, to see exactly what on earth happened on the formation lap. Very unusual. Goodness me. Well, yeah. we'll see what Race Direction want to do here. Good recovery by him to weave through the traffic and get back up to the front, but to think, yeah, you know, in basically every other form of motorsport, that would be that would be a bit naughty to rejoin your position. But maybe he was maybe he was bumped. That wasn't his fault. Well, uh, as you said, left we'll wait for the replay. But they're coming across the line, Pete. Get us started. It sounds like we're going green. Uh, that was a little bit frantic, and the drivers probably put off by that. The, the cars aren't even too wide yet, so um, it looks like the drivers have even got to get into formation. Uh, a lot of confusion down the line and well confusion as to whether we're even going to go green here that's the, the drivers are almost in formation we have red lights on hold and well we've gone over start finish and oh. we have green flag racing yeah, the longest yeah, pass. yeah and some uh as it, as it happens but there we go um a clean start so far zdravko to polnia oh, oh no. goodness me that's Pantola. Nico Pantola getting it all wrong straight off the start. Him and Yoni Catilla uh, have a, a big challenge now, and that car surely with suspension damage uh, off the bat. But uh, changes up front as well. We've got cars side by side, three wide with uh, Knight of Velox and two of the furtive cars. That's uh, Knight of Velox at the back here. And we're watching the number 90. Furtive racing car of Sant'Andrea on the inside here, and the car going wide. Rick yeah, Rick was just a little bit high out of the first hairpin there. Um, Lind on the inside of Tres Palacios, and more gaggles of cars. Oh, tag! I think uh, Quinteros hit the back of his teammate and he spun around. Yeah, that's Furtive racing car facing the wrong direction. Yeah, we are green flag racing here. Isaac Price now going side by side uh, with Smark Vicious and getting through back up to P2. Side by side action in the background as well. Dennis Lind getting involved here uh, with the number 90. 70. Yeah, sorry guys. There's a car. There's a car went straight off, uh, coming down the back straight into that sweeping left and right hand bend. Looked like it might have been Morera or Trudini. I'm not sure about that, but seems to have rejoined. Um, ah, and there now we've got Suarez off the screen. There's actually it may have been Suarez who went off and ended up in the gravel. Um, looking at Nico Pantola, there is a lot of damage on the front of that car. He went off and took a very big hit in the Armco barrier on the right side of the straightaway at the very start. He's rejoined 14th. He's fighting Barton Paul. Um, one of our sim broadcast teammates uh, for the 13th position right now, but lots of damage on the front of that machine. Um, as you said, they will have their work cut out for him. He and Yoni Cotilla, though, uh, I'll mention Yoni Cotilla since we're looking at the very fast monkey sport machine right now. Uh, Yoni Cotilla is a very experienced and race winning endurance racing driver. Um, do you guys happen to know his most recent uh, endurance racing result? I should know the answer to this, but I don't. Are you going to tell us? 
I am going to tell you. I'm very pleased with this. Uh, I <laughs> drove with him and Tom Jones and uh, and Martin Bucken and Nico Pantola uh, in a 24-hour race at Le Mans in iRacing, and we took the top spot in the top category. Here we've got a fight on with Lara, the number 52, uh, alongside Nico. So Nico trying to uh, regain positions as quickly as he possibly can. There he is, up to P12. Michael Malik in the draft as well in the 47 Ferret Motors car. Here he comes. He's going to try and go around the outside. That's not going to work, surely. No, not quite. Nico Patola drives the car in deep, manages to hold the inside of that corner. It doesn't... I think he was leaving Michael Malik room. He had uh, he had space to go all the way out to the side of the road, but a good defense from him. Um, worth mentioning, behind him, Michael Malik is driving a solo effort in that car today. He's the only driver in that machine. We usually see him with MRC, but now uh, he is a he is a solo driver in the number 47, and so far looking pretty strong. Nico Patola has mirrors full of him, and we know Michael is is pretty talented. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he can work his way up the order, but I dare say he will be pretty tired by the end of this race. Dravko Topolniak must be absolutely rattled after that first, uh, after that formation lap. He's now pulling so far ahead um, of Isaac Price, who is battling with the 23 of Smoke Vicious here. Look at this, Born to Race going around the outside potentially here. Uh, Owen? Yeah, I'm watching this battle for sure. Price hanging on the inside line out of turn nine. But he's not going to have the inside into 10, although Price is able to uh, re re resist the uh, battle for now. Uh, it's obviously single file sort of portion of the track coming up. Maybe now out of 12 into 13, there's a chance. Yeah, Price is struggling with the back end compared to Smalkovicius. This is going to become a train very, very quickly if he carries on with this. Look at the cars going super wide. It can't, it can't stay in the slipstream. And my goodness me, is uh, Isaac Price struggling at the moment um, with, with cars stacking up behind him. Rick Cardle for um, team side as far off the pace then going for a move. Yeah, Isaac stretched a little bit of a gap coming up the hill here because he was the uh, he's the only one in this short train that drove that that sweeping right hand bend correctly. You you mentioned Pete that everybody went out wide to the side of the road and couldn't stay in the slipstream. That's because the uh, the wide line there is actually slower. Uh, it makes the track so much longer, and going full throttle is typically what carries you out carries you that far out the side of the road. You end up scrubbing speed and using up the tires. It slides there offline. So Isaac. Isaac knows the quickest way around, and uh, if he can repeat this and the drivers behind him uh, keep making that mistake, I think he will, I don't know if he'll close the gap to the front, because he is losing a tenth here and there to his drive to Pontiac, but uh, he may, I think he will keep the other cars behind him. Um, Meta Smelkovicius behind him in the 23 machine, uh, who was right behind Isaac Price a moment ago, has Ayub Elanuni for his teammate, and we know that they are quick. Um, Ayub, a race winner in uh, one of the uh, one of the BF1 seasons we covered last year, I think he won. I'm trying to remember where he won. I believe it was at one of the Fern Bay events, but I'm not sure about that. Um, Ayub, the uh, the only Moroccan driver, and I think the only driver from Africa that Correct. we have in this event. Uh, we know he's quick, uh, and he and Isaac Price together. I think we will see them at the front of the order the entire day. Yeah, we've got some drama at the back here. Race Green Autosports, uh, Lachidi at the wheel of that, having side-by-side -side contact with Costa in the Team America machine there, I believe. Uh, in fact, no, this uh, that was the Master Race Car Brazil entry, I'm sorry. Um, it was Lara uh, in the background who was having side-by-side -side action with him. Um, and, uh, well, over the last lap or so, I'd have to say that Zdravko Topolniak's lead has been eaten into a little bit, um, but not by much. They're still very, very close from P2 down to P5 with Dennis Lindau in the number 69 Vel Velox machine uh, clinging on to the back of this train. Um, he hasn't made up any places from uh, the start, but, uh, you know, it's a long race. You don't necessarily need to make up places immediately. You just have to hang on for as long as uh, possible. Yes, indeed, Pete. And I propose, um, as we watch cars come through this this fast series of bends on the back side of the circuit. Uh, Meta Smolkovicius caught up ever so slightly to Isaac Price in that, you know, that uphill third gear hairpin before they went through that series of sweeping bends. And I suspect what we see here is a substantial difference in strategy or uh, in car Sorry setup. to interrupt here. We've got a car off. It's the Road Appraiser Racing Team number 40 off into the wall. Carry on, Travis. 
And I think Isaac Price might be carrying less downforce than the drivers behind him because Mantis Malkovicius was able to catch him uh, pretty quickly through that that series of bends on the backside of the circuit. And now that they are on a long straightaway, Isaac Price is stretching the advantage ever so slightly. So I think Isaac may be on a little bit less downforce. Yeah, you can see Smoke of Issues just falling behind him in the background there. And fastest lap of the race, as I said, that by Isaac Price. trouble on the back straight, I think. Pardon the interruption. Uh, couldn't quite catch who it was. It was might have been Pekanko. Yeah, it might have been Pekanko. Just slow out of the final chicane. Uh, thankfully, everyone else uh, was able to go around him if necessary. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, the the uh, the fastest lap at this stage of the race is being passed around like um, like uh, like a disease. Um, it's been going from car to car, and well, everyone wants a, a slice of it at the moment. Isaac Price has hold of it and is he is definitely catching up to the back of Zdravko. So uh, probably the shakiness of the start and and again dropping down the order for Isaac Price and then having to regain the position maybe shook him up a bit at the beginning. He's had to just settle back down into that rhythm. Uh, it was a very frantic start. It was We were wondering whether it was even going to get going. Yeah, and watching Isaac go by, um, he's got a little bit of damage on the front of the car as well. So I do, I wonder if he got together with another car or if maybe his drive coat got you know, a little bit wrong warming the tires himself and they managed to collect one another and, and fall into a barrier. Uh, but uh, Isaac Price has taken a half a second out of his drive code of Pognac in the last lap or so. Uh, meant to smell Cavicius even more on Isaac Price. Uh, we're going to have a five or six car train here before too long if this keeps up. Rick Cardle was just passed by the number 90 furtive racing machine and that puts him right in the clutches of Dennis again uh, in the Knight of Velox car behind. So a change for position there in P4 uh, goes up to P4, the number 90 uh, Sant Andrew driving that one. And Rick may have trouble quicker than he imagined because Dennis is in slipstream. We're going to ride on board with him, are we? Uh, Rick going defensive up to the final hairpin. Dennis is going to try and run it around the outside, all, all the way around the outside, and try and set him up for a late move. Dennis immediately goes defensive. Fantastic. And moves that car up to P5. Yeah, great driving there by Dennis Lynn, uh, who is a very talented driver in the simulator and out. Um, he's been racing at Live for Speed for a very long time. The last 15 years anyway, He's uh, he's been a, a more or less regular in Live for Speed events. Uh, and he's also a, uh, he's a winning driver in real life. If I recall, he raced in Formula Ford. Do you know if that's correct, Pete? I think it was Formula Ford, and he was a, uh, he is a winning driver. Dennis Lind is very talented. Yeah, he's cutting his teeth in some uh, real-world series, um, mentioning Lamborghini uh, as one of them. One of the cars yeah, I probably should have remembered that before Formula Ford. Thanks yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but Formula Ford is, uh, is still, you know, um, uh, very uh, well, very important series, uh, very important car in the racing world. As we've got a car off in the background, was that Pedro Picanco? Yes, it was. He's in the wall. Yeah. So Pedro Picanco uh, showing some some cobwebs at the beginning of this race. This is not what we expect from Pedro at all. No, it's not, and we certainly don't expect him to go right back onto the racing line either. Those two mm. orange cars streaking past him as he rejoined. Uh, he nearly had one of them under the diffuser on the back of that machine. He'll be a little bit slow as he scrubs the, the gravel and dirt off those tires. It's really easy to go off there in the first corner because the you know you you want to carry so much speed through the uh, through the the second half of that corner as it opens up, but it's really easy to put a wheel off the you know, the grass and gravel and dirt creeps right up to the edge of the road. So if you put you put a tire over that white line and in into the the crud and the muck on the side of the road, it just sucks you off. And it looks like that's what happened to him. Yeah, um, it was completely unfortunate. Oh, We've got Michael Malik there. Michael, uh, Michael Malik going off. Uh, in the background, um, and it, that that car is is almost is almost beached, is it? Oh, he's he's managed to get it's it, just saved it, keeping it moving. Um, not enough to cause any sorts of safety car action. Oh, we've got another. No, in fact, there's another car off in the background. Who is that in the background? Capali had a lot of damage. Uh, must have happened just before the exit of turn six. And that car is beached. Uh, that car trouble, is yeah. beached. Uh, it is taking a long time to move the uh, when update Aston Simsports car out of the gravel trap. And uh, this could be cause for some... Um... VSC deployed. Well, there we go. VSC action. So all the cars have to slow down to a designated speed now. 
And uh, while Martin Capal is rescued from the from the gravel, oh goodness me, that's not what you want. Only twenty minutes into the race, and this is going to be a it's going to take him a while to get out. Well, he has actually managed to get a bit of momentum, Travis. Yeah, he's he managed to that honestly pretty impressive because usually when you go deeper into the gravel, the car gets more beached. But you could see him sawing on the wheel in the close up shot to to kind of work the car loose. And I think by the time we look back to him, he'll be on the pavement. So this VSC shouldn't last too long. Um, interesting that it happens right here coming across the start finish line. If they were to turn these drivers loose right now, the cars coming out of the chicane would have an immense advantage over these five or six at the front. I saw somebody duck into the pit lane in the background. That is a dark gray colored car coming to a stop. It's Dennis. Interesting. I was I was just about to suggest that I think it's too early for this to change the strategy, but it looks like Dennis may have opted to top up on fuel as this goes green. I think, is this, yeah, this is going to hurt Dennis Lind. He's already lost two positions through pit lane. Nico Patola's gotten past Nico Patola back up to eighth place after flying well, off yeah. early. Dennis Lind's going to rejoin in ninth or tenth. I don't think Marrera is close. No, Marrera is pretty far behind him. So Dennis Lind gives up a few positions to take on fuel. Uh, so there's, there's one. We talked about this early on before the start of the race that, with six hours, uh, you can there can you can see a lot of different complexions and race strategy. And there's the first one already. Dennis Lind and his teammate going off cycle, choosing to take an early pit stop, top off on fuel, six laps uh, into the race, starting the seventh lap now. As <laughs> we see a little bit of bumping and running, Santandreu up the back of that white and green machine coming through this chicane after the two hairpins. Yeah, absolutely. Set off down the hill again. Just on that note with uh, with Dennis Lind, obviously with the cars going around at, at uh, pit lane speed limit to speed, what Dennis really needed was for it to last maybe 10 seconds longer. Um, it's, a, it's a small numbers game, this endurance racing, especially when the top teams are so close together. And what Dennis obviously is hoping there is that that's enough to make the difference when it comes to the first major round of pit stops. He's now a pit stop down and uh, hopefully for him, it gives him an advantage. Yeah, from what from what Strauko told us before the event, that uh, might be a bit optimistic to stop like that and take on a full load of fuel with tires that are uh, that are a little bit worn. But you know, Dennis Lind is really quick and he's really talented. As we see, Martin Capal well, now in pit lane probably took a fair bit of damage. Yeah, Headed Dennis there. So Dennis gains a position back. Let's see what happened. Unfortunately. No, Chiodini just uh, going a bit slower around there than uh, than Dennis, but you know, keeping it clean. And uh, yeah, I was Martin that, uh, took on repairs. Oh, sorry, Michael oh. is having an absolute mare here. Look at the front of that car now. That is destined for the pit lane. Uh, Michael Malik is doing this solo, and that is not an incident that you want going into. Uh, going into an endurance race. I mean, that is a lot of damage. He's going to have to bring that round to pits. Yeah, if yes. nothing else, he doesn't have a whole lot of damper damage, but I think uh, the uh, yeah the, the aerodynamic influence there is not going to do him any favors. Good to see the number 69 out and driving again. A lot of work to do for Martin Capal and Eric Blix there to try and get that car back up the order. But they're still in it, and that's what you need. Mike Vicious for Born to Race up to P2, getting past Isaac Price on the restart and affecting his advantage at the moment. Uh, Pedro Bicanco appears to have woken up. He's going for a move here, Travis. He's not going for a move. This move is done. He's ahead of Martinez in the 55 machine right here. Uh, looked like Martinez might have tried to get back under him going into the first corner, but Picanco's got it done before they turn in, which is good because it's difficult to go side by side there. Pedro Picanco letting the car run out wide. Now he's got a few car lengths on Martinez behind him, and uh, off he goes. I'm going to nip in the bud any of the, any of the questions that come in regarding why drivers are putting two wheels on the grass down this little back straight. This is a trick as old as time in LFS to try and cool the tyres down, keep the tyres cool, putting them on the grass there does help. It does, and it caused a bit of a, uh, 
um, a bit of a scene, a kerfuffle, a controversy in a, in iRacing recently with the Spa 24-hour race in the spring when drivers were doing this all the way around the circuit, uh, which eventually it resulted in a, a change to the game to fix the the so-called exploit, and then uh, uh, and then a rule to prohibit it. Ooh, Tom Fuel nearly getting into the side of I believe that's his teammate there. Is it? No, that is one of the I think that's a furtive racing machine ahead of him. Yeah, one of the furtive junior cars. Yeah, nearly came together in the hairpin there, but move done and everybody away safely. Sepulveda up the hill. Uh, there's a yellow flag being caused here by Suarez, who's had an incident out of the fast chicane. A very easy place to get to have a mistake, especially in such a twitchy car. Um, it might look planted for us viewers, but we've been told and have seen firsthand uh, just how difficult this car is to drive. Um, and yeah, some of the drivers making mistakes very early in the race, which is absolutely not what you want. Great view down the straight there as Dravko comes across start finish and still with the fastest lap it's Marco Vicious who is absolutely hammering it to try and close that gap. He's doing a fantastic job at the moment. He's holding at bay uh, Isaac Price, who is, as you know, no slouch at all. A good effort right now from the Born to Race car. Yeah, that was a yeah, 2 minute 27.5 for first Marco Vicious. Really good uh, effort there. And it's Travko Deponiak told us before the race that the uh, you know, laps in the 27s were the ideal pace for this race. And uh, Smolkovicius uh, now catching up our uh, our man who brings us all the information uh, right on his tail coming into the hairpin. And he might just have a sniff of the slipstream if he gets the exit right here. This is the slowest corner on the circuit. Smolkovicius doesn't take quite as much curb on the left to shorten the track before they come onto this straightaway. But I think he might be just close enough to get the influence of the the air being moved out of the way by Stravko Deponiak ahead of him. Nice onboard shot coming into this fast bend right there as he cuts across the apex. He'll dab the brakes and lift out of the throttle to get the car turned in. You can see it washing wide in the in the slipstream, uh, in the dirty air behind Stravko Deponiak. And now Manta Smolkovicius is all over Stravko. This is where we will see a difference in setup if they have one. Um, even a slight difference in the downforce configuration between these two cars will show itself pretty quickly in how they navigate this sequence of bends. It looks like Stravko might have a little bit more because Smolkovic is falling behind him in these high downforce demanding corners. Another car having trouble out of the far chicane is Contrera, who we were following a moment ago. He was tucked in behind Dennis Lind and has now dropped right down um, to where Moreira is here. Yeah, it's a crucial opportunity for Marrera to uh, put Contrera under more pressure. Yeah, this is turning into a three-way battle at the front. Metris Skalkovicius catch, catching up to Stravko Dvonyak now, just a few hundredths lower than he was a moment ago. It was about 0.7 coming around the back of the circuit, and now just under that, Stravko Dvonyak. Isaac Price just missing the tire barrier, coming through the final chicane, and behind him, Sentendreu in fourth position. Four cars, one, two, three, four, running a line astern. Half an hour into this event and coming down the front straightaway through these sweeping bends and down to the first corner. Uh, it is an endurance race, six hours long, but uh, to this point so far, certainly running like a sprint race. Uh, Michael Malik has not been in the pit lane to repair the damage on the Ferret Motors number 47, which is, <laughs> I mean... I don't know. Is he is he trying to get it to the to the pit window? Goodness knows what's going on there. Uh, we can ask him later on. He is he is currently sitting in the in in our commentary booth, but I don't I don't want to distract him right now. It looks like it's a handful. Well, uh, from what I remember, he was behind Sepulveda and Tom Fuel on track when he had his uh, off, but he's gained those positions, so he must feel comfortable um, to proceed for the moment. Uh, we're yeah, watching on board here. Sorry, Peter, go ahead. No, that's all right. We're watching on board as uh, as the, the, the cars in Zdravko's tiny little rearview mirrors start to get larger. Um, the, the the head of this race is definitely, definitely heating up. Um, and Mentis Smolkovicius is in a uh, is in a damaged car sandwich here, right here. <laughs> the, uh, 
Uh, the front and rear of his car are, is uh, is pristine, but Isaac Price and Stravka Deponiak, both of them went off before the start of the race on the formation lap. Um, I think I don't know how much Mantis Malkovicius cares, but we certainly do because this machine looks absolutely beautiful. Um, but he is driving really well. I think I think he might just be carrying a little bit more downforce than Stravko and Isaac behind him. We saw Isaac catch on the straightaways earlier, but uh, Mentis is able to catch Stravko Deponiak through the fast bends and gap Isaac just a little bit. Uh, but here you can see, I think Mentis Malkovicius managed to get a little bit of the slipstream coming up the hill and completely invalidate the point I was about to make. Uh, but Isaac Price now right on top of him. These three nose to tail, truly right on top of each other. You could throw a blanket over them coming down to the final chicane. I think we will have a race for first position coming into the first corner on this lap. Well, if not that, then a second position. A bit of a bouncy chicane, that, from Mantas as uh, Isaac now starts to gaining, gaining, gaining. Oh, goodness me, pulls out just at the last second. They touched. That was a touch. Okay. It's all right. Isaac going for the double. He has the uh, nose in front and the rear wheels ahead. That's the lead change for uh, Isaac Price. There we go. I called that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> you did. Uh, good effort. And that's Isaac Price. Uh, he waited long enough, didn't he, to try and get back the lead of this race. But uh, he moves the rejected by Yellow Local Esports number 99 up into first place. Will be registered with a. Uh, well, he isn't yet registered with a lap lead, is he? Because well, he did it. He did the move into turn one, so he's got to got to keep that car in that position for a few more corners before that can be a stat we talk, that we talk about. I was leaned pretty far back in my chair, grimacing while Owen was saying that they touched, and then uh, and then called him going into turn one. Uh, a little, a little bit tight between Isaac Price, the front, uh, the front of his car, and the rear of the cars behind him, pulling out to make that move. But it's done. Isaac Price now in the lead of the race. Drevko Deponiak not far behind. I hope. I mean, for for them, they don't want to race like this uh, for you know more than a lap or two at a time. It is fun, but it's also stressful and it's easy to make mistakes. They don't want to race like that side by side on every lap. But for us, I hope they do for the next five and a half hours. Absolutely, he wouldn't. Um, as we kind of cycle through the field here, lots and lots and lots of action going on up and down the field. Another spinner again. This this corner oh, here. Oh, sorry, Pete. Yeah. Mantis Malkovicius, uh, Zdravko Deponiak made a mistake coming through the back part of the circuit. Mantis Malkovicius swept around his outside coming through those bins. Not sure what happened to Zdravko, but there he is in third position. Mantis taking advantage of a mistake, and I think Zdravko is going to have mirrors full of San Andreu in just a moment. Wow, he's gone from first to third in uh, a lap, and it might be fourth if he uh, if he can't keep that car out of the slipstream. But it doesn't look like Isaac is going to register a lap in the lead as he exits the final chicane. And with half an hour gone, that car has moved from P3 up to P1. There he goes. And yet another fastest lap for Isaac Price. That's a 226.73. And that is a very uh, daunting marker because uh, the Smilk Vicious, Toponiak, and Saint Andrew, they're within 227 to 229 range that last time around. That's uh, very, very scary. <laughs> Further bad news for the number 77 very fast Monka Sport team as Nico Montano's had an issue on this lap, as we saw earlier. He had a bit of a a bit of a, a wobble at the fast chicane at the bottom of the track and is now in P12. Hopefully he can uh, settle down and recover. Lots and lots of time to go in this race, of course, but you don't want to be making too many mistakes in your opening stint, and that's way too many mistakes uh, from that team just now. Yeah, I'm afraid so, but it's really all down to what other cars uh, in your uh, range of the field do. Like, uh, if they want to pit early under greens, that would be a, you know, a potential boost to your own morale if you want to go longer. Um, yeah, as of right now, the first 34 minutes, it's been one VSC uh, after the formation lap. So a bit of a kerfuffle, as uh, Travis used uh, in the previous uh, point of view. Um, definitely would describe it as a kerfuffle. But yeah, we now see Lucidi 
uh, on the march here against Martinez. Um, uh, it's a case of the right hand hairpin into the left hander. It's just too tight uh, when you're not alongside. I think uh, that's gone better for Martinez. Yeah, indeed, he'll have uh, no problems with that position now as he heads down into the fast chicane. Um, but yeah, it looked, uh, looked pretty close for a moment there. Lucidi being racy. But no move on for the time being. Uh, definitely a different start to the race, this, than uh, a few months ago at the Six Hours of Kyoto, of course. We had two classes involved, um, the GTR class and the LMP2 oh, class. Oh, lag for Zadravko. He's oh. disappeared from view. He has, yeah. This is yes. bad news. This is bad news for the number five. Yes, Motorsports Machine. That looks like it will be a timeout. And, uh, oh, goodness me. That's not what you want to see from the pole sitter, a car that was so... Oh, my goodness me. It was tipped for the win, almost. It's in jeopardy, dropping down the order. And we're going to get confirmation if it's timed out. Yeah. It has timed out. And they will lose their lap. Uh, if they can rejoin. That is disastrous for Gabor and uh, Zdravko. And so early He's in the race He rejoined well. the server. He's allowed uh, to resume the race. Uh, the stewards have said he can resume. Obviously, he'll be docked a lap, as you say, Pete. Um, but he, he will have a fresh outlook. There are fresh tyres and uh, no more aero damage or anything like that. Yeah, but uh, you know, having having all that fresh stuff, it ruins your your thought process. It ruins your strategy. You have to completely reset your entire model of how the race is going to go. Not not least because you've just lost a lap, and you have to you know get up to speed, up to back onto your rhythm. It's such a distraction, and this is a, now a long road. But five and a half hours, not insurmountable, and we've seen weirder stuff happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully. Uh... Gabor is made aware of what's happened. He, he'll be hopefully um, in communication with his teammates so they can uh, flesh out a new plan. Um, but it will have to be from 24th and last at the moment. Watching uh, Smal Kavisius, uh, he's losing a bit of time each and every lap to Isaac. Uh, maybe this is going a bit better from a second sector split. Um, yeah, it's a case where that uh, top four battle we were relishing in has unfortunately um, vanished due to the uh, drop off of uh, Zdravko. Uh, but Santa Andreo, uh, all compliments to him, he was in position to uh, benefit from any drop off. And there you go, he has. P3 to himself. Ricardo there, P4, is uh, 10 seconds behind the race leader and about 7 seconds off Sant'Andreu's furtive racing car. Um, so yeah, really disappointing to see. Uh, but we may have uh, pit stops coming up in uh, about 5 laps time. Another fast yeah. lap from Price. Yeah, absolutely. Pit stops coming and uh, pace plenty from the number 99. Absolutely unbelievable pace from the top runners. Uh, Shavko hasn't been given his laps back yet, but we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on where he ends up being put back to. Uh, they won't, the, the race administration won't want to wait too long before getting that done. Um, because obviously that car needs to be credited with the laps that it has. As we have Nico Pantola side-by-side -side battle here. Uh, who's he fighting with? He's battling with the number two. Oh, yeah. Marrera, who, if I'm not mistaken, that I am not sure whether Marrera was actually registered for this race, was he? I might have got that wrong, but anyway, I, I can't see him on my list here. Yeah, if he's not showing up on your list there, that would be my mistake, because uh, for those of you watching, um, we do we have a spotter guide in the background with the list and the pictures of the cars and all of that, so we can easily refer to them. And I believe uh, I believe I've let Pete down here. So uh, no, no, yeah, I, I'm, I'll I'm, check on that for you. He Pete. is not. He is not on my list. Um, Moreira is not registered for this event. I wonder if race the race race control of uh, know about that because that is a complete surprise to me. Uh, I didn't think Moreira was going to be here. Um, but there we are. 
Certainly not registered for the number two team on the, on the on the list that we were given ahead of the race. So yeah. <laughs> that's well, fun. I'll, I'll happily I'll happily shed the heat for this. So uh, thank you for that, and uh, <laughs> and we'll check on it. Well, welcome to the race, Moreira. Um, but there we are. An imposter is among us. Isaac <laughs> Price leads after thirty five minutes of racing, or forty minutes of racing. Sorry. And uh, Smarka Vicious, he is not going anywhere. Mantas Marshal Vicious, uh, the number 23 for Born to Race, is putting on quite a performance. Next, looking up and down the people. order now. Oh, sorry, Peter. Looking oh, no, up and down the order now. Ooh, I just had past Drupal Bunyak, who went very wide uh, and nearly went over some of the uh, some of the the sausage curbs. Uh, everyone pretty well spread out now. It was close at the front um, when I stepped away a moment ago, and now we've got cars separated a few seconds at a time. It looks like the closest battle on the track is probably between Dennis Lind and Hernan Contreras in sixth and seventh, though about a one second gap there, a little more than that, so not in close contention. Um, and this is uh, this is how it goes. We get to sit back and relax for a few minutes, fellas, um, while yeah. uh, we, we can not for long. Chat about the yeah, we'll <laughs> chat about the things that we see going on until somebody bins one off. And we have a safety car, and then it all gets very exciting again. Well, it, it's pit stops actually. Uh, that's the thing that's going to throw a spanner in the works pretty soon, I imagine. Uh, Owen alluded to it earlier. Owen, when do we do a pit stop? Uh, if uh, the intel we got from Zravko is correct, it should be about lap nineteen. Is that correct? Round about that, I yep. believe you are right. Yeah. So we're uh, about four laps from now. We're uh, heading towards 41 minutes of racing completed yet. So that makes about the accurate bit of sense. Yeah, I expect we'll see most of these cars, except, notably, we know Dennis Lind is about six laps longer than anyone else if he chooses to go a full 18 uh, after he uh, he stopped during the virtual safety car at the end of the sixth lap. And then, of course, uh, Strapa to Ponyak, he is, uh, he's now had his laps returned to him. He shows one lap down on the tracker, uh, but he will have... Uh, I mean, whatever load of fuel he had configured in the car when uh, he rejoined after timing out. So that team's strategy, the the Yes Motorsport car that he's sharing with Gabor, um, their strategy now, uh, whatever whatever they thought they were going to do at the start of the race, is now somewhat different. Yeah, completely different approach now, Travis. Uh, whatever um, they were planning, it's pretty much done for. Um, all that can be done for Zravka now is uh, put in those uh, competitive lap times and then start gaining uh, positions on track as the other cars have to take their scheduled stops. Um, otherwise, I you know, just be a long, long stint, I'm afraid. And we've seen him do this before. Um, he, uh, we, we, we love him dearly. He is one of our, he is one of our best friends, and we enjoy having him as a teammate. But we're honest about one another, and we have seen him make mistakes in the past. Uh, so we've we've often watched him come back through the order, just carving through the cars ahead of him after he's made a slight mistake and gone off. Ooh, cars just banging doors there. Oh, going no, into the hairpin as, as the furtive machines. Yeah. Yeah, he had a classic bump into the tire barrier, just head on, locking up the brakes. Thankfully, uh, no, nothing untoward happened there. Um, and now the race leader, I can see him on my screen. He is going to put Sepulveda a lap down. Yeah, unfortunate there, but now, uh, but but no further harm done. Yeah, I was saying that, Palacios uh, has just been off Travis in turn one, slowly rejoining. Lost a couple of places. This always happens. I'm I'm trying to talk about my favorite driver, <laughs> and then and then everything comes off. Yeah, today, uh, today is Drevko unfortunately caught by a timeout and not a mistake, but we've seen him carve his way through the order and pass a lot of cars to get back through the order. Costa goes across the, the pit exit line there. We'll have to mm. check on the rules and see if the officials yeah, take a dim allowed. view of that. It's yeah, some, some officials, some series are a little more lenient than others, but uh, that might result in a penalty for the MRC Brazil car. Uh, but... Finally, I'll, I'll finish this point and move on with it. Uh, Strevko, we've seen him drive up through the order before, and he was a lap down at the six hours of Kyoto event uh, at one point during that race. 
uh, in the spring. So not over for them. And uh, Strathco Ooh. is quick. Gabor, arguably even quicker, as Isaac Price now we see, is this is a back marker, Travis. that car a lap down, as yeah. Owen called yeah, about that's a extreme. lap to go. Yeah, under blue flag conditions, that is really extreme. The turn 12, or, yeah, sorry, 14, could have offered a decent opportunity to move aside. But Sepulveda clung on for as long as possible. Yeah, we don't want to see uh, the, the, the back markers making it too difficult for um, our leaders to get through, but they, they're entitled to their to their line pretty much, but not no. like that. Oh, goodness me. Smarkovich just gets through, but had to be anchors on into the chicane. And uh, the furtive junior car here is not making this entirely easy. Um, hopefully, you will lift off at some point. Yeah, You're not ideally, in a race with that car. Yeah, ideally, going <laughs> into the first corner here, I would expect Sepulveda to just yeah. tuck in and get on the brakes early instead of looking to the inside. That makes you so nervous as a leading driver when you're working on the traffic like that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not that, it's not that bad when you know, you, when you put a car a lap down, you know the guys that you you've just put behind you are, are still trying to run their own race and go as quick as they can. So it's not that big a deal when they tuck in behind you and hold on to the slipstream. But you don't expect them to be, you know, peeking to the inside or being right up your bumper in the slipstream. You know, anchors on, you know, at the last moment into the braking zone. Those kind of moments make you really nervous. Alejandro Trespalacios in the Furtive Junior machine. Uh, we talked about this car earlier. Trespalacios, not really a junior, and they were the best-placed Furtive machine uh, at the start of this event. I believe they started in sixth position. Uh, fifth position, they started. Um, so going well for them. The front of the car doesn't look like it has gone that well for them, but they're <laughs> in pretty good shape. So we look back to Sant Andreu in third. Now the best Furtive racing car in the order. Yeah, kind of a bit of normality restored. But obviously, we are now into the pit stop cycle, and that's where things become juicy. Uh, we're going to see whether Dennis Lynn's inspired pit stop, the only car we, that we know of, to stop during the only Oh, safety... sorry, oh. Pete. You just mentioned Dennis Lind. He had a mirrors full of Hernan Contreras, oh. and coming oh. out of the bend there, he just put he put a little bit too much power on. Oh, I think no. Those... Is he? Oh, goodness me. He's trying to find the power down. Chiadini, watch out. Yeah. Was that, was that oh. some... Watch out, Is that guys. some commentator's oh. curse or what? Yeah, he did it. I had just switched to him because I wanted to see if he cycled to the oh, front no. as other cars came through pit stops, and he put a little bit too much power on coming out of the bend. He did it right in front of Hernan Contreras. Hernan Contreras did an amazing job to not collect Dennis Lind as he was spinning around. Dennis, great driving for him, too. As soon as the mm. car started to go around, he jumped on the brakes and let it slide sideways instead of whipping back across the circuit. So, unfortunate, that will have cost him 10 or 15 seconds. I don't think he'll inherit the lead of the race now. That car looking very nervous coming through these fast bends. But, uh, yeah, heart-stopping moment for Dennis Lind and Hernan Guterres, but they have all moved on. Yeah, well, importantly, back to my point, I guess, uh, the, you know, um, the, the, the advantage that we thought he could gain from his uh, stop during the VFC, completely undone. I mean, um... You know that's that's back to square one for for that team. Unfortunate uh, that gamble just hasn't paid off because of a small error. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you needed to be faultless uh, if you're going to go off strategy. Um, losing track position is one thing, but uh, your opportunity to get it back is reliant on the other cars making their pit stops. Um, I did notice uh, my colleagues uh, were correct. Uh, Costa has been cited by the stewards and has a drive through penalty for a pit lane exit infringement um that was uh, declared about a minute ago so he'll be forced to drive through the pit lane um now we look at uh yeah we have a pit stop uh, for contrera and the lost connection team there um now uh, we have a replay of what happened to dennis lind uh we're going to show it right now here we go on the stream. Um, oh. We'll have to get back to that replay. Unfortunately, that hasn't worked as we wanted. Uh, we'll get that back for you soon. Um, but here we go. Contrera then with his pit stop done. And uh, yeah, we were trying to show a replay there of Dennis Lynn, just what happened to him at the fast chicane. Um, but yeah, just proof that it can it can go all wrong. 
for you for, for anyone in this field I mean uh, up and down everyone with some issues at some point yes absolutely um, the odds of driving a perfect six hour or above endurance race uh, it's almost make believe um, yeah, the, the, just the ability of all drivers will be put to the absolute test here uh, obviously the, the very best of Isaac Price in the lead he's pulling out three and a half seconds of our small Cavicius um, and that is absolutely fantastic for uh, his team and actually he's pitting the race leader pits right on schedule yeah and other cars come in as well that's Santangio in the background as well uh, coming into the pit lane that gives small Cavicius an extra lap then he thinks he's got an extra lap in the tank uh, which would be remarkable um, uh, you know stay, the, the leader staying out the longest currently uh, so this will give him a, an advantage, Owen. The other cars will be filling up with fuel. Snarkovicius will have another lap of low fuel running if he makes it that far, if he's if he's gauged this properly, as we have Isaac Price uh, still in the stop. So what's he done on that car? Because Santandrew is out. He's out and clear. Uh, so is Isaac going for a, for a tyre change uh, early Yeah, definitely tyre change, Pete. Yeah. Uh, fresh rubber for him. We'll see if... Um... So Isaac did tyres and fuel, 25 second stops, and Andrew's stopped much, much shorter. He's already out of turn one. So we do have some differing strategies already uh, from a number of drivers. This is going to be a very complicated afternoon. Yeah, we'll see if Born to Race are going to make uh, their driver aware that the uh, race leader, Isaac Price, took on uh, fresh tyres as well as fuel. Uh, maybe they'll plan something different or else they'll uh, pit this time around and just uh, consolidate their position. We see that Isaac is clear of a gaggle of cars. Uh, Pontola, Cardle and Lind uh, were not able to overtake Price when he pitted so that's a really good moment there for the uh, the Boffins for him. Uh, good calculations. We're going to have another go at that replay. Uh, so hold on to your hats folks. Here comes a replay of the incident with Dennis Lind from earlier uh, at the fast chicane and this is what happens this is what happens to a number of cars they just go to you wide drop a wheel and then we have a, an unfortunate spin there from from Dennis um, we, it's not he's not the first driver to have uh, so, you know that that's happened to today and he won't be the last certainly but that that cost him that definitely cost him Travis and Owen uh, a lot of time um, considering that he was on an alternate strategy after pitting during the VSC yeah, indeed. Uh, Travis was... Oh, Rick uh, Cardle and uh, Dennis Lind. Oh. Sorry, we, we're going to need another replay oh. here because Dennis Lind and Rick Cardle have had a coming together while we were watching the replay of Dennis Lind having an incident. Uh, this is quite unbelievable. Um, we're less than an hour in and now we've had a proper, proper dice between those two. My goodness me. Chris is going to yeah. be busy today, isn't he? Queuing up these replays. Blimey neck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Travis uh, commented how well Lind did to catch that mistake. Obviously, uh, he was in danger of hitting the wall, and he prevented that from happening. But um, now that this collision has occurred, um, it just wastes even more time, and it would be uh, a case where he has to uh, calm it down if he's feeling uh, he was uh, if he feels he was hard done by. But um, we'll have to study another replay whenever we can. Um, Smok Vicious carries on his stint. Sant'Andreo um, obviously is. Um, he took a shorter stop, I believe. So um, it's certainly uh, pressure on Isaac in this second stint for him as Nico Pantola is uh, in the box. I think. Uh... I think the conclusion here is that Pete is no longer allowed to talk about Dennis Lind without ruining <laughs> his race. <laughs> I 100% agree. Um, I won't mention him for a while. Give him a bit of a break, I think. Somehow, though he... Well, the first spin, um, you know, I saw it when it happened, and then we watched the replay. Um, obviously, he was well clear of any hazards. Uh, sounds like we've got Chris in our ears with a replay ready to go for this second incident with Dennis Lind. Yeah, it wasn't me that queued this one up, so hopefully uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't happen. Uh, here we go. This is what happened between Rick Cardle and uh, Dennis Lynn. So they're going into the sweeping section. Dennis goes for a move, and the door wasn't open. And they, they both go off. Well, luckily, no hard impacts, but not great from uh, from them. That was, uh, that was a scary moment. 
Nah, that was a bit impatient from Dennis as Isaac nearly does the same thing that, uh, that Dennis did uh, just a couple laps ago. Yeah, I think Dennis getting a little bit impatient. He was uh, he was behind um, going into that left-hand bend, and I, I guess, yeah, I don't know, I think Rick Cardall probably didn't see him there. Rick Cardall certainly wouldn't have expected him to try to make a move there, and then Dennis stuck his nose in where it didn't really fit. Dennis Lind a little bit wide once again. I'm watching him in the background while we have <laughs> Isaac Price on the stream. Let's not watch Nothing. him for I a need bit. to tab away and watch someone <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, watch someone else for a bit, seriously. Yeah, oh I'll watch Isaac Price me. on two screens here since he's uh, since he's kept it between the lines. Yeah, who else is who else can we talk about? Let's have a look. Um, Nico Panzola down to P14 after his stop. This has been the start they did not want from this team. We're, we're coming up to the end of the first hour and having qualified in P2, the very fast Monka Sport team are down to P14. Not ideal. Uh, other drivers who have lost out. Um, well, these two teams, the road appraiser team. This is a this, this is a definite change from what we're we're used to seeing uh, from this team. There's currently an inter-team squabble happening here, Travis, uh, Rosa, and Costa. There is a uh, nice scrap between these two drivers. Uh, while we watch them, uh, another another message from Race Control in the background. This is a team that Owen was talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, Sepulveda in the number thirty car, uh, awarding for ignoring blue flags. Owen mentioned that. His, uh, his handling of the blue flags and letting the front runners through was a bit suspect, and the, uh, the officials agree. Um, first warning for ignoring blue flags from them. Hopefully uh, we won't see another one uh, for, uh, for the sake of the front runners and for them too, staying, uh, staying out of the sin bin and avoiding any penalties, they can run a clean race to the end. Yes, indeed, Travis. I am happy the stewards have made that call. Um, the best referees are the ones you don't notice what they're doing. So if they just hand down a warning, it means that the 30 team are encouraged uh, to be more careful. But at the same time, their race isn't compromised with a, a very uh, swift penalty. So, uh, yeah, I think that is the right call. Nika Patola going for a double move here, overtakes both Master Race Car Brazil and Road Appraisers. Uh, which car was that for Road Appraiser? That was the number 72, TJ driving that one. And uh, Nico, oh, weaving around in the braking zone. He really wants this one to stick, and it does. Blimey, he, he really wanted that one. Yeah, I've driven with Nico, and Nico's usually pretty reserved and pretty smart. That, I think he was... I, I mean, he wanted to defend the position and make sure that... Uh, that the, the car behind him didn't try to make a move going to the outside of the first turn. I suspect he just misjudged how much room he had because he uh, he does not drive like that. I think that was just kind of a a lapse in, in judgment and perception there. But move done, though well, it may not be done. If uh, He may have mirrors full coming down to this fast corner right here that we're watching Jose go through now. Actually, it looks like Nico got enough of a gap. He may be able to hold this position without having to fight for it. Yeah, we have a new replay to show you all. It actually relates back to the very start of the uh, six hours. Yeah, here we go. So this is Nico Pontola at the start. Uh, we'll see precisely how he was uh, knocked off the racing line. You see he's got Isaac Price to one side. Yeah, so a tiny tap, but it's enough to send the car veering uh, way off into the barrier. Um, and that unfortunately has seen him drop down the order, but he is um, with the first pit stop on his route to recovery, I hope. I'm very yeah. glad we pulled that replay out, Travis. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I did not see that, and in very interesting. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's easy to make that mistake, too. Ob Isaac obviously didn't do that on purpose, but the uh, you sit up kind of high in this car, but the extents of the front splitter are uh, you're deceptively large, so... I think Isaac was tr trying to stay in the slipstream as long as he possibly could and didn't realize that the corner of the car was that close to the rear of Nico's car and then got into the back of him and sent him spearing into the Armco. Uh, speaking of Isaac Price, um, I must have missed this in one of the moments I stepped away, but there is a lot of damage on the front of that car. He's been in the barrier hard somewhere. Um, yeah, you're right. You Chad. are right. Um, yeah. We will have to get our thinking caps on and find out where that happened. 
because that is not a small amount of damage. Uh, he has dropped off the pace. I mean, um, after the pit stop, I, I thought that it was just a longer pit stop, but you're right. Uh, yeah, the left, he, is, he has clattered the left side of the car very hard. He put one corner in and then the other, judging by how it's squished in uh, the left rear and the left front. No, no damper damage, so he hasn't he hasn't gone sailing over any big bumps or curbs. Um, I wonder, yeah, maybe he got some help somewhere, but it definitely looks like he did the 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 first one corner and then the other spinning bounce off a uh, off a hard barrier somewhere. That's enough damage that I don't think he went off the Armco. I think he probably no. went off one of the cement barriers. Yeah, well, where has but, he done uh, it though? That's what we've got to find out. Yeah, um, that's that's going to compromise a bunch. Oh no! He's nearly rolled it over. He went oh way wide there. It's, me. it's so easy. That's the other reason why you don't go wide there is that it's off camber a little bit and it's dirty out there and it just sucks the car right off the circuit. And that's the that's the curbing from the the Aston North hairpin. If you go over that curb the wrong direction, it does exactly what we just saw. Pitches the car up to the air. He nearly had a blow over there. Somehow lands on the wheels, but not before he gets into the barrier, and uh, and goes spinning. I don't think he races in VR. If he had, um, I think he would have a a lap full of his breakfast. That was oh. that was a uh, that was a ride. I mean, if you ever wanted confirmation of just how difficult this car is to drive at full tilt, that's it. Isaac Price going off seemingly again and dropping another couple of places. Surely that car has got to come in the pit lane now. Nope, he's staying out. He thinks that there's not enough damage to justify a pit stop. So interesting, but also gutting for rejected by Aeroloco Esports. Qualified Q3 now, P7 with... Some hefty, at least hefty, cosmetic damage, and you, you've got to think that that car's got some underlying suspension issues now. Uh, that was a hard yeah, hit. It has picked up a bit of suspension damage. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Mo's Mo's told us in our ears that the original damage that we were talking about right before we watched him go off uh, was on an earlier lap. He had done the exact same thing that we oh, watched was it really? live. So, so it's exactly the same yeah, incident. I yeah, I don't know that we need to see that replay. We know exactly nope. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, so I want to I want to mention this um, since you were talking about him a, a moment ago, Pete, and mentioned the name of his team, rejected by Heroloco. Um, he had proposed um, running with Heroloco, and Heroloco told him that uh, I don't know if, if Heroloco had another commitment or or if he had already planned on driving for another team or if he's just not racing this weekend. I don't know if he's in the entry he list. He is in the be... entry list. He's driving for okay, Lycan so Racing, the number 12. Okay, yeah, so he's, he's driving for a different team. Uh, and this was, this, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to do the, uh, the Formula One thing of just stirring up bad blood here. I think this was all friendly and in good fun. But Isaac declared that he was rejected by Heroloco and that made it into the team name. Uh, and this is, this is looking like it's coming off pretty nicely for Heroloco because oh, Isaac's car is looking a bit rough around the edges. And oh, Contrera, yeah, go ahead, and Travis. That is Contrera meeting that, uh, turn eight gravel trap. Uh, thankfully he has oh no Ooh. I think he has actually much worse damage yep. oh it's a puncture puncture oh. front left so uh, one of the drivers who hasn't changed their tyres at a pit stop has fallen off the road because of a puncture our first of the race it seems um, very early I mean that must be lockup related lockups breed lockups in LFS and yeah. that is evidence of it I think Car still has enough uh, frontline grip to keep going over 120 miles an hour through the sweepers. Uh, Giorgetti in uh, the back marker stage. He'll be wanting blue flags uh, in reverse here. He needs to get by <laughs> the stricken car. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes the, the blue flags just work against you, don't they? But uh, he's certainly got the pace. The number 42 gum garage car. We haven't talked about this. There is a driver in this car from Australia, um, which bring, makes this a, an extremely international event. South America, Europe, Africa, and Australasia, as uh, the stricken car of Cordera, oh, sorry, Contrera, goes off to let that car through, and surely that car is going to go in the pit lane. I can't see any other. Oh, hello, through the tyres first, uh... though. Way too hot into there. I could see that happening a mile off, and that's going to just add to the damage to that car. Yeah, just he's got two cars to yeah, yield to, three to, to move to the other side of the circuit. My, my Luckily, goodness. he's done this right at the pit lane entry, so he can just bring it in. Though, it looked like he may have overcooked it across the pit entry line, though I don't see a penalty there for that. I think he just snuck in there. Um, it's uh, it's always worth 
watching chat during these events because before all of that came off, we were talking about how uh, Heroloco had rejected Isaac. It actually went that way. Isaac proposed they run together, and Heroloco said, no, thank you. And there's uh, um, a few comments from the peanut gallery <laughs> that, that uh, <laughs> one, we had indeed gotten that correct. Um, and uh, and everyone agrees that perhaps it was smart for Heroloco to say no. Uh, we are impartial. <laughs> we are just reporting what we read in chat. But uh, clearly there is uh, clearly there is a sentiment here that I, I personally find amusing. Oh, I don't know about. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think let's have a look. What else we've we got going on? The number seventy five is going in the pit lane. Suarez has had an off. Ooh, hello. Oh, hello! Almost another off in the pit lane. Yeah, he's had an off and then an in. Another in, yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Contrera also still pitting for that uh, puncture. Cars and fuel going in for the 75 and damage, so lots of work going on. No damage repair yet then for the 99. Uh, let's actually comment on the race leader, Smalkovicius, for a moment because he still hasn't pitted, I believe. And we're into lap 25, over an hour gone. That, so... can't, be, that can't be true, can it? <laughs> The, that I was horny didn't hit. I believe, guys, we may see. Uh, I'm just speculating here, but we might see a shakeup in race strategies in a few moments. Uh, right. We saw Martin Kapal just set uh, his uh, his personal best, a 27.7, which is a very respectable lap around here in race conditions. Uh, and shortly after he did that, his teammate Eric Blixt joins the server. So I wonder about. He'll be on lap 24 or 25 right now. So I think they may, uh, maybe they'll go a bit short and Eric Blix will take over that car. Um, there are a limited number of slots in the server, so teammates cannot join and then just hang around and spectate. They're they're compelled to join and then leave. So might see, uh, we'll keep an eye on Martin Kapal here. We might see a strategy shake up. Oh uh, yeah, my mistake. Smock Vicious did pit. So yeah, my point is nullified. But yeah, Sant'Andreo, uh, He'll be keeping hot on the heels to see if he can gain that lead at some point. Bit of a battle further down, in fact, for one of the lower positions between two drivers from the same team. This is Tom Fuel versus Giorgetti, both of the uh, gum garage cars, I believe, having a battle with each other for P22. This is a nice tight battle right here. They should have a good run going through the bins here. They want to cut the track off as much as they possibly can, though ooh, a little bit, a little bit dicey here. Uh, Laurent in the gum garage car, taking a bit of an unorthodox line into the braking zone, perhaps a bit defensive, but looked. I don't want to say it wasn't on, but it was a bit unorthodox. And then a wide through the hairpin. Looks like he might be struggling with the car a bit. Perhaps that wasn't intentional, uh, and instead. Just trying to make the car work late into the stint on old tires. As we now are high overhead watching Mattis Malkovicius come across the line once more. He'll be starting his 26th lap, I believe. And he has a comfortable lead over Santa Andre, the number 90 car, in second position. These two now far ahead of third position. Rick Cardall uh, now comfortably running in third after he had a, uh, a little coming together earlier. He managed to come off better than Dennis Lint did. Uh, but about 30, 40 minutes ago, guys, we were watching the top four or five running line astern, and now it has spread out substantially. Cars going off, pit stop cycles, um, starting to look a bit more like a typical endurance race. Definitely. We got a lot more than we bargained for in that first stint. In the early parts of the first stint, far more accidents than I expected. Uh, drivers slow to wake up today, potentially. Um, but it has settled down somewhat. We've had we've had thrills and spills, but uh, it has calmed down ever so slightly. Uh, Eric Blix has taken over from Martin Kapal. I'm sure we alluded to that. There we are, confirmation. I uh, did. When updates I feel, Aston's Sim Sports car. Yep. I feel good about that prediction. Though Eric goes wide, manages to keep it out of the the grass there. It's tricky. All of these cars are tricky on cold tires, and this one in particular, which is tricky to drive all the time. Um, it relies so much on tire temperature. The car makes a lot of downforce, so 
going into those slow corners where the downforce isn't working as much as it would at higher speed and on brand new tires, it can be it can be a little bit difficult to navigate the circuit, but he's off and going, no harm done. As we look at Costa in the MRC Brazil car in pit lane, and now back to Matis Malkovicius, who runs out to that white line. That's uh, it's a little bit dangerous out there. That car's still in pristine order. We should see him in the next few laps. I think he's probably got, well, if they go the full 18 and 18, I guess we've got another eight before we see Manta Smolkovicius in. We expect him to be handing over to his teammate, Ayub Elanuni, the Moroccan driver. We talked about earlier being the only driver from Africa. Um, Pete, you mentioned earlier that this is a properly international event. Properly we do have drivers yeah. from from every continent. There are no American drivers in here, but I do believe I saw one Canadian driver. I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll around and see if I can confirm that. Hmm. I mean, I I don't know. I don't don't know if we do have any North Americans uh, in the race. Yeah, I think I've remembered that incorrectly now. Yeah, normally it's um, either Jared Mead or... Uh, forget the name, uh, Logtenberg, I think. Uh, that's correct, yeah. And neither of them are in the race. So, no, yeah. indeed. I apologize for that. I whiffed. It's okay. No, it's, it's, very it's very international, this race. Enough said. I think there are not enough Irish or American drivers in this event. And <laughs> perhaps, perhaps for the next one, we should uh, we should do something about that. We're arguably as good in race cars uh, as we are in the commentary booth. So in the six hours, we could, we could have a crack at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was we, the last should, maybe, we should. I'm not. I'm not going to commit you to it or myself, but uh, we'll we will allude to this for our viewers that we will think about it very hard for next time. Uh, Isaac Price is catching up to the back of uh, Alejandro Trespalacios. Here he is. The Furtive Junior car is about to come under some attack from Isaac Price. And we also have the recovering um, Strako Topolniak making up moves as well. He's up to P19 currently. But let's keep an eye on this battle, Travis. Let's do. I'm Frankly, I'm amazed that Isaac Price's car even goes in a straight line. I suspect that uh, it requires... A little bit of input to keep it pointed the right direction down these long straightaways. Looks like he went a little bit gingerly over the curb there. It doesn't run nearly as wide as he had been earlier with a pristine machine. And he still has Alejandro Trespalacios all over the back of the car. Trespalacios heroic on the brakes right up the back of that machine coming through this corner. If he can hold on to Isaac Price through these bends, I think he might have a shot at a run up to the hairpin near the end of the lap, though... Isaac Price pulling a bit of an advantage through the two right-hand bends. This tricky corner, left-hand bend. It's tempting to get on the curb there, but if you touch it, it upsets the balance of the car. And then here's where you don't want to go wide. Isaac Price right over there, past those white lines. You can see that curb just flashing by on the left side of the screen. Isaac Price been over there twice, which accounts for the damage on that car. Keeps enough of a gap to trust policy is behind him i think he will hold that position easily coming around to the start finish line as we look back to jose and the road appraiser racing team in p8 with marrero chasing him down two close ish battles on track now guys yeah, yeah it's coming back to us now yeah top 10 is gonna uh keep us engaged but obviously as uh, drive go to pontiac's recovery drive is carrying on as reasonably well, plans as you could expect. He's now 18th, the quickest car with a lap down. So we'll see if that carries on. But now the Gun Garage uh, Interteam, uh, either cooperation or battle, uh, carries on here. Uh, Giorgetti is watching to see what Tom Fuel does uh, through the sweepers to mark the end of uh, the second sector. Um, it seems like uh, Tom Field pulls away again, but he's going very high. Yeah, that curb that Isaac Price was, uh, he, who was uh, clattered by, and that was nearly a case of uh, history repeating itself. But thankfully, uh, Tom Field avoided it. Oh, sorry, guys. I was just about to say that Strapka Toponiak was catching 
The number 55 car, the Team American Machine with Martinez at the wheel. He's about 26 seconds behind, and that gap is going to come down substantially because as I look to see how Stravko was getting along, Martinez was into the barrier oh, and no. into the barrier again. Yeah, lots of damage on the right front of that car. Yes, he may okay. have a puncture. He does Another indeed have one. a puncture. Thank yeah, you. Santa Andreu sweeps by as Martinez rejoins the circuit. So a lot of these drivers, they're... It, Stravko Deponiak told us before the start of the race that tires would be a factor. It's very difficult to get them to stretch. You have to take good care of them. And we have cars well short of 36 laps on R3s and experiencing punctures. So I think what we're about one hour and 15 minutes in. Yeah, this is one story we will, we will need to keep in the back of our minds as we go on. Tires are going to be a big factor. Um... Mo's found a replay of Costa uh, spinning at the final chicane and having contact with another car uh, just before he came into the pit stop. He picked it up with, um, oh goodness me, as Martinez goes straight across the gravel at a similar place to the replay we're about to see. Um, and here it comes. The replay with Costa tagging the back of another car as he came onto um, the home straight. Oh, so he spun before the chicane. And... Right in front of someone, right in front of multiple cars, in fact, the two gun garage cars, and then came to the pit stop. So potentially setting up his setting up his uh, his pit stop and just getting distracted on the brakes. Yeah, that is the that is the worst way to spin the car. Um, it's so awkward because you you end up in the middle of the circuit like that, and you know you you want to move the car so that you're not there in the middle of the circuit. But um, if you're smart, and I think he was. Uh, he was he was thinking as quickly as he could about what he was doing. You also want to hold the brakes so you don't do anything unpredictable for the cars that are going to be coming by. But holding the brakes and keeping the car right in the middle of the track is is so is so uncomfortable that uh, he he did well to keep his head there, uh, and the drivers coming through did well to avoid him. Fortunately, fortunately, he got away with one. Still watching Isaac Price. I'm frankly I'm amazed that that this car is still going because it is so badly damaged. As we look ahead to Metis Smolkovicius in the lead, a very comfortable lead. He's extended that gap from seven seconds when we last watched him all the way up to ten. He now has ten on Sant Andreu in the number ninety car. Rick Cardall holding on about twenty seconds back in third. Unchanged at the front, and the gaps are spreading out a little bit more. Though we may soon have a battle for third position. Hernan Quinteros is only one and a half seconds behind Rick Cardall, so we'll keep an eye on that. We may have a bit more excitement as we approach the series of pit stops. Race Control has joined the track. Uh, this is Gentile, um, where with a name change that hasn't propagated yet, so he will uh, should update soon. And there we go, and a driver change there for Team America. Number 55 rejoins in P19. Waiting on the uh, the tracker to cycle. I think we've probably had a car in pit lane that has uh, that has shuffled the order a little bit. You can see the timing tower is uh, timing tower is a little bit off. We're waiting on uh, waiting on an update. Uh, but Stravko Tepanyak has. Now gotten ahead of the 55 car. That is, uh, that will be the race control machine that we were just talking about. So Stravka Tabonyak has picked up another position in in his quest to rejoin the front of the order. He fell a lap down early on after he timed out and disconnected. Driving a recovery race now. He'll put as much time as he possibly can on the drivers behind him and try to make up as much as he can to everyone ahead of him before he hands off the car to Gabor. A little bit later in the race. Um, we have lost the number 75 Lycan racing machine that was being driven by Ian Suarez from Chile. Uh, his teammate was Yaroloco Jeremiah Stinella. And that car is no longer on the track. It is retired. So we can probably assume that to be our first retirement unless they join later on. Yeah, the uh, I think 
the the jokes on us or on him now because we were talking about the uh, the little humorous feud that he had with Isaac Price and uh, Isaac Price though in a uh, <laughs> in an unorthodox looking machine is on track and Aeroloco now is is not. A bit of a lull in the action right now, so we will run down the order once more. We've got Mantis Smalkavicius at the top of the order, about 12 seconds clear of Santandreu in the number 90 car. Rick Cardall in a third position. We have Hernan Quinteros running fourth in the number 10 machine, 1.7 seconds behind Rick Cardall. That gap's staying pretty steady there. I think that's the closest gap we have on track right now. Isaac Price, who was running at the front earlier, has had two big offs into one of the fast sweeping bends at the back of the circuit. Running in fifth position, Alejandro Trespalacios runs in sixth position with Chodini in the race green. Uh, sorry, uh, I was looking at Lucidi in the race green machine right there. Um, Chodini running in seventh position, and I'll have to wait for the tracker to come back up so that I can see the order. We'll resume that in just a minute. There we go. Chodini in seventh position with Jose in eighth. Marrera in ninth. Dennis Lynn falling back all the way to tenth position. He was running near the front earlier and had an early pit stop to get a little bit off cycle. Uh, and then a couple spins cost him a lot of time. Now a minute and 20 seconds behind the lead, though he was just a few seconds behind uh, an hour ago. Nico Patola. Started near the front, fell to 14th or 15th at the start. He was uh, the victim of Isaac Price, an unfortunate coming together at the start of the race, has uh, recovered to 11th position. I think I, I had a bit of Australian sneak in there while I was looking at the, uh, yeah, at the flags. <laughs> uh, Lorenzo Lucidi, who we were just watching a moment ago in the race green machine, uh, in 12th, Lara in 13th, Freira in 14th. We've got Michael Malik in 15th position with uh, Rafael Costa in 16th. Rafael Costa doing uh reasonably well today uh, we've had him in the box in the commentary booth a few times we'd like talking to him we'll probably have a chat with him at the end of the race on board with michael malik now with a uh i don't i don't know what to call that at the, in his in his it's a mess screen. isn't it i believe i believe that's the windscreen wiper that has gone all uh i think a wonky is the best way i can describe yeah, it it's, okay. yeah. it's yeah. a good thing it doesn't rain in this Man, yeah, that I don't. I'm not sure that'll buff out, guys. I, I was getting here. <laughs> Stravko Deponiak, who has recovered to 17th position. I think he's had a pit stop recently because he was the first of the drivers off the lead la on the on a one lap behind. Uh, now he's dropped back a couple of positions. Eric Blix took over from Martin Capal a few laps ago, running in 18th. Gentile in 19th. Contrera in 20th. Giorgetti in 21st. Benoit Lamarquier in 22nd. And all the way at the back in 23rd, uh, we have the number 30 car of Sanchez. I, I managed to get through the order without anything really exciting happening. That never happens. Uh, Contrera has rejoined the race um, after an incident by the looks of it, and uh, that's, well, that's unfortunate. They've dropped down the order. And unfortunately, that driver didn't have the livery on, so that car appears white now for everybody. So at the front, it remains unchanged. Uh, Mantis Malkovicius is slowly extending his lead. Um, when we, we looked at him maybe 20 or 30 minutes ago, and that gap was about seven seconds. It's grown to 14 on Santandreu, uh, and now 33 seconds from Rick Cardall up to Mantis Malkovicius. But Rick Cardall has been slowly bringing that gap down to Santandreu, while behind him, Hernan Quinteros has kept that gap steady at about one and a half seconds to Rick Cardall. Got a car off. Uh, sorry, um, Ferreira, but he's back on now by the looks of it. Just a spin at the hairpin, uh, potentially, for Freire, but he rejoins in P16 behind Costa, 51. Yeah, Costa versus Freire is for position, but uh, Sant'Andreo has put these cars uh, behind him uh, via blue flags. So um, it would just be a matter of these uh, blue cars going toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, hopefully.
There's our friend and commentary teammate, Ostravka Deponiak, who, well, we saw him for a moment, and then we flashed away, looking to Nico Patolda now. Nico started, was it second position? Second that they place, started yeah. in? Yeah, unfortunate for them. Uh, Nico, I think, has driven a pretty good recovery. He was, uh, I'd... I hesitate to say he was punted off, but he was definitely helped into the barrier at the start of the race <laughs> and, uh, and fell down the order. Uh, it's, um, it's a good way back to up it. to 11th and and driving pretty well, but we look forward to his teammate jumping in that car. Uh, Yoni Katila is very, very quick, arguably the, the quickest driver in the field today, though I don't know. I haven't chatted with him recently. I don't know how much practice he's driven. Um, I mean, he'll be quick no matter what. But and he, I know he likes to prepare uh, for he he prepares extensively for every race he runs. So I assume that is no different today. Uh, but I haven't talked to him about it, so I don't know just how prepared he is. Um, but I think when he gets in the car, we can we can expect to find him come up from an 11th place. Nico himself is very quick, but Yoni is blindingly quick. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it, when we see some of the drivers in these top cars uh, switch over. Um, the, the drivers joining in have to account for the, the damage and the wear on the car that they're being given as well as the wind, which is causing quite a lot of upset. Uh, most of these drivers would have practiced without any sort of environmental factors affecting their, their practice, but now they've been chucked into a race which has not an insignificant amount of wind, and that, some of the drivers think, is the reason for more thrills and spills during the first stint. So, yeah, we talked about that's this earlier. The case uh, when when we get driver changes, Travis. Yeah, number two machine, Marrera coming into pit lane. We might see. I don't know yeah, that we'll Chodini see a driver well. change there. Uh, Chodini also coming into pit lane, uh, and I just saw Ayub Elanuni join the server. So I think. We can expect to see Metis Malkovicius handing that car over shortly. Metis Malkovicius has driven a very clean race at the front and also very quickly. And Ayub is just as talented and just as fast. So um, if anything goes wrong for them, I predict it'll be Ayub's internet connection. That's been a theme in the yes. past. Hopefully hopefully that doesn't come off for him today because he is, he is very quick. He is very consistent. He's had so many great races that... Uh, that came undone because of challenges with his internet connection uh, but he'll be taking over that machine in a few moments probably in well, I don't think he'll come out in the lead of the race but he will certainly come out better than sixth it won't be 50 seconds uh, to do a tire change and a driver change so we'll have a shake up at the front pretty soon Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, race leader pits. There we go. Comes into the box. He's going to choose one of the first pit boxes. These t tend to be favoured by the drivers somewhere in the middle of pit lane. There we go. And it looks like Abel Hanouni, the Moroccan driver, is going to take over the car for the number 23 born to race. What a stint from Smarkovicius. Um, as St. Andrew also in the background coming into the pit lane. That's the gap that they had when they came in 15.9 seconds so a very healthy advantage then uh for the born to race team over uh, the number 90 30 racing car um do we think smarkovicius is going to do a change or is it just going to be is it just going to be ayub that we see as, nope, as he gets in the car yeah, now? he's yep he's just handed it over there's ayub off and going no drama at all it was a uh a perfectly normal step ayub stays wide with the pit exit line and off he goes yeah, so new race leader for the time being, it's Team Sidus and Rick Cardle. Yeah, Rick Cardle, no stranger to leading races, is he? Um, but, you know, he might not have expected to be leading this one so soon. Obviously, we'll have to see what happens with the pit stop cycle. But it is the number 15 leading furtive racing, the number 10 just now, by only a handful of seconds. In fact, less than two seconds at the last timing line. Yeah, it looks like Hernan Quinteros has been happy to just lurk there behind Rick Cardall, about one and a half seconds behind. Um, we know he's quick. Uh, his teammate, Pablo Setone, Pabluski, is also uh, is also a, a very good driver. So it uh, could, be, could be a bit of endurance racing strategy. We watched Ipsala go by a stricken car that was pointing yeah, in the wrong direction. Yeah, it was a Gum Garage car. It's one of the Gum yeah, Garage cars, 43. 
Yep. That will have been a bit surprising to come around the hairpin and see a car pointed at you the wrong direction. Um, yeah, I was saying Hernan Quinteros appears to be happy to run in second position. Uh, that gap opened up to 1.9 now, so I think maybe he's made a slight mistake somewhere. Um, Isaac Price promoted to third position on the back of those pit stops, but that will change once he himself comes in. We expect... I don't know if he'll be handing the car over, but he should be in the pits before too long. Uh, and may very well be that Ayub catches him and passes him before he has a chance to come in pit lane. Lara is in the pit lane as we speak, the number 13, doing tires and fuel. And we'll wait to see if there's a driver change. Ypsala, um, notably in the 90, takes over from Sant'Andrew. Very strong first stint for that car. They rejoin in P6. Here we go. This is getting... This is getting exciting. In uh, the number Indeed. 77 car, we have Nico Patola, who is about to hand over to uh, Yoni Catilla. Yoni Catilla has joined the server. Looking for Nico now. He's coming around the sweeping bends in the back of the circuit. So in about one minute's time, he will be into pit lane, giving that car over to Yoni Catilla, who we know is extremely rapid. We've talked about <laughs> him a few times already today. We're one quarter of the way through this race. As we watch Federico Silva in the Team America machine come through that first spin. Uh, at the one and a half hour mark, Rick Cardell is in the lead of the race, so this won't last much longer. Isaac Price on a pit stops is now promoted up to second. Ayub in third, Ipsala in the 90 car in fourth, and Hernan Quinteros in fifth. This is roughly where the order will be in a few moments. Rick Cardall we expect to see in any moment now. Yeah, Quinteros came in the pits, hands over to Pabli pa blah, Pablo Saitone. So there's a change there for the number 10 furtive racing team. Oh, we there may be a problem here for okay. the number 77 team. Nico Patola is in pit lane. Yoni Catilla disconnected as Nico was coming in, right. and now Yoni has reconnected. Okay, so don't know if maybe there's an internet connection problem there or if Yoni fat-fingered it. We'll keep an eye on them. That's, uh, that's a bit ominous, having your co-driver connect and then disconnect right as you're coming into pit lane, but Yoni is connected now. Nico stationary. He'll be giving that car over in just a moment. Yeah, we'll see. Um, just a shout out again to the Argentina Turismo team as Yoni Catilla does join the car. So he takes over the car from Nico. Um, we, did, we, didn't, we, we didn't mention it this time out, but we do have the return of the enormous pit straight gantry which shows the drivers the flag status of the track and also the clock which is just so clever that is a very cool mod i have no idea how they've done it <laughs> i uh, i do really enjoy it yeah it's yeah. incredible yeah uh, chris in our ears is giving us the uh the kind of technical know-how of how that mod works and it appears as though the lights on it are actually powered by the essentially dashboard lights of the car so like hazards headlights and stuff like that very clever anyway a uh, bit of breaking of the fourth wall we are watching rick cardle race leader potentially coming into the pits and he pulls it in the pit lane michael also in the pit lane hopefully going to repair that mess of a front end that he's got just tires and fuel for michael so look at it you can just see the the front left of that car up in the air that's that's damage he's living with. That is impressive. It looks like that car looks like a glitch. Like it, it has rendered incorrectly. That yeah. that's how bent up the uh, the front of that car is. We'll we'll have to get another shot inside. Isaac's later, leaving the pits, so. and importantly, sorry, he he leaves the pits and jumps Rick Cardle in the stop. So uh, whatever Rick's doing is taking a lot longer than whatever Isaac selected to do, and that is going to be a crucial gap. Yeah, it's got to be the tire change. It has to be. Yeah, so Isaac's gone for fuel only, um, and that's why the stop was so quick. And Rick Cardle has elected to do a little bit more work on that car. So. Yeah, 12 second difference in pit stop length there, so an advantage goes to the 99. Um, lots of driver changes. Lots of driver changes coming. Uh, we've already seen a few. Pali Peltokangas has taken over for Rick Cardall. Uh, we've got Yefen Jakob and Pedro Bacanco have also joined the server. So we're going to see some driver changes there. 
So that's Pedro Picanco going into the number 7-2. Jeff and Jakob Rambot going into the 37, the race green machine. He'll be taking over for Lorenzo Lucidi. Uh, Rody Krumpusch will be in that car later on in the race. Lucidi in the pits. I wonder if he's going to hand over his to uh, hand over to one of his teammates, Rony Krompusch, Jeff and Jakob, as you mentioned, Travis. Yeah, it'll be... It'll be Yef and Jakob hopping into that car in just a moment. And while all this was happening, um, Ayub did, as we predicted, inherit the lead of the race on cars cycling in and out of pit lane. And he's extended that gap. That was about 11 seconds um, before he took over the car as... Oh, Yef and Jakob. He, uh, he takes over the car from his teammate Lorenzo Lucidi and immediately gets a drive-through penalty. Oh, no. Speeding on the way out of the pit lane, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, being in one of the last few pit boxes, I suppose, it was a case of I'm um, excited to get going and he mustn't have had the limiter on uh, for long enough. Yeah, it's not what you want to do, is it? You, uh, you take the car off your teammate after an hour and a half of solid driving rejoin in a competitive position and then speed out of the pit lane. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Go on. Um, I think Ayub's made a mistake. Uh, that was a 13-second lead that is down to 10 and change, and he has Strelko de Pugnac all over him trying to get Ooh. one of his laps back. So not hmm. sure what happened there. We can take a peek. Whatever happened, it wasn't that bad because the car is undamaged, though he will let Strelko de Pugnac come through. No sense in fighting him because Strelko is a lap down. Uh, but... Stravko motivated, driving quickly to try to regain time. Uh, Ayub, perhaps a, uh, a lapse in a brief lapse in concentration, but off and going. No, no apparent harm done, apart from giving up a couple seconds to Sala in the 90 car behind him. Hey, oh. hey I mean, Stravko is absolutely motoring here. That's the race leader he's just overtaken. I mean, that's to, that's perspective if you need it. Uh, if you're just joining us, um, Stravko. Climbed out earlier on in the race and rejoined a lap down and has just, on your cameras there, overtaken the leader of the race on his charge back to the front. That proves that car has still got pace, he's still motivated. We've got Gabor to come as well. He's, uh, he's, he's not even touched the car yet this race and it's a force to be reckoned with. They are currently a lap down though in P16. Yeah, lap down but not out of it. Though, <laughs> with driving like that, uh, you wonder you wonder how much longer it can go on putting down some tire marks uh, on the power coming out of that fast corner where we've seen a few drivers go off already. Um, you mentioned his teammate is Gabor, uh, which I found amusing as he goes over the over the curb and through the bollards there. Um, that's arguably a little bit quicker, straightening out the circuit. Um, he and Gabor are known for coming together at times uh, in, uh, in past events. Um, I think if my memory serves, uh, it tends to be that uh, Stravko gets into Gabor more often than the uh, the converse is true. Uh, but the two of them have teamed up today, both of them very, very fast. Um, Stravko, uh, we've, we've seen him put on so many exciting performances, particularly in uh, in BF1. Uh, we've seen him come back from, from pretty big deficits uh, to just show us very exciting performances. And now Gabor, who is always quick and so consistent, the two of them together today, they are uh, they are a weapon of a team, if there ever was one. Yeah, it's a great pairing, and uh, we hope to see them carry on for the remainder of the race, uh, see if they can continue this uh, upturn in form after the disappointment of the disconnect. Um, yeah, we can see Price is uh, making gains here on Ipsale. The lead first of racing car. It's about a second between them here. Won't feel like it much longer. The uh, upturn of pace. I think Isaac has two miles an hour speed advantage before the braking into the first long right hander. A bit of a slide there on the exit. Uh, Ipsale is using as much of the tarmac as uh, achievable there. But we'll see this battle uh, develop uh, very soon, guys. I just yeah, want I to mention, if, if I can. Um, hold that thought, Travis. The wind <laughs> plays a pretty significant part in the trailer for this race. It really and does. Today, it has been a factor. So, 
it's justifying its place in the in the in the trailer for this event. Certainly, that's I think that's the thing that's been catching the drivers off um, a little bit more than maybe they expected here. Yeah, and we didn't. Um, Owen was Owen was watching during the uh, the build up and setting the grid and noticed that the wind is uh, is quite strong. I think you said 13 miles per hour, Owen, but I we did, missed yes. the direction. And I wonder if the direction is across this corner here that Isaac Price and Ipsala just went through because we've seen several drivers lose the rear of the car. There, it's easy. The car has so much power that it's easy. Um, you know, when you're when you're in fourth gear. Uh, to, to lose the rear of the car there, absent any extenuating circumstances, but perhaps the wind is doing a bit more work than the drivers would on their own. Yeah, the cars are going to get a headwind, a headwind on the home straight at the moment, and they're going to get a boost down the hill towards the chicane where everyone's been going off. So it's possible, it's entirely possible, that as we continue to ride on board with Ipsala here, as Isaac Price looming in the background, oh. Ipsala goes over the over the curb, off the track, and that's going to allow Isaac a run here. We'll maintain our conversation about the wind later as we see a, an overtake for P2. Isaac Price, uh, for rejected by Yerolokov Esports, moves his number 99 up to P2 again. Um, a great recovery and a, just a, an, an error there for Furtive Racing. I hope we can get that replay because it, it happened so quickly, but it looked like he managed to steer the car around the curb to avoid going over it, and instead took to the grass out close to the barrier. If he did in fact do that, that's one of the most incredible saves I've ever seen. Well, fair enough. Um, here we've got Botsy, Harley Peltikangas for Sidus, uh, currently up to P5, two places up from their qualifying position. Um, and uh, that's a new driver in that car. Obviously, Rick Cardle drove it the first hour and a half, and Ali in for a stint. This is a this is a Rick Cardle theme that we're watching right here. He runs well. He is strong. He is quick. He is not quite as quick as the very fastest drivers, but he is still very quick. But he always runs consistently near the front. Kind of, he, he runs a quiet race, stays out of trouble, uh, and he's right here in the top five. Um, easily in contention for a podium, uh, perhaps the uh, perhaps the race win if uh, if they get a bit of luck or bad luck befalls the drivers ahead of them. Um, Rick Cardall is always in it near the front, and we don't talk about him that much because he doesn't produce much drama. Absolutely, and I want to draw some attention to this driver. The number forty-two, Jay Madigan, is our connection from Australia. So cool. Yeah, it's uh, really dedicated, I have to say. Um, but hopefully, uh, be his bedtime coming up later on down the line. So yeah, yeah we'll see how Madigan proceeds here for Gum Garage. And yeah, uh, best of luck uh, from P20 from all of us here. Yeah, we're uh, we're working the clock today. We have all of these drivers in uh, in South America, and and I've joined from the middle of North America. Very early start for us. Uh, and while the sun is coming up for us here in the the Western Hemisphere, it will have been going down for John Madigan in the number forty two. We're going to rewatch that replay. You wanted to see Travis uh, of um, Isaac getting past the number ninety. Uh, here it comes. So we're going to be watching uh, Ipsala here, and he's going to get it a little bit wrong. He's going to go a bit wide. He's going to go over the curb, send a few cones, and that's difficult to hold. It's difficult to catch something like that, Travis. Yeah, that's unbelievable. He just missed the curb, the the high part of the curb, and went went over the flat on the. If you were coming around the Aston North Circuit um, and going around that hairpin, the high part of the curb is right in the middle. Uh, but he managed to avoid the high part of the curb, went over the flat, and then somehow held the car in the grass. You could see the rear of the car twitching. Uh, the uh, the engine in the back wanted to go to the front, but he he held it so well. He's uh, he's lost a few seconds to Isaac Price now, but that could have been much much worse. I think, all things considered, he should be he should be quite pleased that he's still running in third position. Yeah, that's fair enough.
So we watch Ipsala come through this, the first of these hairpins now. He's a couple seconds behind Isaac Price, who is now three seconds behind Ayub. So Ayub, we're used to seeing go very quickly. Um, he is he is easily one of the fastest drivers on circuit, but today losing time to Isaac Price, who somehow is powering that bent up machine toward the front of the order. Now only 2.7 seconds ahead of Ayub Al Nunes. We watch these gum garage machines run side by side. That's been while Lamarie on the inside. With his teammate on the outside, gets the job done, and off he goes around the bend and up the hill. Yeah, the uh, 21st from the position from his car, teammate. Unfortunately for Madigan, he spun twice, uh, first at turn eight and again at turn nine. Uh, the replay uh, played over during that point, so Madigan is just trying to cool down those rear tires again. Uh, oh no, Ooh. that could be a third error. Oh dear. I think he's got to change those tires at the rear. They're getting very hot. Yeah, he looked like, yeah, the the tires at the rear quite hot. It looked like he may have locked up a little bit into the corner there or perhaps put a wheel off. That car, a handful. He just needs to uh, he needs to back it off a little bit, let them cool, maybe change them. Yeah. The livery um, on this car is really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, the the the, the um the liveries this this uh, this race have been excellent. The drivers and the teams always put a lot of effort into the liveries for these big in, big endurance races, and today is no exception. Uh, the quality on show is plain for all to see. At the front, Ayub Elanuni has just come out of the final, excuse me, come out of the final chicanes with Isaac Price right on his tail. I think Isaac Price will easily have first position here, unless Ayub is willing to put on a spirited defense. Isaac is in the slipstream coming through the left-hand bend here. Actually, he might just be a little bit too far back. I thought he would have a good run out of the final chicane, but Ayub holds position into this fast right-hand bend. We have Alan Terzic rejoining the server while we watch these two race for the top spot. So we do expect to see another driver change in a moment. Dennis Lind will be handing over for Alan Terzic, who qualified that car. Isaac, nice. heroic yeah, on the Isaac brakes into this corner. Yeah, I think uh, he's going to line up the attack here, the turn 5-6 combo. And then out of 7, that should uh, give Isaac a slight run here. Won't be enough, but he's definitely plotting his maneuver. And uh, it shouldn't take him too long uh, to get side by side with the born to race car. It seems like he's got a big pace advantage. Oh, Ayub sliding. Ooh. That's a slide. He's managed to catch it, defending the inside line. Isaac will probably try a cutback here. Oh, no. Oh, that's a slide, and the lead changes. Yeah, unforced yeah. in the end for Ayub. And potentially another place, yep. Going to Ipsal. Yeah, I think he wisely stayed out of the way there. The uh, the rear tires now heated up a lot. I think he's in the worst part of the heat cycle for these tires and struggling with the car a little bit. So wisely, wisely back up to speed a bit conservatively. Let's us Saleh through. Their race has been so strong so far. There's no sense in trying to fight Isaac Price if, if he doesn't have quite the same pace. Uh, but they have managed very well and there's a long way to go. So they don't need to fight that hard. Um, Ayub is quick, his teammate also very quick. They are in perfectly good shape here. A small mistake, but um, mostly avoided any serious consequences. Yeah, it's a shame to see. Um, I mean, that, that Born to Race car has been solidly at the front and now drops down to P3 in a blink of an eye. Uh, Ipsal and Price now shuffled up one position and Isaac Price back in the lead. Um, and that is on aggregate as well. There is there is no one really to uh, challenge him on the pit stops quite quite yet. So the number 99 reaffirmed as our race leader. Ipsal for Furtive Racing, bringing the Argent all Argentinian squad there up into P2. So a great effort uh, so far, but not not over at all. Obviously for Born to Race, no, they can bring this not. back. He is struggling though, definitely struggling. Yeah, he just needs to manage the pace for these few laps while he's going through the peak of the heat cycle, and then the tires will come back to him. Should be a bit easier to drive. Um, we know he's quick and, and consistent, so once the car comes back to him, he will be in 
perfectly good shape. Though, while he's managing the, the worst part of the stint, uh, he also has Dennis Lind catching him from behind. That was a 10 second gap before they crossed the line, now down to 8.4. Uh, Dennis Lind, after uh, a bit of excitement earlier on, um, fell all the way back to 8th or 10th position, I think. Now up to 4th once again. And catching Ayub, who was in the lead of the race and now in 3rd. Yeah, they, I mean, this shows you that the margins are so fine. You, you, If you're off the pace, you can be swallowed up very, very quickly. Um, Dennis is on pace, certainly. And, well, with four hours and ten minutes to go, um, he's going to be handing the car over to Alan Terzic in a minute and going to go and have a bit of a break, probably. Looks like he needs it. Going wide again there at that hairpin. It's the second time this lap he's gone wide of an apex, but, you know, it's, uh, it's draining driving one of these. It really is. The uh, I think, I mean this this is a great mod. Make no mistake. I think this is an incredible mod. This car is so fun to drive. I, I mean, driving in Live for Speed just feels so good, and this car in Live for Speed feels so good. Uh, but it's a bit, I think, for a uh, a prototype two car, it's a bit uncharacteristic of the the real life machine. Um, you know, the you know the real Delara, um, you know LMP two cars. Are you know they're they're customer cars that are meant to be driven by uh, amateurs. You know amateurs run uh, running with you know one pro driver in in their team, uh, so they're kind of built to be easy to drive. Uh, these obviously not so not totally true to life, but they are brilliant fun to pound around. Travco's pulling up, made up a place. He's up to P13 now. Absolutely stunning pace out of that car at the moment for Zdravko. Um, a worthy recovery at the moment. P13, and I believe he's on the lead lap. We saw him pass. He is. Who would have been uh, Ayub's teammate at the time. Um, he, he made a pass to get back on the lead lap, and he has kept that. Dennis Lind in pit lane now. We know he's about six laps off the the rest of the field on pit strategy. And I didn't... Oh, there we go. Yeah, we saw Alan Terzic join a few moments ago, and he has taken over from Dennis Lind. So Dennis did a uh, Dennis did a triple stint. He didn't do a triple stint on those tires, did he? No way. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to say. Uh, we'll have to get confirmation. Yeah, um, but there we go. Myself. Alan Terzic takes over the car. And they rejoin if he P8, did, so yeah. If he did, it would have been three... Well, I mean, he did one short stint, six laps at the beginning with the VSC, but it would have averaged out to three 14-lap stints. If he did that oh, on Alan. a set of tires, that's amazing! Alan, <laughs> sorry, Pete. Alan on cold tires, uh, finding out it's a little bit tricky with all of that power and no temperature goes a little bit wide. That could have been worse. It's okay, Alan, we all saw that. Off you go. He was trying to weave in the pit lane to gain a bit of extra degrees, and uh, it just uh, proved to be futile as he is struggling to get the temperature in. He's trying to slide around as quick as he can. Uh, that's Dominguez, that's for position. Uh, Dominguez is uh, about a second behind here, 1.2 seconds behind. That's going to close. The Imbica Racing team will be feeling a bit excited here. They have a chance to benefit from the, a new driver on new tires. I'm going to have to turn the chat off uh, in a minute because every time I look at it, as, as soon as a car goes anywhere near going off the track or, or, or wobbles slightly, Gabor's in the chat typing safety car, safety car. Obviously, that team need something to bring them up to the front, but uh, it's making me laugh I'm quite not, a bit. I'm not convinced they do. Um, not anymore. Not yeah, anymore. They're on the lead lap. Uh, Strauko would have been about three and a half or four minutes off the lead and has now cut it to just over two so um i mean they if i were <laughs> if i were in their position i certainly wouldn't be upset if i got a safety car but um they're doing the work without it speaking of strafka Deponiak now coming across the pit exit line he has been in and is now out again i assume he will have taken new tires we can check on that in just oh, a second oh alan's gone off again Sorry, we're watching on board with Dominguez. Dominguez does have less fuel in the car than uh, Alan. Alan's got a full tank there, but he's really struggling to get up to speed. Um, probably, again, a factor of, uh, you know, having to work out the foilables on his car and also the wind situation. But 
He's making it look difficult. Oh, and there's oh, oh. a big lunge on Dominguez and unfortunate spin there. Oh my goodness me. It's a, it's a shaky opening lap for Alan. Yeah, it really is. Um, unfortunate they came together there. Kind of a little bit optimistic by Alan Terzic maybe, but I think I'd call that a racing incident. He was pretty well alongside, but he went a little bit deep in the corner. Unfortunate that he's uh, he struggled on his opening lap and then come together with Dominguez. Um, we were talking about pit strategy a few moments ago, and I expressed some disbelief that Dennis Lind had stretched uh, his tires to 42 laps um, after the reconnaissance we got from Strump and Bunyak before the race. Uh, but uh, now we have confirmation. 42 laps on those tires for Dennis Lind, uh, and also 42 laps on a set of tires for Strump and Bunyak, who is now out on cold, fresh rubber. Uh, he is managing it a bit better than Alan Terzic has. Uh, and hopefully he will keep it that way. But there you go. Um, tires, if the drivers manage them, can't go that long. And amazingly, Stravka Deponyak has made up a full minute on the leaders after falling behind early with a, uh, a timeout, a disconnection. And he is he's now again in a hot pursuit of the leaders. He's a lap off now. He needs to make up some of that time after making a pit stop. But now we have a better feel for how these teams will plan their pit strategy. We do indeed. 3.8 seconds, the gap from our leader, Isaac Price, in the number 99 uh, to the furtive racing number 90. There are three furtive racing cars, the number 90 currently leading, and there are also two furtive junior cars somewhere in the mix. So five teams from that outfit, which is uh, an incredible amount, as we've got a car going off in the background there. Um, that was... Who was that going off in the background? I couldn't quite catch it. Yeah, you mentioned the Furtive Racing crew. Uh, they have five cars in this race, two Furtive Junior machines and three of the regular Furtive Racing cars. Uh, their best starter was the number 30, uh, now running all the way down in 20th positions, two laps off the lead. Um, that car started the race in fifth, fourth, fifth position. Uh, with Alejandro Traspalacios qualifying, and it's gone bad to worse for them. A uh, very strong start, and now now running around for uh, for scruples in 20th. Yeah, it was Jeff and, uh, Jeff and Jacob that went off on the home straight just then, currently in P14. Uh, an 18-second gap to P13, that's, that's a big gap. He's got a... He can't afford to be driving off on the straights, uh, too many more times and as we head up to the hour Travis we're almost ready for a full rundown of the order so we'll do that in a few minutes indeed uh, before then we should obviously mention we are coming up to the two hour mark uh, if you're just joining us you're watching the six hours of Aston a series that's been oh sorry an event that's been organized by Argentina Turismo uh, one of the racing teams in Live for Speed they've uh, kindly invited us along for the ride to broadcast this for you on Twitch and YouTube so thank you very much for tuning in and uh, yeah we're glad to have you for some Live for Speed endurance racing we've only had one other kind of long endurance race this year haven't we Owen? Uh, the six hours of Kyoto in February which was also hosted by the Argentina Turismo team it's great to be back endurance racing it's, it's a different buzz than we get from our sprint racing calendar yeah, I totally agree with that. It um, encourages different types of driving. Uh, it encourages uh, different partnerships to be formed or in some cases uh, dismissed. So uh, it definitely livens up things in the Live for Speed community uh, in a very unique and interesting way. Um, yeah, we see other drivers uh, with uh, you know dreams of uh, coming from uh, far back and then maybe contending for Prizes. So uh, this is Ayub El Hanouni, uh, solidly in third place now. After uh, Isaac Price and Ipsale um, took full advantage of his uh, one uh, mishap so far, but uh, Paddy Patakangas in fourth place, a uh, long way back. But Saitone will be challenging him for the position as we head to the 33% mark. Two hours out of six gone. Yeah, just before we hit that milestone, uh, Chris has pulled up a replay of the incident between um, the uh, between Alan Terzic and um, 
I think it was Dominguez. So let's have a look. Uh, here it comes. We're going down the back straight then. Alan has uh, the inside line. Very, very obviously has the inside line. But then into the hairpin goes for a bit of a send and it was a, just a case of a, of a coming together I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put blame on either side of that I think it was a racing incident we'll get yeah, Travis's Dominguez opinion stayed where he wanted to be Terzic on call tires uh, drifted up um, without intending to see I would agree racing incident yeah so the Imbica racing car um, currently P10 Oh, wait, we've side by side. Saitone has caught Peltkangas in the rundown to turn eight. Uh, it's who's got the uh, who's got the breath to do it. It's Peltkangas first for the first curve, and then into turn eight there. Um, yeah, he's held on well, but Saitone is eager to make a move here. Yeah, Saitone is on pace and. Uh... He's looking racy. The number 56 has had an issue, has timed out the Lost Connection team, ironically. Uh, they have actually lost connection um, and are rejoining, so unfortunately they've kind of jinxed themselves there. Um, they have... Hmm, it's possible that it wasn't a lost connection. It might have just been an an issue with the driver change. Uh, but they are currently not on track, so they need to get back on the track. And they've got drivers here. They just need to jo join the race and and drive. They've been given permission now to rejoin. Let's keep an eye on this battle then, Owen. Saitone Racy against Botsy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Peltakangas has actually found a bit of room out with the final chicane um, but the opportunity to slipstream we'll know for uh, yeah, the time being I don't think it's going to happen this time around that's too far back at this point yes yeah, certainly Yeah, while these two are battling, Alejandro Trespalacios is lurking in the background, about three seconds back down the road. So, he'll uh, you uh, when you're when you're in the seat and trying to catch drivers ahead of you, uh, you just love it when they start battling because going side by side, trying to outbreak one another, costs a little bit of time. He will be urging them on so that he can slowly reel them in and then make a move of his own. Though he does have Michael Malik in the way. Michael Malik is a, uh, a talented driver and a gentleman, so we expect he'll jump out of the way. Now, watching Yoni Katilla on screen, looked like he, he had a peek. He had a peek to uh, you know let the let the leading driver know that he was there. But now and he is, is in the slipstream. This is take two between Terzic and Dominguez. They've caught each other up, but I think Yoni has this move sealed. Uh, before the heartbreaking point of turn four, yes, absolutely. Yeah, three-way fight for position. Then Yoni Catilla was caught up to the back of the Knight of Velox car. So very fast Monka Sport versus Knight of Velox is about to go down. And let's see what happens here then. A good exit from Yoni. Is it enough of a slipstream though as we head down to the fast chicane? The most difficult corner on the track it's proving to be today. I think that is fair to say. The driver's using that little dip on the side of the road again to cool the tyres down. Oh, Yoni thought about it but backed off at the last moment. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm not sure Yoni really thought about it, but Yoni will position the car to uh, inspire his competitors to make to do the work for him. Uh, but now he is all over the back of Alan Terzic. I don't think Alan Terzic will have this position for much longer. Uh, Yoni Cantilla might well urge him off the road with his bobbing and weaving behind, uh, but if he can hold the rear of the number 60 car coming out of this sequence of bends who will have the slipstream up the hill and into the final hairpin yeah this is a spicy battle three cars in a direct fight with one another and it is alan going wide again oh it's all it's on the edge totally on the edge of the car's grip and on the edge of his own talent there all the drivers pushing the limits uh it's fantastic to see this car really does lend itself to you know, who can wrestle this thing the best? At the moment, Yoni can. 
Alan, just a little bit too much fuel on board at the moment to be able to Ooh. do any sort of real fighting against these moves that are coming his way. And there we go. Yoni through up to P9. Yeah. Alan had great drive off the corner. He was able to hold the outside there and put the power down to stay close to Yoni. Yoni washed up the track a little bit in the middle of the corner, and Alan did well to give him room. But Yoni does take the position, has, I think, a big enough gap coming across the line here that Alan Terzic will not have the benefit of the slipstream, though Alan Terzic does now have Dominguez behind him. So Alan Terzic going backward, while Yoni Cotilla, as we expected, going forward. And now uh, Yoni off in the hunt for Chudini in the number 11 ahead of him. Oh, it's so satisfying catching up to a car on your own speed up the home straight and then having a slipstream out of the next corner. Dominguez has done just that. Alan must be heavy on fuel. There's no other re no other way this would have, uh, have happened. And Dominguez is through cleanly. Yeah, oh, easily done Alan, there. One last throw of the dice there but wasn't going to work no, that's a brilliant overtake textbook and well it's not going Knight of Alex's way right now that that strategy right at the beginning has thrown him off a bit yeah, Alan Terzic I'm not sure it looks like he's struggling with the car a little bit mm. and you know you make when you're sharing a car with a teammate um, you tend to make some compromises, and uh, Alan Terzic just quit, but quit. I said quit. Alan <laughs> Terzic is quick. He should not quit. He should keep fighting. Um, I, I think it's probably fair to say that Dennis Lind is a bit quicker than Alan Terzic, so I think they would they would favor Dennis Lind's um, you know preferences in the car setup when they're when they're making some compromises. Um, tire temperature, the tire heat cycle is coming back to Alan Terzic now. He should be in a lap or two at the peak of their grip but obviously struggling a little bit now i think we probably won't see him fall too far uh behind ricardo dominguez though right now obviously having a little bit of trouble as we watch pablo saitone who is now right behind Paolo peltagongas and has alejandro tres Palacios, as we expected right behind him uh this is the uh, the ebb and flow of endurance racing we talked about earlier. It got a little bit quiet with gaps spread out, and now we have a three-way fight for fourth position. Yeah, this is brilliant. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the the mix of drivers, the mix of um, strategies all coming together in these little micro battles that we get throughout the six hours. Uh, we've blown through our four-hour window, and we missed our rundown. So we should probably do that now, Travis. We can indeed. We have Isaac Price at the front, five seconds clear of Ipsala in the number 90 car. Ayub Elanuni, who had taken over the lead, or the effective lead of the race, falling back to third position, uh, made a small mistake and then struggled with the car early in his stint, but now he has stabilized that gap around eight seconds. He has Pali Peltagangas, who we were just watching, in fourth position, fighting with the drivers in fifth and sixth for Alejandro Traspalacios and Pablo Saitone. We have Pedro Picanco in the number 72 in seventh position. We'll have to take a break from. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Uh, we got a uh, another fight on our hands here. Pablo Saitone looking for fifth position, right here. That is. Uh, that is. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to run down the order while I have uh, Pete talking in my ear about how the Furtive Racing Junior Machine got through back up to uh, where it had started earlier on. Or no, that was the other Furtive Junior Machine that started in fifth position. My mistake. Uh, no, it, wasn't, it, was, it, was this one. it was this one that started in P5. Well, I'm um, all mixed up. Yeah, there. never mind. I'm trying I, to no, do too okay. many things at once. <laughs> yeah, that, that happened all at the wrong time. No, 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 that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to the order. This car is on a, on a Alejandro on a, Tres Palacios yeah. is all over the back of Pali Peltagangas. He, uh, it looked like he was comfortable to just watch this battle, and now he's inserted himself in the middle of it, and it's not going to be a battle for much longer if he keeps this up. We'll watch them in the background while we go back to uh, Chodini, who's running in eighth position with Yoni Cotilla up to ninth, and Ricardo Dominguez he took that position just a couple laps ago, running in tenth with Alan Turgic behind him. And we will return to the order in just a minute because Alejandro Trespalacios is eager to take the fourth position from Pali Peltagangas. Yeah, this uh, this can't wait, this battle, can it? As, uh, well, there we go, Saitone deciding that his his time in the race is over for now. He goes into the pits for a scheduled stop. Yeah, that might explain why he wasn't fighting so hard for that position. If uh, you know, it's not hmm. not worth not True. worth dinging your doors before you uh, hand the car over to your teammate. 
Um, and uh, if you're going to come into pit lane anyway, it's a bit rude to your competitors to, uh, to try to dice for those positions and then chop their noses getting to pit lane. Yeah, so expecting stops then from these guys. I think it's safe for us to continue your rundown. P8. Indeed. So I had made it down to Alan Terzic uh, in the in 11th position with Ricardo Costa behind him at the number 51. Um, Freira in 13th position with Ostravka de Bunyak, that Yes Motorsport with a Fragmaster livery on it, up to 14th position. He fell down the order early after he disconnected, working his way back up. Giffen Jakob in... There we go, the race green machine right there. The number 37 running in 15th. We have Federico Silva, who just went off. Um, saw that he caused a few yellow flags, but we didn't see where or how. Um, the number 52 in 16th. Michael Malik are running solo today for his own team in 17th. Martin Kapal uh, runs in 18th position. We have Gentile in 9th. John Madigan, our Australian competitor. The lone Australian in the field today uh, in 20th with Sanchez. The other furtive junior machine that had started all the way up at the front of the order in fifth position, the best of the furtive machines, um, now having a, a difficult day all the way down in 21st position with Benoit Lemarier in one of the gum garage machines running in 22nd. And we've had two cars retired, I believe. It was a we had a car go. We had one car retire very early. Um, it would have been one of the Leica machine. I think that was right. And yep, I've Lycan missed Racing. the, uh, yeah, the Leica Racing. And I've missed the other car that retired. But two retirements. There's our order. Ten yeah. minutes past the two hour mark. The other retirement was the Lost Connection team. Uh, ironically, the number 56, mm. driven by Contrera. Ips Sala was comes in the pits. Uh, out of the pits, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Peter. While I was uh, while I was running down the order, um, I saw a message uh, contact between Pali Peltagagas and Tres Palacios. Uh, so they touched somewhere earlier in the lap. While Alejandro Tres Palacios, you can see on the screen now, is oh, right wow. there yeah. under Pali's Pali's bumper. He will have the inside line into the first corner. He should have this position done pretty easily. It's very hard to fight from the outside, Whoa. though. Ooh, Tres Palacios. I think he uh, he thought he believed he had more room than he actually did. Uh, but avoids contact. Move done. Pali Peltacongas demoted to fifth. Still staying out of trouble. They've been running around that position for the whole race. It appears they will stay there. Ipsala, we've just rejoined him coming through the hairpin in third. Yeah, after his stop. And uh, Tres Palacios as well. Take a bow. That was a fantastic move built up over a two laps. And then he struck. Dominguez in the pit lane. Uh, in the pit lane for the number two Imbica Racing and drives back out. And no change. So no driver change there. Another stint for Dominguez. But and speaking of pit lane, I think we'll see Isaac Price in shortly because Vitatis Lagutskas has joined Ooh. the server. So we'll watch Isaac Price coming through the final bend here. Comes up over the curbing, wide out of that highly cambered corner. He'll come through the chicane. We wait to see if he will move over to the left and duck into pit lane to hand that car over. Or if he'll go around one more time, he will not. Into pit lane is Isaac Price to hand that car over to his teammate, Matadis Lagutskas. We'll see if they repair damage. I hope they do, because the front of that car is a bit unattractive. They choose not to. Tires and fuel, and Matadis Lagutskas will join in, or will take over the car in just a moment. As we see Ayub coming into the pits behind Isaac Price, we, I don't think we expected that, because, oh no, I'm thinking of Dennis Linda's off cycle, my mistake. Yeah, I so saw Ayub in the pits right behind Isaac Price, on cycle with everyone else. Ayub will keep that car. Tadis Lagutska takes over, and he is off and motoring once more. Yeah, so Ipsal stays out and takes over the net lead of the race. Isaac Price emerging in second position then, and uh, Ayub very close behind. Yeah, so uh, Ayub would have gained time in that pit stop uh, with the driver change necessary for rejected by Yer Loco. Uh so yeah that could spice things up a little bit um, 
Yes, we'll see uh, Tres Palacios and Pel Peltkangas are close enough again, but lap traffic could be an element of um, frustration here for uh, the first of junior car. Uh, that's Silva and Jeff and Jacob who are in a legitimate battle for 15, so Silva yields straight away. Um, Yeah, so uh, we'll see what Jeff and Jacob can do here with uh, the blue flags are now called out for him. Uh, yeah, that may have suited Trespolicy Policy us a bit more, to be honest. Uh, it's giving them a bit of a buffer now. Um, yeah, so we believe uh, there's a pit stop due um, for the number 12, and a driver change will be uh, part of that. So this is... Uh, a case of cooler heads need to prevail here and yeah it looks good with uh, the race green car uh, pulling over for uh, for the lapping to be done yes a good run for that first of junior team they'll be pleased to have seen <laughs> the things transpire the way they did yeah they're, uh, they're up a position from their qualifying position very very strong drive from Trespassius so far and yeah, as you said, I mean, we think he could be coming into the pit lane at the end of this lap, and then it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. Uh, Ipsal may also come in the pits, similar cycle to the cars around him. And did we mention that the Gutzcast has taken over from Isaac? Yes, we did, I'm hearing. Yeah, it's just because AU gained time in the pits, that's how we did. Yeah. Ayub is now right behind him, though, and not letting him get away. Oh, goodness me. Following closely through that chicane is not easy, and Ayub uh, found out the hard way as uh, Ipsal uh, stays out. But number 12, as predicted, Trespalacios comes in. There he is, followed by Silver, I believe. Yeah, so the driver change will be taking place shortly there for first of Junior. Uh, that is Fernandez who will be getting uh, in control of that car soon but uh, carry on as normal for Costa sorry that's um, that's Silva beg your pardon um, Silva will uh, resume his race and now uh, Fernandez has uh, taken command of the number 12 um, Yanni Catella pits as well that should be a routine stop for him yeah, just a long enough hold though. Um, yeah, that should be a refuel for the next stint. Yep, fuel only going in that car. And we have oh, a fight goodness. on. A very aggressive fight on between Ayub and the Gutzkaz. Ayub going around the outside of the Gutzkaz into the fast chicane. And will the Gutzkaz have anything to say about that? Well, not right now. Can't find a way through at the hairpin. And that was a fantastic move from Abe. Hey, hey Travis, Abe's back, I think. He is indeed. I've uh, I've been looking up and down the order in the background while you guys call the race to see uh, if anything interesting is going on. And uh, I realized that I made a mistake earlier on. Matatus Lukuskas did uh, indeed win oh. the GT categories. He just Dude. Did he touch the back oh. of Ayub or did Ayub do that on his own? Incredible oh, hey, driving by these two to hold the cars. Yeah, so I was saying that Vitalis Lagutskas had won the GT category, but he did not do that with Isaac Price. They did not share a car. Mm. So uh, they are today, uh, but Vitalis Lagutskas did that with other teammates at uh, at Kyoto earlier in the year. Uh, as you were, carry on. That was exciting. That was exciting. Um, uh, these two knocking nine bells out of each other. I thought they were both going to go off, but somehow managing to hold on to the... the twitchiest car um well I, I don't have any words um i'm amazed frankly owen gosh yeah i i saw how lukuskas he really went for broke through turn 13 using that gravel trap as a way to uh, you know keep himself uh, running uh, full throttle but then uh, it worked out for ethanuni uh, in the end, uh, out of 14, so an extraordinary piece of driving for these two. It lasted seven or eight corners. We have uh, the 
pit stops occurring here for our solo driver Michael Malik and indeed Pauli Peltikangas for Team Silas uh, far off the pace but uh, I don't think that's the case anymore they're having a good run just outside the top five now as uh, Saitone reclaims that position uh, Terzic is too far back uh, to claim the same though yeah he's coming but he's not, he's not there just yet the recovery for the Knight of Elox team is still underway um, a few mistakes here and there for this outfit but they're still in the race and they're still in a respectable position and there's a long way to go way more than halfway to go um, you know at what point during an endurance race of, of, of this kind of style does it feel like a sprint race again well normally the final hour and a half is where you really need to be in the hunt or else it's not looking good um, a little bit of a traffic up ahead here for Alan Terzic in the number 60 yeah Sepulveda is the very last car on track so it's a case where Silva needs to lap a car and then he'll be lapped uh, shortly himself so uh, Terzic uh, it's not ideal here but he has time enough uh, to um, catch that 30 car which was previously sighted uh, earlier on in the race uh, for mm. blue flag uh, uh, ignorance, I suppose. Yeah, oh, so repeat that, offense. Works on ignorance. Yeah. It's off with Terzic <sighs> facing backwards. Uh, uh, just really unfortunate. They were side by side and they didn't cooperate. Yeah, that is. Uh, well, I, I, I will have to get another another look at it from a different angle. Um, that is the second time we've seen something happen like that, and another time we've seen. The Knight of Alex car in the gravel at that particular corner, and, and that time it was it was definitely an assist and damage to the right rear, which yeah, it's look you can see you can see it very clearly from that camera angle that there is some unwanted, certainly unwanted uh, damage on that car, making it very difficult for Alan now. Oh, that's not good for their afternoon at all. Uh, so yeah, we'll grab a replay and, and, and have a lovely look at that. Um, uh, Travis, you're back, and I think you missed. I think you missed what just went down. Yeah, I. I, I oh, uh, oh my I, goodness! Well, yeah, I didn't miss all of it. <laughs> I had to step away for one second and came back to you talking about uh, Alan Terzic's wild ride, and uh, he's nearly had another one there. Managed to avoid the hard part of that curb. Um, yeah, their their day has been. I frankly, I'm. I'm amazed that they're running as well as they have because they've had so many scary moments off the road. Um, but uh, yeah, Alan will have uh, he will have radioed in that he needs a new pair of shorts after <laughs> he gives over the car. <laughs> that he, is does, a good way. he does manage he does manage to keep it mostly between the lines and mostly out of the barriers. Lost a little bit of time, but he will he will continue mostly unabated. We'll look ahead to the furtive racing machine at the front of the order. That's Ipsala in the number 90. A good day for them. Ayub, pff, everyone everyone playing with the, uh, the the grip of the car at the very rear. It sounds like we have a replay queued up in just a second. We'll wait for that to come on screen. Yeah, while things are a bit quieter, let's watch what happened between Alan Terzic and the, uh, the number 30. So leaves a little bit of room, but in the middle of the road, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult one. I don't know. Um, I'll let you decide on that one, Travis. I, 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 hmm, difficult. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just seeing it here for the first time. I think that was a bit optimistic. I mean, I think I would have tried to do the same thing. Like, he was going wide, so try to get inside. But the the grip in that corner is, is so tricky. Um, and the wind is also blowing across there, so kind of hard to make that move stick. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't blame him for trying to make it work, but... Oh, and saw it happen. <laughs> what's what's yeah, your take? I, I did, of course. And the stewards have made a firm uh, decision. Black flag oh, has my. been called for Sepulveda. Uh, I, I mean, that is the end of their race. So interesting. I, I wouldn't another have caution car them. eliminated. Oh dear, he spun it. Okay, yeah, that's a different incident. That, that yeah, that that the black flag is for ignoring blue flags. It's not directly related to the incident. I wouldn't say. Um, I wouldn't put all of the blame into the number 30 for that no, one. But it was just hanging over that uh, team for earlier yeah. in the race it's just uh, unlucky in yeah. that regard yeah well a black flag that's unfortunate that is uh, that is a shame to see but the number 30 then 
Um, the stewards have decided that that is that is enough. They have seen enough, and that car will no longer run. By Tony. One of the things. Go on. Uh, sorry, Pete. I was, no, no, was going to say one of the things I enjoy about commentating sim racing uh, is that um, you get to you get to participate with the audience as that's a looks like a gum garage machine in the gravel there. As we more blue watch flags. the uh, the white and green machine go through, as we have more blue flags. Uh, well, this this is not blue oh, flags. This is Yoni uh, Katula racing for position. Um, the uh, the commentary from from chat. Uh, Roni agrees that uh, that was a bit optimistic from Alan. So though I would have, I, I said I would have tried it myself, and I stick by it. Uh, also a bit optimistic, and uh, and Roni's with us. So that's I. I, I hesitate to say that I'm right, but I feel good that at least one person agrees. Yeah, of course, yeah, I, I said it was just a lack of cooperation between the two drivers with different uh, elements in their race to take care of, and it just result, resorted in a really bad impact for the lead car that wanted uh, to benefit from blue flags. So, yes, um, yeah, the stewards have uh, weighed in, and that's uh, the final decision as far as I'm concerned. Got a few yellow flags on the circuit. So one by the uh, the 30 car, which will be parked soon if they haven't already. Uh, and we saw, I think, the 42 of Giorgetti went off somewhere. That's one of the garage machines. Uh, so that would have been the car we saw off while uh, while the leaders were going through in the hairpins around the middle of the circuit. So we watch Pauli Peltacangas and Pedro Picanco. Andrew Picanco has brought that road appraising machine up toward the front of the order. Um, yeah, they were. They looked like quickly. they were in. Yeah, they were in. They were in a rough shape earlier on in the mm. race, and now they are right in the mix for a top five. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm reluctant to say this came out of nowhere because it, obviously this this has been building for a while. But uh, very quietly and very deliberately, the road appraiser team, the number seventy two, has been climbing through the order and uh, now looking at the back of. Um, Pali Peltacangas. You can see there on the right hand side that the qualifying position was 24th. They didn't actually compete in the qualifying session. They got a bye uh, from the organisers to join the race. So they've come from the back. They didn't have an easy start. And now look at it. This car is all over the back of the Sidus machine. Yeah, Teo Jose started that car and obviously did well to work his way up the order. Um, but we know Pedro Picanco is quite fast, and uh, it has it has borne out in in the results so far. Two and a half hours into the race, and now he is right on top of Pali Peltagongas in fifth position. And it looks like by the uh, by the time by the time Owen has had to leave uh, which will be in a few moments Owen uh, has other obligations that he will need to attend to in a few moments and by the time Owen has to leave us Pedro Picanco will be in fifth position Owen yeah uh, this is a good way to sign off for my stint in this uh, commentary booth uh, Picanco is on the attack here this will be turns five and six he's through just has to maintain the speed on exit and he'll have a position gain. So yeah, with that, I shall bid adieu. Thank you very much, guys, and best of luck with the rest of the stream. Thank you. Thanks, Owen. Um, a pleasure, as always, for joining us in the commentary box. Um, thank you for your insight and uh, yeah, your company for the first two and a half hours of this race. Um, see you at RTFR in a, in a, in a, in a jiffy. Travis, um, we are alone in the box now. We, we are some indeed. Fun. We can't. We're not strictly alone. We've still got Chris in the background. Um, he's been finding all these incidents for our replays and uh, picking out the battles on stream. So, yep, hard work going on in the background, certainly while we just have fun in the foreground. And we're also we're separated by 4,000 miles, so uh, alone in one sense, but not in another. Hmm. It was a bit that was that was, that was a bit dark and, and lonely sounding. Uh, it's not at all. Everyone is perfectly happy in this commentary box as we look at these furtive machines running nose to tail. That's the furtive uh, the furtive machine driven by Chodini chasing one of the junior drivers, I believe. Is that a pink car ahead? It is. Yeah, don't be distracted. Yeah. This car has two. It's a split livery. 
So I'm guessing there's one furtive junior driver and one furtive racing driver in this car. And hence one side, the left side is orange and the right side is uh, kind of a magenta colour. So yeah, depending on I, which camera angle, it could be furtive junior versus furtive junior. Or if, I scroll racing. Through, if I scroll through our spotter guide, I believe mm -hmm. they've done the half and half. So the yeah. furtive machines are red and the furtive junior machines are more... Uh, Oh, more pink magenta, and then this one split down the middle with Chudini in the car right now. Coming through the chicane, he'll hit those tires, or he won't hit those tires. It looked like, it looked for sure he was about to snipe one of them, but manages to just miss it. Yeah, pretty close. Um, not no, no move on at the moment, but these two having and flowing, as we've seen uh, for, for a number of the teams in this race. Uh, it, seem, it does seem to be as though some of the sister, sister cars kind of clumped together a little bit. We certainly saw that earlier with Gum Garage. Uh, we haven't seen it too much with the furtive cars, but yeah, now there might be a move on here. Oh, as we got a car Ooh. off, that is the Aston... Um, oh, there's a VSC out. So that car yeah. again is beached. It's the same car that caused the previous VSC, and it's unfortunately yes. Martin Cabal. Yeah, Eric Blixt this time. Uh, no, Martin No, Cabal it is Martin. He's back yeah. in the car. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Martin, Martin has done that twice now. Uh, he does manage to get it out of the litter and back onto the pavement, but not before a VSC. I don't see, I don't see anyone jumping for pit lane, but I think this will be a relatively short one anyway, so nobody would benefit. Um, I was about to say that uh, you know we would expect to see the furtive racing machines together more often because there are five of them in the race. Uh, certainly, plenty of opportunity for them to run near each other on track, as two of them are doing right now. Um, I'll note at the top of the order that we had earlier on, perhaps an hour or so ago, um, you know, this trade of positions between uh, the number 99 and the number 23, so that's Patatus Lagutskas, um, in the uh, the reject by Hero Loco, uh, and then a Sorry about that. Ayub in the Born to Race car. Um, and Ayub had fallen back to third position. Now Vitalis Laguskas in third. Uh, and the uh, the gap had kind of grown and shrunk there a few times. But now we have Ipsala in the number 90 car. The furtive racing machine, the lead furtive racing machine right now, has put a 10-second, sorry, 50-second lead on Ayub. This has to be a, uh, a glitch with the tracker as we cycle through VSC. I think it was about 12 seconds when I looked a moment ago. So... Yeah, the uh, the changing complexion of the race with the uh, changing drivers and changing strategies. This furtive racing car with Augustine Dipsala in command right now has uh, has taken a pretty healthy lead and looks like Ooh. I didn't expect we would I have cars coming this. into pit lane. No. Yeah, this is Augustine Dipsala has decided to take this opportunity with the VSC to go a little bit off cycle, put a, some more fuel in the car. I have to believe the VSC is going to end while he stopped in pit lane, Pete. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised the VSC is still going. I mean, um, the incident was cleared a long time ago, so we need to, we need to get back to green flag racing as soon as possible. Um, drivers are seeing this as an opportunity to come into the pit lane, and this could change the profile of the race entirely. We have cars in the pit lane getting a pretty cheap pit stop at the moment. Um, look, Ipsal is going to be able to get out ahead of El Hanouni oh. here. So Ipsala handed the car over to Santandreu. Okay. So this is now Sebastian Santandreu back out. in the car. Back out. Yeah, he started. I believe he started the it race. Is. And the BSC am... is still going, so he'll be in and out in the lead. Ayuba Lanuni is just coming through the final chicane right now. So Santandreu is, is he's playing with fire. That close to the line, but he does manage to avoid it. Right, Martin's got a puncture as well. There was more to this incident than we found out. Um, I, I, does it justify a VSC? Because obviously Martin is travelling around at pit lane speed, but with a puncture. Um, yeah. Interesting. Because other I cars have, have had punctures. About this. Yeah. yeah, I have mixed feelings about this because it's... Yeah, I mean, it's a bit... It, it's certainly benefiting Martin Kapal and the win update asset. It's, it's going to be a long, long old VSC. But, if everyone, everyone could go in the pits in, uh, that's ahead yeah, of Martin here. Yeah, so it keeps, it keeps the field neutral by holding the VSC this long. And we've also seen a few cars struggle with punctures and go off and create a dangerous situation for cars coming through at racing speed. So, you know, on one hand, I think, I think you would expect the drivers to... Well, one, the driver with the puncture, you would expect to safely and, and intelligently navigate the circuit with 
a stricken vehicle to get back to pit lane while other cars are coming around at racing speed. And you would expect those drivers to be mindful of cars that are going slowly because they have some kind of trouble. Uh, but given the, the incidents we've had earlier on in the race, I don't think this is a bad call from the officials, mm. though. Green flag okay. right now. We got the call while I was talking. The VSC would be ending. Batatis Lagutskas is now right behind Ayub Elanuni. So this has gone... Yeah, this is this has gone this has gone poorly for Ayub. Somehow Vitalis Agutskas has caught him and is now going around the outside, coming into the first of these hairpins. There we have them on the brakes. Sant Andreu was able to get in and out of the pits well in the lead, so he will have held on to a 40 or 50 second lead. Uh, it's come down to about 30 seconds, but yeah, Sant Andreu um, took over that car from his teammate Agustin of Sale, and. That lead now as timing cycles with cars coming across the line is eight seconds. So able to get a pit stop, hold on to the lead. Vitalis Lagutskas and Ayub Elanuni racing one another for second and third as Martin Kapal goes around once more. Pete, uh, I think he's he's struggling. He's having a hard time. Yeah, I mean, interesting. He's got a puncture on the rear, which is why he's having issues. It's impossible to drive that thing with with a rear puncture. But uh, interesting call on the, on the green flag for the VSC there. Um, why was it, you know... Anyway, we'll, yeah, we they held see. him. They held it so long, but didn't let him get all the way around to the pit entrance before they let it go. But yeah, yeah, Chris, um, Chris saying in our ears that they got him through these bends that we're seeing right now. Um, Sebastian Santandreu driving through right now. They uh, they let him get through here before they turned everyone loose, and it sounds like he had a bit of a gap. So um, they yeah, determined it was safe to turn everyone loose, which I think is a pretty good call. Yep. Um, we were we were very impressed by their uh, their organizing and officiating as we have quite a gaggle right here. That's a Team America car uh, back marker letting some of the leaders come through. It's a bit exciting. That's uh, let's see, there's Michael Malik in the thick of it too, who moves aside. Yeah, it's Alan, Alan turns it through. Yeah, yeah, good on Michael Malik. Done. He did that very well to let them through without uh, losing too much time because I believe he's racing that uh, Team he America is. orange Two machine behind him. On. Yeah, so good driving by uh, Michael Malik to manage that. Yeah, um, I was saying that uh, the the organizing and the officiating from the Argentina Turismo team have, was was so good at the uh, at the Six Hour Kyoto, and we're seeing more of the same today. Um, mm. Great effort from them uh, and a great race. And uh, though a car wide, it looks like it might have been a gum garage machine. Alan Terzic nearly got in the side of it. Pete, I need a second to breathe. This is how this is how these things always happen. It's uh, a bit quiet, and we have a moment to chat, and then everything happens all at once. Oh, you can't you can't get away from it. Um, it, it happens all the time. But yeah, here we are, the gum garage car, the 42, actually going very slowly. Uh, not this wasn't just uh, a symptom of the previous corner. This car is struggling for some reason. Um. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, anyway. he's on stone cold tires, and I think he was letting cars through. Those Fair aren't. Enough. I don't believe those are R fours, and they're well, they're not. They don't look new, but they're also very cold. So I'm not sure what's going on there. If he's been stopped or not, and yeah, we'll have to see if he's been far off the pace for a few laps because there is no temperature in those tires. His last lap was a 254. So obviously something going on with the gum garage machine. As we look at this battle once more, Alan Terzic just ahead. Having yeah, Alan got taken past that on position the straight, yeah. Go. Took it, mm -hmm. um, just caught the tail end of the overtake happening. Uh, but yeah, Pedro Picanco, 37 seconds off the lead now, so absolutely motoring at the front. He's 27 yeah, he seconds behind El Hanouni. Yeah, he was in fifth when we talked about him a few minutes ago, and now yeah. he's swiped one more position. He's got Pele Peltagangas five seconds behind him now, so... yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, they started at the back and are motoring to the front. Speaking of at the back, motoring to the front, Straka Deponyak there in 13th, the final car on the lead lap. Uh, he's been on and off the lead lap after his early disconnection and pit stop cycles, but he's on the lead lap again now. We should see Only just. If, he, if he took the VSC opportunity mm. to top off on fuel because that will have helped them a, a fair bit. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, if 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 he has been through the pits, that would explain why Santandro is so close, would it? We will see. Um, yeah, Santandro is just behind him on the road.
Yeah, it's probably it's probable that he stopped during the, uh, the during the VSC. That could explain why he's so close to the leader again. Yeah, so that will allow them to stretch a little bit, um, though it's not going to make much of a difference in his gap to the lead, uh, because obviously we saw uh, Augustine of Sale take the opportunity to change tires and to put in a full load of fuel and hand over to his teammate, Sant Andreu. Uh, but every little bit helps. Uh, Stravka Toponiak will be on his, well, his, his second, but a little bit off cycle stint on these tires with a full load of fuel. If you took that opportunity, we watched Pali Peltagangas stop the car in the middle of pit lane. Yep. Rick Cardall has connected, so we will see Rick Cardall in the car in just a moment. Hernan Quinteros is going to go by and take a sixth position. Alan Terzic coming into pit lane. Ooh, so damage repair. Yeah, he's oh, well. That car into shape. Yeah, that car's had uh, a bit of damage here and there. Oh, well, it's going to be a long stop then for the Knight of Velox team. Uh, that was not a trivial amount of damage to be fixed. So expect a lot oh. more from them. Pete. Yeah. Yeah, number ninety. That's Sebastian Santandreu, who we thought had pulled a blinder. Mm -hmm. With his calling his teammate in to take over that car, now has a drive-through penalty for ignoring VSC procedure. We don't know precisely what that means. We will find that out. Uh, but the uh, the work they have done to get the lead of the race is now going to turn into P4 at best. Wow, well, we're going to have to consult guess. the rule book then and work yeah. out what he infringed on because other cars went into the pit lane during the VSC. Yeah, they did. Uh, Vitalis Laguskas and Ayub Ilanuni are easily close enough to to overtake Sant Andreu. So, yeah, we'll have to look at the rule book and see if perhaps there's a delta that everyone needs to keep. Um, but either way, that's a drive through penalty for the number 90, Sebastian Sant Andreu, who just took over for his teammate, Augustine Ifsale, in the lead furtive racing machine. That will be frustrating for them because they have done a lot of work and driven that car quickly and cleanly straight in to take straight over in. Yep. straight in yes indeed just get it out of the way you know there's that you can you can complain as much as you want it's going to waste time just get the penalty done and uh we'll see what happens but they are definitely going to lose a place to the guts cast there goes the guts cast through taking over the lead then uh but el hanuni is coming across start finish and does it indeed get past and we're hearing it could have been a late pit limiter uh activation and potentially passing a car under the VSC for St. Andrew. So maybe one or two actually, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah. Crimes. Infractions. Infractions. <laughs> crimes. <laughs> I like crimes better. Call yeah. the police. He's committed a VSC crime. Yeah, the uh, I think late on the pit lane speed limiter is a bit subjective, but if you overtook a car, then it is cut and dry. Uh, clearly a penalty. That will have been, uh, well, we talked about how the VSC didn't necessarily benefit the number five machine, the DS Motorsports car, uh, with Stravka Deponiak in charge right now, uh, until that drive through penalty. So they uh, they get a little bit more help from the officials there, Stravka Deponiak uh, and his teammate Gabor, who will take over the car a little bit later, slowly working their way back up the order. Uh, they gained. Well, by the timing tower there, we see they gained about 10 seconds on the lead of the race, so still pretty far back, but absolutely not out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there we go. The number 90 in third place. It's not not a not a massive penalty. It's just a bit of an annoyance. Uh, they're still well in the hunt. There's the, the top three now separated by um, only a handful of seconds compared to what it was. So this is great stuff. But it is the 99 that retakes the lead. Thanks to that, they're still sporting the damage that Isaac picked up at the next corner. Um, this this track is so hard in this car. It, it looks open and wide and easy. And, you know, the car has a lot of downforce, but it's, it's difficult. <laughs> exactly. It's difficult. It's hard. And, uh, well, the best of the best are struggling today. But they've managed to get the car back up to the first place. How long can they hold it? especially live for speed simulates the the mechanical vehicle dynamic dynamics so well too that you know in a car like this that relies on downforce uh and in the compliance of the tire when you go over these these contours in the road um especially with some of these aggressive setups that some of the teams are doing there are uh, there are at least a couple who are running a locked rear differential which you know if you're 
because the most of the corners are so wide open, um, you know, you use that to help the you use that to you know help keep the power down as much as you possibly can. But it you know it makes it easy to lose the rear of the car when when one of the the rear tires is slipping. Um, and if you go up over one of these bumps or high on a curb or you just touch it the wrong way, um, you know, upsetting the car uh, doesn't. When you when you lose so much of the mechanical grip, the the downforce doesn't help you very much. Um, so these guys have to be really careful and really precise. Yeah, indeed, it's uh, it's it's a definitely a challenge, and it's certainly the the wind is the talking point, isn't it? This is something that doesn't often, you know, really we don't often talk about it because we don't normally get that much wind in in these sessions. But it's it's a non-trivial amount of wind. And it's causing havoc out there. Indeed, there's a driver connected. We'll be taking over the number 40 car, I think, in a minute. Yeah, driver we haven't seen yet. Rafael Wheeler, the Brazilian, will be taking over one of the Road Appraise, uh, sorry, Road Appraise Racing Team machines. That's yep, uh, yeah, Ferrer right in the car right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but his uh, his team, Rafael Wheeler, will be in momentarily. Expect to see them in shortly. Pretty good performance for them, up to 11th. Yep, yeah, uh, definitely. Both road appraiser teams making moves. Um, one of them started at P24, the other in P21. Yeah, P3, yes. Sebastian uh, Santandreu, who's been off. A little bit squirrely on the brakes there. We'll have a replay of that in just a moment. Looks like uh, hearing, hearing that he got it a bit wrong going into that fast chicane a few corners before the ones we see right here. No damage on the car, so it doesn't appear he's hit anything, but he did lose a little bit of time. He was quickly catching a Yubel Anuni, uh, and now has that work to do again. We were talking about uh, that Road Appraiser racing team machine that is about to come into pit lane. Uh, started 21st and up to 11th, so good effort from them. Frera in now as we watch Vitatis Lagutskis come through at the final sequence corners. There is Frera. Rotopreza has fallen down to 13th with a couple of cars coming through. Yeah, so there's going to be a driver change for Rotopreza. I, I mentioned that they've been, you know, jumping up and down the order, um, but it's been a positive trend towards the towards the uh, midpoint of the race for that team, both teams in fact, so good stuff, Just making up the order up and down. Tadis Lagutskas is extending this lead and uh, I see on the timing tower now we need to look at Sebastian Santandre again, maybe it's just that the timing just now updated. Uh, that was 8 seconds, now 22, so he's been off for an extended, a, uh, a long excursion off-road somewhere. Uh, he was two seconds behind Ayub in second position and now has fallen back. So they were in the lead of the race, took a drive through penalty, and fell behind Ayub. Uh, and we thought it was a brief off uh, that had left him just behind Ayub, but actually off much longer. So waiting for a replay on that. We'll bring that to you in just a moment as we watch Yoni Katilla, who has brought that machine up from a 14th position at one point. His teammate, um, I'm drawing a blank here, Nico Patola, sorry. Nico Patola, uh, off at the very start of the race, took some damage, managed to work his way back up into the top 10, has given that over to Yoni Katilla, who is now up to fifth position. Top five for them would be very good, considering how the early part of their race went, but we're not even halfway through yet, and Yoni Katilla is charging. Yeah, here's a number of the, uh, the kind of reserve drivers, I guess you want to call it. The, the, the drivers who were waiting in the wings at the start of the race have, have uh, emerged. And we have a replay of that Santander incident. So, uh, Travis, talk us through this. Watching Santander off on the side of the road. Doesn't use all of the road on the entry and just about the right amount of curb on the way in. And, oh, yeah, the, uh, the tank slapper, as we call it here in, uh, in the United States. Oh, and backs it into the barrier. Oh. Yeah, so he tried, to, he tried to save the car snapping away from him, ended up snapping the other way. And then if he had uh, if he had held the brakes when it was fully sideways, I think he might have been okay. But that happens so quickly that it's it's hard to think that you should just stomp on the brakes and let the car slide sideways, gets away from him, and then backs into the barrier. Fortunately, it looked like he hit it square on. Can't even see damage on the back of that car. No, so I think he did. True. He did hit it squarely. Um, yeah. Lost some time, but very lucky not to take more damage there. If he had uh, if he had hit one corner or the other, it would look 
a fair bit worse than it actually is. Um, but yeah, the uh, that sort of that sort of incident where you spin one way, then the other way. I mean, it's, it can go one or two ways. You either end up in the gravel and it takes a, lot, a long time, or you swing back across the road and hit a, an armco barrier, and uh, that's that's the way the dice fell on that occasion. Yeah, lucky break to hit it squarely at the back. Definitely uh, lost some time, but off they go. No harm done. Yeah, it could definitely have been worse. Let's put it that way. What that has done is put Pedro Picacco in striking distance. Still eight seconds back down the road, um, but they are slowly working their way up the order. That car started 24th, we'll remind everyone. We've talked about that a few times, but that Road Appraisa racing machine did not set a qualifying time. They were permitted to start by the stewards on the merits of their pace in practice. Uh, 24th up to 4th position is an impressive effort from them. Yeah, Watching there another Sorry, oh, VSC. I was about to say there's another driver connecting that looks like he's about to time out. Uh, and I'm not sure who it is. It'll be Leandro. Uh, we see VSC deployed, but not entirely sure why. We'll have to look around and see what happened. I didn't see anything obviously change on the timing. But we did see Alan Terzich, uh, hearing that Alan Terzich may oh. have gone off. Ooh, sorry. That was car number 11. Uh, I confused P11 from car 11. There is Chodini reversing and doing the whip turn. Uh, the officials might take a dim view of that, but I'm impressed. Gets the car turned around out of the final chicane. Looks like he's gone off pretty badly because there's damage at the front end of that car and a puncture. So he's in the pit lane, and we have green flag now. Yeah, back up and running. So that was that was a quicker that was a quicker affair. I like that. So there we go, uh, back up and running. I did notice that uh, Stravko had to give a place back to Terzic, which he's trying to take back immediately. <laughs> so gave it back, but then he wants that place back immediately while they are green flag running. And we'll see if he can manage to get it done. Try and affect the pass on the Knight of Velox car. Um. It's interesting yeah, seeing so these is, two together. Yeah, sorry, Pete. That is uh, Leandro Vargas, who will be taking over the 11 car that Chudini mm. just brought into pit lane. Oh! Almost oh. crashing into the safety car. What on earth? A yeah, wild day for for the furtive racing team. Two penalty. They didn't have the pit limiter on. Yeah, that's an easy mistake to make. Um, when there's a lot happening, your teammate brings the car in to hand it over after a uh, an incident like that. And then, uh, so we typically, when when we're changing drivers in an endurance race, we typically leave the pit lane speed limiter on, or at least remind the driver to ensure that it's on. And clearly, a, a mistake and possibly a miscommunication there. And he's looped it in pit lane. Uh, Alan Terzic now has uh, Stravka to Punyak all over him. You could throw a blanket over the two of them. Alan Terzic a bit wide on the exit. Stravka to Punyak a bit more conservative. Won't have enough slipstream to get alongside coming down the hill here. Not that you would choose to make a move here. Uh, Alan Terzic, or his teammate Dennis Lind, I think is... Uh, no, that was Alan Terzic in the car earlier. Um, knows well what can go wrong if you try to make this move. Oh, Stravko to Poniak. He is so brave through there. He's really using the rear of the car to, to help it turn in and get it through the that right-hand corner. The car wants to wash wide. It's deceptively slow. You feel like you can carry more speed through there than you can, especially if you're carrying less downforce. Uh, but Stravko, and a heroic effort to bring this car back from the very rear of the field. Now challenging Alan Terzic to sneak back into the top 10, Pete. Yeah, this is brilliant. Um, you know, we've been watching this this number 60 car for, well, I'll race. And, uh, you know, just that's that's what it takes. A couple of couple of incidents. And then the other, you know, the other car just has to be consistent and they can they can catch you. So, you know, mighty effort from Sidravko and uh, to, to, to get himself back up the order. Nice and consistent after after the drama at the beginning. Uh, Pete, while we were watching that, um, mm -hmm. Ayuba Lanuni has been in pit lane and given the car over to his teammate, uh, Smokovicius, uh, which back. has promoted 
Yeah, yeah it's promoted Pedro Picanco up to third. That car from 23rd now onto the podium. And Yannick Attila not far behind him up to fourth position. Yeah, now uh, what's what's this gonna what how how is this gonna play out? Smack Vicious, like you said, six point eight seconds to Yoni. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that gap to see what his relative pace is, but uh, it's fair to say he was absolutely flying in his first stint and Yes he was. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye. Well, yeah, not, just, just struggled. from that last sector, but yeah, we'll see. Ayub struggled a bit with the car, clearly. Um, he inherited the car in the lead and fell back a little bit. He did the job. Um, a few small mistakes and a, 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 a few, a little bit of trouble. Lost some time. Um, but he's uh, he's kept the car mostly between the lines, near the front of the order, which is you know, often the best you can hope for, especially with a car as challenging as this one. Uh, but Mantis Malkovicius was very quick early in the race. I think he will be... He will be sufficiently motivated to chase down the leaders and retake the top spot that he held for the early running. Yeah, we want to talk about a new driver, uh, Willa, uh, for Road Appraiser. Not a name we are familiar with from previous runnings of endurance racing, so welcome along. Uh, good to see new names as well appearing in the, in the race, Travis. Yep. Yeah, we made a brief mention of his name when he took over the car, and then other things happened. And now uh, I will... I will also, I will join you, Pete, in welcoming him to the field. A new name we're thrilled to have here. As we watch Rick Cardall move to the left, he'll have to make this pass on the outside going into the first corner, though it looks like he has it done. Yeah, a move for Less. position. Yeah, I thought Fernandez might, uh, might take a peek to the inside, but Chu thinks better of it. Decides to follow Rick Cardall through. Rick Cardall, who was running fifth earlier, his teammate was running fifth. I guess Rick Cardall has also run in fifth. Um, cycled back on pit stops and now working his way forward once again. Here the car number two, that is Dominguez, came into pit lane, so that accounted for a couple changes of position there. They will be changing drivers. That is... There you go, Henrique. Yep. That is Murilo Henrique, another Brazilian driver in the Imbica Racing Machine. I don't believe we have seen Murilo Henrique before either, Pete. So another new driver. Welcome to you, Murilo Henrique. Good luck out there. I think we have, but yeah, it's it's been a while since we did an endurance race. Maybe we've just forgotten between us a bunch of drivers. Um, we need more of these, don't we? We need more uh, endurance racing on our calendar again. Uh, it's uh, we, we, do we do miss it when it isn't on our screens, but we've just got to be grateful and enjoy the moment when it is on our screens, and that's what we are doing right now. And I've got to say, is this car going slowly? Has this car got a problem? The very fast Monk Sport 77? Is there a... what? Yeah, he is a bit puncture? off the pace. Is there an issue with this car? What is going on with that? There is a left front puncture. You could see it was slightly dipped. I, I was tentative to say it, but uh, Yoni Catilla has a puncture, and this is going to allow a bunch of cars to get past, including Hernan Quinteros, who goes to the inside there. So that's at least P6 that Yoni's going to drop to. Unexpected from that team. Not what yeah, you would expect. Seen... No, really not. And I wonder oh, if goodness he's just me. been driving... Oh. He's... I think he's been driving the car a bit hard. Um, one of the things that we knew going into the race was that the car would be very hard on the front tires, um, especially the the right front. Uh, looks though it looks like he's punctured the left front, so he's he's just been driving the car. Yeah, he's just been yeah. driving the car really hard. Um, Ostrovka told us that the uh, the right front was prone to excessive wear too because it drags on some of these fast corners. But Yoni obviously just using the front end of the car. Uh, a little bit harder than everyone else and going through the rubber. So that effort to pull the car from further down the order and up into fourth position um, now uh, now has gone, well, I was about to say it's gone for naught. It's, uh, it's not a worthless effort, but now has a little bit more work to do after an unscheduled pit stop to repair or to replace that punctured left front tire. Yeah, um, the reason why the race control are not giving BSCs for every single puncture incident is because of the nature of the drivability of the car, depending on which axle you get a puncture on. So uh, if you get, and, and where it is on the track, as is, uh, is, is very important as well. Obviously, if you're going to get a puncture in a part of the track where there are a lot of gravel traps, that, that could potentially lead to a full safety car. So they don't want to give out too many safety cars, of course. 
In fact, we haven't had any yet. We've only had the virtual. Um, so if you get a puncture on the rear, more likely to cause a VSC because of how hard the car is to drive um, with that. Yep. So that's demoted Yoni to uh, to eighth position. I think he I think he would have been uh, he would have been happy if he'd gotten a VSC there, but he is talented enough and was safely safely around the circuit that it didn't warrant it, as we just mentioned. Um, Vitalis Laguskas still in the lead of the race. Pedro Picanco now going by. I believe that's his teammate that he's gone past there. His teammate uh, off the pace, letting Pedro through. Brilliant effort from Rota Prezo once again. Started 24th, up mm. to third position. Uh, they'll be halfway through the race. I think they will be quite pleased with that. Chasing down another back marker as we look back to Mentis Malkovicius. In the hunt for the lead of the race, he held the lead early on. Ayub, his teammate, struggled a little bit with this car. Gave it back to him in fifth. Now promoted to fourth position on Yoni Katila falling backward with that puncture. And I'm looking down the order to Stravka Toponyak, who is now behind Alan Terzic again. He had gotten past Alan Terzic, and I assume he must have made a mistake to fall behind again uh, because he had uh, he had taken off up the road. And had uh, and had gained some on the leaders. Now not far ahead of the leader on the uh, on the track, so something's gone wrong there. He has a bit of work to do once again. Uh, Ostravko has run, you know, apart from disconnecting early, ran a very hard pace without any mistakes, uh, but clearly got something a little bit wrong in the last lap or so. Yeah, um, look at Michael's car there. Wow, it's, it's still got the damage that he had from his first stint on it as we follow Yoni Katilla in the number 77. Has repaired that puncture and rejoins in seventh. So there's, a, there's an awful lot of sevens on that graphic. Yeah, someone, I think someone must have stopped ahead of him. Uh, yes, the number two car. No, the number two car is further down. The, oh, no, the number two car was ahead of Yoni Katilla on the track. Uh, they came in, made a driver change. That was uh, Ricardo, Ricardo, Roberto, Dominguez. Um, took over that machine, promoted Yone up to 7th after they had fallen down to 8th. Watching uh, one of the Gum Garage machines go back behind a, I think that's a furtive racing car just ahead of no, them. Imbica. That was the Imbica car that you were talking about before. Ah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, who is in that at the moment? Um, Henrique. Nope. Yes, Henrique. Yeah, Henrique just took it over. Yep. There we go. That was uh, Dominguez disconnecting. I got that backwards. Sorry. Ah, yeah. Pete. Lugutskas in. It is, it, is, it is your turn as we watch yeah. Vitalis Lugutskas park that car for service. We're three hours in. Let's run down the order. Yeah, we should. Uh, hopefully we're not right at the beginning of a pit stop cycle. I think, I think we might be, so this could shuffle the order dramatically. Um, so let's uh, let's hold off a full rundown, I think, until, Good until call, they've, fair uh, enough. they've cycled through. We had this problem last time. Um, just a bad time to do it, I guess. Uh, Lugutskas, interestingly, resumes in P2, so that's uh, promising. He's uh, not dropping down too many positions now after pit stops. The the gap is opening up, and it is Pedro Picanco who is in P3 at the moment. Yeah, so that means Santandreu, Sebastian Santandreu, in that furtive racing car, um, was in the lead after a VSC pit stop. Um, so a longer VSC came out, oh, what was it, five or six laps ago? Um, and then had the drive-through penalty, uh, so speeding in the pit lane on... The, or no, they had a, a VSC uh, procedure infraction that caused them a drive-through penalty, lost a few positions, and now that the other drivers ahead of them are cycling through, they have retaken the lead of the race. Patatus Lagutskas back to second position, as Pete said just a moment ago, and Pedro Picanco still lurking there in third from 24th. And we wait to see who else will stop in the coming laps before we run down the order. You did a, you did a mini run down there. Just sneaking in a few names uh, while we do it. And Zdravko has managed yeah. to get back oh. through. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Um, we've lost another team, and I'm trying to work out who it is. Uh, from We now only have 21 runners of our 24 starters. Um, just trying to work, work out when that happened. Uh, any clues as to who it is as well? Yeah, unfortunately, I've not memorized all the, uh, the the numbers in the race, so it is not easy for me to tell. No, it's not. Hard, it's not. It's not. Hard, it's not uh, easy to to work it out, is it? From glancing. Uh, I mean, the uh, uh, 
<laughs> this is this is appropriate. I believe it's the Lost Connection team. Uh, that was one of the that was one of the, the first teams to leave, but there's another one since, I believe. Yeah. Uh, in, oh, we lost. The, oh, the Imbica car that we were just watching has fallen off the order. Do we see them there? The number no, two. They're here. They're no, here. they're number up there. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the tracker has them incorrectly. That's my mistake. I apologize. No problem. Yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to keep poking around here and see if we can figure out who it is. Yeah. Chris is uh, yeah. Chris is looking at uh, looking at it for us. We'll we'll, we'll get that information. Um, but there we go. Unfortunately, we have lost another team at some point. Uh, so it does seem to have calmed down a bit. We have Santandru for Furtive Racing who took over the car from uh, Ipsale, currently leading. Uh, Vitatus Lugutskas only a handful of seconds behind, nine seconds after his stop, uh, which means that uh, he has to put the hammer down to try and get that move done again on track. Um, Pedro Bicanco, 72. 72 Pedro Bicanco for Road Appraiser in P3. It's Mark Vicious, born to race, took over from Ayu Valhanui. Uh, back and is doing a great job currently in P number four, putting in some solid laps, consistent laps. Behind him is the number 10 furtive racing machine of uh, that's currently being driven by Hernan Quinteros. Sidus, far of the pace, the number 15, currently in sixth position, being driven by Rick Cardle. And it's Yoni Cotilla for very fast Monkey Sport. His teammate Nika Pantola had some. Uh, some exciting times during his first stint. They've managed to get that car back up to seventh place. And it's Fernandez for Furtive Junior in P number eight. This car qualified P5, the top qualifier of the Furtive outfits. Five of them here today, uh, currently in P8. Then we have Hen Henrique, who we've been watching closely for Imbica Racing in P number nine, the number two machine. Jarko Tepolniak is back in the top ten, at least uh, temporarily until the pit stop cycles as he goes off actually at the hairpin that was a pretty deep off as well and that allows Alan Terzic to uh, get back through in fact Javko has managed to give himself a puncture on the front left now uh, you can see that front left is not rotating at all under braking uh, so that is going to be straight in the pit lane and that's where we'll pause our run run down uh, Travis puncture for Javko yeah that's unfortunate he's been well, I mean, he's been working that car really hard, and he uh, he made the first stint work pretty well. Now, uh, I think with we know he went off a minute or so, a few minutes ago, um, and obviously that's compromised the car a little bit. I don't see Gabor. Gabor has connected, so okay. Yeah, so Gabor's looks joined. Like it's time. So I think, yeah, I think he'll be taking over that car. Yeah, they've they've gone a lap down again. Santandru, our race leader, has gone through. So. Uh, Potentially, this was an untimed, you know, an un, um, an out of cycle pit stop, and it is Gabor Gur who takes over for the first time, and it's going to be another three hours in the car for him. Um, there we go. Yeah, so, apart from apart from that picture that they uh, they obviously hadn't planned, um. They are on the schedule they had planned before the race. Stravko was going to drive for three hours and then Gabor three hours. So Gabor, uh, sorry, Stravko has gone just past the three hour mark, handed it over to Gabor, who now has a lot of work to do to get as good a result as I possibly can. Uh, now that Stravko is out of the car, we expect to see him or hear him in the commentary booth with us a little bit later. Um, he has some of their obligations to attend to now that he's jumped out of the seat, but we will welcome him. I think those other obligations. I think those other obligations consist of a shower and some food, uh, and family, and all of those other things. Probably that happen outside of racing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do expect him in the booth, which would be great to have that insight of how. Well, I hope he's in a good mood. I hope he will be. We're racing. He's still in the race. Yeah. A you know, a disconnect and a puncture, there's just... Yeah, those are kind of unfortunate. There's not much you can do about that. He drove really well, so I think he should be pretty pleased. Um, but we'll find out. We'll get it from the source. Once he comes in the server of Itautus Lagutskas, the uh, classic four-wheel drift over the crest and through the bend there. The front of that car is still looking a bit wonky. Pedro Picanco, on the other hand, has a pristine machine. Not a single scratch on that one. Hopefully they can keep it that way. Um, 
If they finished the way it is, I think they would be thrilled, having gone from 24th up to 3rd, but we're only halfway through the race, and they uh, they could still find a few more positions. If you look at the uh, MRC Brazil car that looks a lot like one of those... Um, one of the, I've totally blanked, one of the Road to Praise cars, a very similar They livery, do look similar, I have uh, made very that different mistake. teams. Yeah, very easy to get those two mixed up. Um, it almost as though it's inspired by it, in fact, because uh, the, it does look pretty much the same from a distance, same colours. Um, but yeah, another no new driver. No this car. No, no, of course, the green the green machine, the race green machine. Uh, Vitor is in the car now. Uh, he's... Uh, all the, the other two, I believe, have driven. Sanchez, has Sanchez been on the car? I don't think so. I don't believe he has, but I'm not sure about that. Pedro Picanco is in pit lane. He's just given up third position. Small Cavicius up to third now. Uh, the Born to Race machine was in the lead early on and now working their way back up after falling down to fifth position. I believe this will be a scheduled pit stop. It sure is for Pedro Picanco, now down to fifth. They should be rolling again shortly. And I think Pedro Picanco is, he is still in the seat. Coming out of pit lane now. So good effort, very good effort from this team, Pedro Picanco. They've driven from 24th up to 3rd, and now down to 5th position after pit stops, though Rick Cardall may snatch this 6th position from them as we watch Vitalis Lagutskas going around in a second. About 12 seconds behind P1. Here we go, Pedro Picanco does indeed lose that 5th position to Rick Cardall. Pedro now on a full load of fuel, while Rick Cardall had a head of steam coming at racing speed out of the final corners. I think we probably expect to see Pedro Picanco retake this position once he's burned off a little bit of fuel and gotten back up to pace. Um, the team that we couldn't account for, uh, we did account for it. We mentioned it on the stream. It was the Black Flag. It was an unusual way to lose a team from the race. The Black Flag for first uh, Junior's yeah. number 15 car. Sorry, number uh, 30 car. Yes, indeed. And now... Uh... And yeah, now it looks pretty obvious as I'm tapping through the order here that there's no number 30 car, so that makes perfect sense. Rony Krompush has just joined the server, so pit stop cycle. We've got a few more cars that are off cycle that we've seen stop in the last few laps, but now this race green machine running in 14th, Rony Krompush will be taking over this car, uh, presumably at the end of this lap. Yeah, and also possibly a long stint for Rony because well, Jeff and Jacob's been in the car for a while. The Chidi's been in the car for a while. So, what, two and a half hours, two hour 40 for, for Roni? It's a long stint. It's uh, long, but not uh, not impossible. That's four, yeah, about four runs in the seat. You go about 40 minutes in the car. So he should be able to carry it to the end of the race, though he might have a short final stint because Jeff and Jakob is going to give this car to Roni Krompush with two hours and 47, two hours and 47 and a half minutes remaining. Indeed. Um, the car that unfortunately caused two VSCs, the When Update Aston Simsports team of uh, Eric Blix and Martin Kapal, currently being driven by Eric Blix, the number 69, um, P16, so it's definitely yeah. not over and martin capal is in the server so there's going to be a change here too yeah hopefully hopefully the next stint goes better for martin because mm. he's uh he's been in the car twice and uh and caused a couple vscs so we we wish him better luck in his upcoming stint looking at alan terzic now the number 60 car in ninth position this car has been up and down the order they had uh they've had a very exciting day the least surprising them, thing to see <laughs> is battling <laughs> gum garage cars a position they can't get away from each other these two no they really can't right I mean, it just goes to show how evenly matched this team is literally every time we look at them they are together uh they are racing like they're up they're up to full pace um they're not just messing around here that is just how the how it is falling at the moment they just cannot seem to shake each other uh jeff and jacob in the pits try uh, Travis. yep race green car stopped they're taking tires and fuel and they will take a new driver in just a moment that'll be Rony Krompush taking over the machine in just a moment. As soon as that is topped off, Rony will take control and set off. 
Indeed he will. And uh, they won't go a lap down, but it is getting close to that point. The number 90 furtive racing car is on, apps, is, is on fire at the moment. There is no other word for it. 12.9 seconds. The gap to Lugut's cast now. As uh, St. Andrew no, comes they're... onto the home straight, and will they yeah, be at risk they're of looking... going a lap down? They're looking really strong. Uh, the uh, the Latvian pilot now coming into the first corner, yeah, so he'll hold this lap for, uh, well, a little bit longer anyway. Uh, running now behind Michael Malik. That is a race for position. So he's fallen a few positions down to 16th. I think they came in 13th to 14th. Uh, but it won't be long before they have Sant Andreu on the scene, and they'll have to manage their race while also managing blue flags. Bart Kapal has now taken over from Eric Blix. He's coming out of pit lane. As Roni goes a bit deep there. Yeah, it's but not off the track, crucially. Tires. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a few drivers straight out of the pits have gone off. Um, Roni just feeling the limits of the car. It's so difficult, honestly, to jump into a car completely fresh. Um, but the car won't be fresh if the conditions are new to you. It doesn't matter how many laps of your competitors, uh, sorry, your teammates and competitors you watch. It's it's just overwhelming when you get in the car for the first time it in is. the race. I want to I want to watch uh, Sebastian Santandreu uh, when he comes around the hairpins on the next lap um, because he takes an interesting line into the hairpin. So we'll just keep an eye on him here. Uh, we can we can talk about his his line into the hairpins uh, when we when we see him the next time around the track. I assume uh, maybe he's maybe it's just how he's comfortable driving around. Oh, he does it here too. So he takes a really early entry into these slower corners, and I wonder if he's running deep to. Um, I wonder if he's running deep to just extend the track a little bit to help it slow down as we watch uh, Lara. Looks like he's spun from one side to the other and perhaps touched the barrier back on the track now. That car doesn't look... That's a little bent up at the front, so he's dropped a wheel at the exit of the chicane and gone off. Now rejoined. No further trouble. Um, yeah, Santa Andreu runs deep on the brakes and takes an early entry into the corner, so I wonder if that's... A, I wonder if that's a style to compensate for the changing balance of the car, or if he's just comfortable doing that. We'll see if he does the same thing here. If we could go on board with him, that would be helpful. Now he stays wide into this corner, takes a slightly late apex down to the curbing on the inside there. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on him as we come around to the really slow corners around the back of the circuit. Let's see if he does it again. Oh, that's a great shot, looking over the chicane. I love that. That's the first time we've seen that today. You can see the car working over the curbs. It's not, but you were paying attention, so I just thought I'd throw it in there. Okay, it's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little present for you there. This lap is so long. I feel like we have to wait forever to get him to come around to the hairpins once more. Oh, uh, it's a long lap, yeah. The lap is over well over two and a half minutes. He looks so smooth and clean. Um, this car is not easy to drive, but he is making it look easy to drive. And this is uh, this is what we wanted to see right here. Hopefully we can go on board just as he's coming on the brakes. And yeah, he does it again. He's a very early entry, well inside of the tire marks. And I think he'll do the same thing up here on the brakes. No, a normal turn. Well, I guess you have to take a, nor a, a late turn in here so you can straighten out the chicane to carry the speed down the, uh, the straightaway. But... Yeah, unorthodox line into those corners. I don't know that anyone else is doing that, but I'll tab around and see. Uh, it's interesting to see the different driving styles from the different drivers and how they uh, how they cope with changing conditions. Obviously working well for him because he's in command of the race and extending the lead over Vitatis Lagutskas. The number 10 furtive racing machine has been in the pits and has refueled. Come out just behind Rick Cardle. Yeah, Rick Cardle not far up the road. Uh, Rick Cardle had given up that position to Pedro Picanco a lap or two ago. Um, Pedro Picanco has fallen back from Rick Cardle. I expected Pedro Picanco to stay a bit closer to him, but Rick Cardle has taken off. Pedro Picanco has fallen back. He's four, almost five seconds back there. So, Hedon Quinteros slides in between Rick Cardell and Pedro Picanco for the fifth position. Meanwhile, at the front, 
Santa Andreu still in command and extending that lead. We expected uh, Matus Malkovicius to make up some of that gap, but he has not done so. Well, um, he's within... Yeah, you're right, actually. There is no way to put it. Uh, he has been gradually dropping back. And uh, yeah, faster than we might have expected after the performance he put on on the opening stint. However, Lugutskas is um, is fresh. He, he, he wasn't in the car at the beginning of the race. So maybe Lugutskas has just got better pace overall. So we will have, sorry Pete, we will have a lead change here because yep. Sebastian Santandreu has just stopped. He's taken fuel only, I believe. That was quick enough that I don't think he's taken tires and they haven't switched drivers. Fatalis Lugutskas in the lead of the race once more and I believe, is that, nope, that's a Team America car going by. Ooh, Santandreu playing with fire. They're really close to that line. I believe he stayed inside it. Smolkovicius still behind him, but I don't think he will be that far behind him once we see timing cycle through. Yeah, Smolkovicius will be about five seconds, maybe a little bit more behind um, once, uh, once they come through the next timing line. Well, there we go. Even on full fuel uh, and used tires, he's still taking that early entry into the corner. Um, obviously working perfectly well for him. I see. I Now that you've mentioned it, I might be imagining it, of course, but I seem to recall us having a similar discussion about him during the Kyoto race. I, I am I drawing check. a blank, so I yeah. will just have to trust you. Ooh, Blue, he's not he's worth navigating the back past. markers there. Whew, oh. No quarter given to the Team America car. I think, not sure which of the Team America cars that is, but I think uh, I think that was a late decision to get out of the way because uh, Sebastian Santa Andreu had no intention of slowing down. No, he did not, and uh, that car was, well, I, I want to say it was in the middle of the road almost. Uh, wasn't sure which way to go around it. And... That's uh, an uncomfortable butt clenching moment for our leading furtive racing car. Yes, indeed. 11 seconds now, the gap from Santandru to Lugutskas. And Lugutskas looks comfortable, even though he's been given. <laughs> and Isaac will hate me for saying this, but he's been given a rough looking vehicle. He really has. Um, there's, there's no other. There's, we, we can't mince words about it. Um, no. It does look rough, and Isaac did it. So, <laughs> okay. The, uh, if, if the truth hurts, it is what it is. But the car is still working well. The Tadus Lugutskas obviously not having any trouble with it. No. Um, Dennis Lind has reconnected, and he'll be taking over from Alan Terzic in a minute or two. Isaac says it's worse. it looks worse than it is in the chat, and it, it seems to be the case because, well, this car is leading, and with a margin so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, fair, I'll, yeah, fair I'll play take it. them yeah. it doesn't have to look good uh, as long nope. as it goes fast and it does we said this about Saint Andreu when he was in the lead that he uh, made it look easy and was holding the gap and now the uh, the converse is true but Adis Lugutskas now that he's in the lead of the race that gap is holding fairly steady back to small now uh, now that we've done a lap about nine seconds behind Santa Andrea, so we're uh, we're strung out a bit at the front. With pit stops, gaps have stabilized. We can probably go through the order now, Pete. I went through it a moment ago, up to about halfway, but you're you're welcome to have a stab. Let's do it. I shall. So if we go, we'll go down to tenth. We've got Enrique in the number two machine, uh, and Gabor, who recently took over that car from his teammate uh, and uh, occasional rival. Uh, Stravka Toponiak, they uh, are working their way back up the order from the very back after a an early disconnection in 11th position. We've got Willer, one of our newcomers, in 12th position. Vargas in the number 11 car, one of the furtive racing machines in 13th. Vitor in the 51, running around in in 14th. That's one of the or the MRC Brazil car, car that looks a lot like the uh, Road Apresa machines. Uh, we have Ronnie Crompush in the race green machine in 15th with Michael Malik soloing this race today in 16th. Lara in the number 52, one of the Team America cars in 17th with Martin Kapal in the uh, it is, when are we going to get an update to Aston or something like that machine? Um, 
in uh, sorry the number 69 uh, uh in 18th uh martinez the number 55 the other team america car running in 19th in 20th we have the gum garage number 43 with tom fuel in charge right now and rounding out the order the last of the car is running the other gum garage machine the number 42 with georgetti at the wheel we've done it pete we got through the order with no excitement to interrupt us uh alan terzich has made a pit stop so he should be giving that over to dennis lind as vitatis lagutskis come through to put them a lap down tires and fuel fresh equipment for dennis lind he is over the line and back in the fight he is there he goes and hopefully it's a smoother opening than he had the um so earlier this afternoon um yeah rejoining in uh, a good position p10 with plenty of work to do in the two and a half hours that are remaining here during the six hours of aston that's been put together for us by the argentina turismo team the second of such endurance races that they've hosted in the speed this year um we're expecting rick cardle in the pit lane so potentially now don't see his teammate connected to the server um Maybe just a driver, maybe yeah. just a yeah, it's good like pit stop, so yep. no driver change. Um, Routine service for Rick Cardall, Pally Peltacagas, a teammate who did a longer run early on, and Pedro Picanco, uh, as we expected, retakes fifth position. Does indeed, and uh, there we go. Uh, Pedro Picanco will gain a position from that, so too will Yoni Catilla. Um, up to P6 again. It has been a bit of a yo-yo race for some of these teams. Um, it really has. But it is settling down. The drivers are getting used to the conditions. That's why we're watching Yona Cotilla come through. I want to draw attention to our graphics. So um, Pete and the team did a bit of fine-tuning on the graphics we have on screen, and we have a lot more helpful information now that we have in the past. You can see Yona Cotilla there uh, with six position next to him, the green number 77. Uh, so we can see all the helpful information about the car and the gap as we've always had. And then above that, we've got the team name and the other drivers and their qualifying positions. So when we uh, focus one of these cars on stream, now we can see all of the information we want to see, especially in an endurance race where these drivers share cars. And uh, one of the interesting things we can talk about is how much position or how many positions they have made up from the start of the race. We have all of that on screen now. Thank you to you, Pete, and everyone else who worked on that. That is very helpful. Yeah, it's nice to just be able to continue improving things um, for our benefit and, of course, our viewers. Um, but yeah, we are seeing Yoni Cotilla here going past one of the Team America cars, uh, who very kindly gets out of the way. Looked like there might have been a uh, a bit of crying about blue flags there, but he goes deep and wide on the corner, gives uh, Yoni a little bit of slipstream to gain some time going in that corner. Very kind and helpful of him. Pedro Picanco has closed up to three seconds on Hernan Quintero, so we'll keep an eye on that gap as we watch Matadas Lagutskis in the lead. It looks like he's catching, I think that's Michael Malik ahead of him. It is, you can tell because of the bent front left wheel arch that he's following. It is absolutely ridiculous, the damage it, on that car. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I, was, but, I was going to say you can tell because from the back and from the sides of that car, it has a, uh, it, it's got those red lines on the all black livery. It looks... It looks very Tron-like. Uh, I think it is a very cool paint job on that car. Um, but also, yeah, uh, when you get closer, you can see how bent up the bodywork is on the machine. So, Michael Malik, good work on your car today. Uh, Vitalis Lukuskas is through the back markers. He has a 12-second lead on Sebastian Santandreu in second position, who is falling back a little bit, uh, while Mentis Malkovicius is slowly closing the gap to Santandreu. So, may yet have some excitement at the front of the race before this stint is over. Gaps shaken out at the moment. No close fights on the circuit, um, though we might check in with the Gum Garage machines. They uh, have run close together for the entire race. We can have a peek at them and see if they're running side by side as they have been earlier on. They are not. Well, close with another car, but not a Gum Garage car. They're pretty yeah, far away. Very, very home. far away. <laughs> Pit stops, I guess, is the reason. Uh, but I'm sure they'll be back together in no time once that equals out. Um. Oh, the Guts gas is absolutely wringing the neck of this car now. And uh, for good reason, because Sant'Andrew and the Furtive Racing team, well, they're very well versed in the 
um, in the art of Prototype 2, LMP2 racing in LFS. I think also they competed are. in the Kyoto race. Um, and of course, as far as I'm aware, uh, the Gutzkast was in the other class in the previous race. Uh, yes, he was. He won the GT category. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Um, new for that team for this event. Um, the 51 we'll... car, that is the MRC Brazil machine. Uh, Pedro Vitor is in the pits. I don't believe he'll be handing that car no, over. No, he's already so out. So he's in for yeah. a routine service and out again. There he goes. Yeah. It's interesting how these races shake out. Um, we're... Uh, it's also fun in the commentary box because you get uh, bits of excitement and then a lull in the action so we can sit and have a chat and entertain ourselves. Uh, perhaps not somebody else, or per maybe some people enjoy this. Uh, let us know in chat if this is at all interesting to you. Uh, we, get a, we get a break to just have a conversation about race cars, Pete, and then uh, all of a sudden it will all come off and we can't get a word in edgewise with all of the things happening on track. I think we're waiting with bated breath for another one of those moments. Yeah. And, and uh, so, as I said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we have, we, 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 well, cars fall off all the time. And the only, sometimes the only way we find out is that they're back driving again with cars that are like this. The number 12 Vertiv <laughs> Junior car has been off and is off again. That's a heavy hit into the wall. That is a one way pass one-way trip to the pit lane that was a massive side impact yeah and i think so when we were tabbing through a moment mm -hmm. ago we saw one of the gum garage machines close to a furtive racing machine oh, and no. i don't know if it was this one but tom fuel is in pit lane ah it was on his own okay uh this is how it happened so it looks like it was in the usual spot because the, the damage was a bit unusual. It must have been one of those tank slapper moments where he came back across the track, was it? And into the wall. Ah, yeah, the same 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 accident pretty much in two consecutive laps. And yeah, uh, on he the got second really occasion, side in. Yeah. yeah, he got really unlucky there because it looped a bit earlier than it has for other drivers, and he went right into the the, the part of the barrier that's... Uh, that's you know, flat or you know, oriented orthogonally to where the the car will spin off. Fernandez will be bringing this car in, uh, oh, kind of a tricky of leader, position though. for the leaders. Yeah. yeah, there's not much Fernandez can do here. He no. has to get through the chicane, and there's only one line. And he needs to get into pit lane because he's handing the car over to his teammate Alejandro Trespalacios. Yeah, a bit unlucky for De Fatatus Lagutskas, but we can't blame the uh, can't blame the furtive racing driver there. Easy, yeah, easy to confuse these two green cars. Vitalis Lagutska, the, yeah. the rejected by Hero Loco, is a bit darker green. Uh, the bright green car behind is the race green machine. Ronan Crump pushing command of that car right now. There's uh, the Furtive Junior car in the pits. Alejandro Cespalacios will be taking over that car. Fernandez gets a warning for ignoring blue flags, and I'm not sure I agree with that mm. one because they caught him in a tough spot after he had just recovered the car and had to get into pit lane. So, yeah, that's... I don't think you can reasonably expect a driver to just completely get off the throttle on a fast part of the circuit to let the leaders through. So that's a bit hard. It's only a warning. Um, and yeah. I think they've been pretty well behaved for the rest of the race. So I don't think it'll cause I don't think it'll be too a much trouble. Yeah. But yeah. A bit I don't disagree Ooh, with the warning, but, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I was looking, I'm looking back down the order and the gum garage cars are, would you guess it together again? And, uh, Giorgetti nearly went over the, uh, the curb that, that pitched the uh, um, Isaac Price over earlier in the race. They really are lapping at exactly the same pace. They, they are. They're doing pit stops at completely different times to each other, and they just emerge on the same piece of tarmac. Um, they well, do. I mean, when you're battling for places on two laps down, at least you'd, you'd, you'd rather have someone to fight with, and it might as well be your teammates. So here we go, side-by-side -side fight for the last place in the race. It's good stuff. Can't, can't deny it. And there you go. It's one thing, one thing that's fun about sim racing that uh, you know at the professional level. Oh you my don't goodness! Often get, this is getting there pretty is, feisty. <laughs> these two are racing each other pretty hard. They I are. assume they're in communication and just having a good so. time. Oh, deep on the brakes on the outside. Blimey. 
Yeah. That was a great that was a great move to take the <laughs> position back. That was really impressive. Ooh. Except Giorgetti nearly got it wrong coming out. He's on the power a little bit early. You can see him putting down tire marks on the pavement. A little far back to be in the slipstream, but um, I was saying that you know, one thing that's fun about sim racing that you don't necessarily get at the top levels of motorsport is there's always someone to race with. Uh, and it's especially fun when it's your teammate. You can talk to each other and, uh, and give each other a hard time. Um, and when you're this far back, I think you probably don't get too fussed about bumping into each other. Uh, but they're out there having a good time, putting on a good show for us. So good for them. I think they would enjoy a better result, but they're still going and they're doing well. So hats off to them. The theme of Smokovicius doing blazing lap times is continuing. The gap to Sant'Andrew down to three seconds now. So hold on to your seats, folks. It's going to be a battle for P2 soon. Yeah, he's done a PB by two tenths, which is pretty good. He's dipped into the 27s. Um, Stravko told us before the race that uh, running in the 27s was pretty strong race pace. We've seen a few drivers tick into the 26s as we get a VSC. So stand by for VSC. Have not seen a Y yet. Probably a puncture or a car off in the gravel somewhere. We're looking to Looks see. Looks like I what. see. Oh, yeah! I'm looking at the back of Giorgetti's car. Oh, he had a just. Car. Yeah, he popped both rear tires. I was watching him because we we were looking at them just a moment ago, and he had. I I noticed he was suddenly pretty far away from his teammate, and he made a a pretty impressive save coming out of that fast right hand corner where we've seen everybody going off. Uh, managed to keep it pointed forward, uh, but he has done so with no rear grip. And now yeah. this is where it gets really. This is going to look. This is going to start to look silly. This is the reason the VSC is out. It is really difficult yep. to drive this car with one rear tire out, let alone both. Um, to the point where this may become uncomfortable. He's got to be careful not to keep it out of the. Well, he's got to be careful to keep it out of the gravel because if he goes in there, it's a full safety car, uh, no denying. Big gap behind him, but do race control lift the bsc yeah i would say no this is a long way to the pits yeah. for this car a good call by them to throw mm -hmm. the bsc definitely could justify an sc if, if this car goes round again but we'll have to see yeah how careful looks... Giorgetti is going to be yeah it's tricky but it looks like he's managing it pretty well he's so far he's clearly going slower than pit lane spit uh pit lane limiter speed um he'll want to be in a high gear so he can't spin the rear tires you can see how just how nervous the car is. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's lost it and gathered it up a couple times just going through these corners. Uh, well, that, that's the last of the big gravel traps um, until the final chicane. So this is yeah, around about they... where they this is around about the place where they lifted the VSC from Martin Capal earlier. So don't be surprised if the VSC ends here. Yeah, he's done well to hold this car. Uh, it is very hard to drive like this. You can see the the car just weaving away from him. Yeah, it looks like it's well. It looks like it's got um, T trays underneath the rear wheels, doesn't it? It really does. They're going to end it when he's in the pits. So this is going to be a couple more corners, maybe a minute or so um, left under VSC before we go green flag racing. Um, very, that's fair enough. I say uh, that looks very hard to drive. <laughs> Yeah, and nobody, I expected somebody, uh, some drivers may have taken this opportunity to duck into pit lane. Car 2 may choose this uh, this this time to go into the yeah, pits. Yeah, they're coming Don't around the hairpin so. now. Hmm. Yeah, they might have time because though the gum garage car, uh, Giorgetti, is coming into the same corner now. He has oh, to drive yeah. slowly and Definitely gingerly. has time now. Yeah, I was going to say, if he cranked on some lock, he could have brought it all the way around. It would have looked really impressive. <laughs> but now, yeah, now he's given... That's the Imbica racing car, isn't it? Number two? Yeah. Number two They've is Imbica. Some yeah. time. Yeah, he's coming in. Yeah, this will this will benefit them a lot. Yeah, the pitting. Lucky break for the number two, the only team that will be able to pit during this VSC. Yeah. It'll be so... normal service. Haven't seen one of their teammates connect. Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on Giorgetti because... Uh, oh, no, he's he actually made it through the chicane, so he's spun at the point where it was... Oh, goodness me. Now you need to go in the pit lane. There we go. 
And green yes, flag ending. is And here Rico is rolling. Now. He's going to be coming across the exit line oh. now. Nailed oh, it. Oh, nailed it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, huge break for them. Stays on the lead lap. That's Vitalis Lagutskis coming through the final sequence of corners now. And yeah, coming into the pits. Very lucky break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could not have gone any better for the Imbica Racing team. Yeah, I mean, I bet the Guskas is gutted that he wasn't half a lap further up the road because that would have been a that would have been a free pit stop for the number ninety nine, uh, essentially. Um, Madigan is back in the uh, number forty two. Oh, there are cars coming. Yeah, cars coming in at the end of this VSC. Everyone coming in now at the end of this VSC. Uh, that is, I believe, a small Caviscius just came in. Isaac Price has taken over the number 99. He is, we can see him trundling down a pit lane it's now. a lot of cars, yeah. It is. Yep, so Isaac Price back in, okay. Yeah, uh, small Caviscius in. The number 11 car, that is uh, Leandro Vargas, is making a pit stop. The number 52 is also in. That is uh, one of the Team America cars. Yeah, so busy in pit lane. And the Imbica team just avoided it. I think uh, I speculate that we will have Zdravko with us in the commentary box pretty soon. Um, he is, uh, he's made it to, he's made it to the stream chat, so he is, uh, he is not indisposed with, uh, with a shower or, or family obligations. Perhaps he's having a snack and, uh, and pounding on the keyboard. So we look I forward to talking him with him. Get his, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> look forward to, oh, here we go. Look forward to his insight. And we hear a user joined our channel. That might very well be him. Well, it is indeed. We have a number in the chat. We'll uh, we'll wait for his go ahead um, to yeah. uh, to to tell us to tell us about his race and give us his take on uh, on the on the race so far. Welcome, welcome, Stravko. Whenever you're ready, go right ahead. In the meantime, hello, everyone. watching the team. Oh, there he is. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I was listening and waiting. So, so rough, yeah. Tell rough us go it. early on. Yeah, disconnected, but then you fought back, and then a tough break with a puncture. But I think, with uh, you know, obviously there's nothing you can do about disconnecting. But once that happened, I think you have to be pretty pleased with your performance before you handed it over to Gabor. Well, yeah, disconnect is uh, not the most fun thing that happened to me in my life. I'd say, um, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. It happens. Um, yeah, so I just I just tried to reconnect, click like ten times, then had to wait twenty seconds to be able oh, to no. click connect again uh, because LFS uh, thinks I'm a robot or something. I don't know. And yeah, uh, then when I connected, we were like a lap and a half down. I think it went quite well from that point on. The car. I think that the car has really good speed. Uh, it was a joy to drive, even with hot tires and lots of fuel. I was, I was visibly gaining on people. I mean, uh, uh, not many times uh, you experience that that difference of speed. Sometimes it was just too easy to overtake people. Um, yeah, and the and the puncture puncture was. Yeah, interesting one. Uh, there was a VSC, and I didn't expect um, Terzic, uh, the car. What number is he? I don't know. I can't find number, number 60. 60. Number 60, yeah. I didn't expect him to break that hard because the, the rules say just put the limiter on and gradually lose speed. And um, yeah, I came. I like put the limiter on when the VSC came out and watched at my phone to see if my teammate sent me a message or no. And then I look at the screen and I'm almost inside his car. 
Oh, so no. I <laughs> so I start breaking like a madman, and I had like a uh, 200 meter long flat spot with full on brakes, and they just That's ruined the tire. Yeah, yeah that, the, that the, would do it. I mean, I mean, it was still better than knocking him and me out of the race. Uh, I just didn't expect the the because tire tires looked okay, but obviously that one point was too done, too much done, and I was expecting five more laps uh, before I pit for fuel, and then like I just start braking, can see a black tire. I was immediately telling voice to Gabor, join, 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 and yeah, he made it in time. So we only lost like five seconds. It's not, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you're. It looks like you're about where you had been. Gabor is just behind uh, the number ninety, uh, Saint Andreu, on the road right now, and he's also going really quick. He just did a twenty-seven zero nine. So, tell me, be honest. Um, you uh, you had to avoid Alan Terzic in the 60, uh, so you, you locked up and, and took the puncture for that. If it had been Gabor in front of you, uh, instead of him being your teammate, would you have just punted him? <laughs> uh, if, if it would give me a safety car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> if that had been turn one, maybe I'd pretend blind and just send a car oh, to the I hope he's watching chat while he's driving. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, no. Uh, so he's uh, he's coming into what has clearly been the trickiest corner on the circuit right now, and we watched you using the power coming through there uh, to, to get the car to turn through there. Um, but it uh, we've seen a lot of drivers go off. Is it the wind? Is it just the nature of the car? Why is that corner so hard today? Uh, what corner are we talking about? The chicane in second Yeah, center? so the, the fast yeah, left-hand chicane and then the right-hand bend that comes around to the back of the circuit. So, uh, this wind this, this wind means you have tailwind into the chicane. Uh, so you got to break earlier and then you got a side wind on the exit. So it kind of wants to push you out of the track. Um, yeah, it's... And, I mean, to be honest, I never really got that turn with this car. Um, it has always been a struggle with our setup, but... Uh, that's what endurance racing setup does to you. We, you can't have a perfect setup for you because you have teammates that also have to drive the car. Yep, we've talked about that, indeed. Well, welcome into the commentary box, Dravco. And, well, you've, you've been in the race for more, well, just over half of it. You came in at about three hours and six minutes to hand over to Gabor. How, do you know how he's finding the car? Is he, is he, uh, you know, do you think he's going to be able to make waves from what is currently 10th position? Definitely. I'm going to interrupt you briefly uh, okay. because uh, it relates to this conversation. Um, Gabor is now <clears throat> on top of the number 90 car, right behind him, and they are under investigation for another VSC procedure another infraction. One. So, yeah. Carry on, please. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, to be honest. I'd be I'd be surprised at anything else than Gabor having the best pace of all drivers at the moment. The car is I'd say perfect for this wind and the track. It really it really drives well. And yeah, as as you see he's like that's the leader and he's just gonna eat him alive. And uh, I did the same to Ayub I think and somebody else I think. Because yeah, it, the car just the car just drives so good. Yeah, I mean that was so simple. I mean you're, you're slightly different on the on the tire strategy, obviously because of uh, your unfortunate disconnect. But still, that looked very straightforward well, uh, in terms of not this. with them, not with them. I nope. think they have okay. like two laps more of fuel, something like that, and two laps younger tires. But that's it. So it really that really was the the pace that's, of Gabor. That, it's more or less like for like yeah. Um, yeah, that's oh, what that's impressive. Thing. Yeah. So the a good result still on the cards then, certainly for you. Uh, the bigger picture of the race to catch you up and any viewers who are rejoining or or, or have uh, been doing other things while watching. Um, there have been some definite up and downs in this race, Jeffco. It's definitely been a yo-yo race. It's been hard to keep track of at times, to be honest, um, just because of the the amount of 
incidents that have befallen some of the the, the top top teams. Yeah, I saw Isaac spinning. Oh, uh, he, he, he did just it twice. About that. He did that in twice. Spectacular yeah. fashion. He's on. Yeah. He's driving now, so he, he well, he oh, might he did find it out. Twice. Yeah, twice, it um, yeah, twice in the same corner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he went around the uh, the bend that we're watching Smelk of Issues come through right now. Uh, he went wide <laughs> there and hit the hit the high curb on the inside of the Aston North hairpin, and uh, the second time he nearly pitched the car over. Uh, so they have to low cars. I, I went through through that curb like three times. When the tires are at the heat peak, it's 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 very hard to keep the car pinned with Frodo and go go tight enough. The car just sends you wide, but we raise the car, so we just get damper damage and but not a lot. We can like go through that curve like twenty times at least. Um, while we've been chatting, uh, Gabor has extended the gap over Sant Andreu. Looks like he's got about two or three seconds now, and Michael Malik between them. And um, Sebastian Sant Andreu's teammate, Augustine Ipsale, has connected to the server. So they will be in shortly for Ipsale to take over the number 90 car, and that'll promote Isaac Price to the lead and put you guys, Stravko, you and Gabor, a little bit closer to the front. Yeah, we need a safety car. I mean, we, we, we that's know. all, we, we that's know. all <laughs> it is in it. We need a safety car. We get a safety car. We win. Uh, Chris just told us in our ears, no further action on the number 90 car. So whatever the uh, whatever the infraction was under VSC, Sant Andreu got away with it this time. Uh, they took a drive through penalty earlier, but um, this one, no infraction, no penalty. Uh, so he will be in the pits in a moment to give the car over to his teammate. Yeah. So if Ipsal is on the server, that really means he is he is uh, going to the pits soon. So yeah, he's on the basically same strategy as Gabor. So that's like yeah. for like pace. And he should go to the end, right? I would think so. What do you mean to the end? Uh, if Saleh will drive the car to the end of the race, he won't give it back to his teammate because there's only I don't three know stints remaining. How they have? I don't know how they have. Hmm. They were doing 36 laps. I think they were doing 36 laps for the stint, so they did two two fuel stints for one tire stint. So on the uh, on the topic of strategy, because we've uh, the all of the information you gave us before the event, which is very helpful as usual, uh, we talked about that, and then noticed during the race that some teams were stretching the tires to 42 laps, um, and I know we didn't think that was possible before the race because um, you know they it you struggle so much when the uh when you run the tires that long but some drivers were able to manage it i think dennis lind went 42 laps and i think smalk did too maybe it was uh isaac or uh or his teammate um Vitalis Lekutskas, but some drivers stretched that long um do you sacrifice much pace going that long well we decided to go for 30 because on yeah. like lap 28 already tires start to lose space and we just we just don't want to run whole tires and we just we just up the camber lower the pressures run the tire hard and just do 30 laps i i don't think 42 is good to drive uh less 10 laps would be a struggle and you have to like really take care of the tires really take care of the tires yeah just not to not to ruin them before all right while we've been chatting here um we have let's see that is that is not gabor we have on screen right now um it's smart vicious we've been following oh that is smart vicious thank you yeah yeah, Smolkovicius, who is running in second position, trying to catch Isaac Price, who is just a few seconds up the road. Uh, Gabor, oh, from the back, is catching Dennis Lind. Ooh, a scary moment from Isaac Price, off in the grass instead of looping it. That will uh, that'll help Matt Smolkovicius a little bit. It's our friend Martin Kapal there on the road behind Smolkovicius. The uh, the nice SBTV, the SBTV stickers on that livery. And here is Augustine Ipsale, who's just taken over from his teammate in the number 90 car. 
from the lead, falling back to fifth position. Uh, they have Nico Pantola, not too far behind them, who has taken the car over from Yana Catilla recently. Yeah, very recently. Uh, those guys have swapped over again. Nico started the race. It was a, a, a frantic first 200, 300 meters before contact put him in the wall. And um, they've been nursing some some damage ever since, I think. Um, I think they may have repaired some of it. Yep. Pit stops. Uh, Gabor <laughs> now taking his, so he'll take regular service. Tires and fuel. I um, take just you fuel. Yeah, do you want to give... Oh, sorry, just fuel. Do you want to yeah. give us the lowdown on your strategy, or do you want to keep this secret, even though you're in the well, box? Well, we're, we're <laughs> in the middle of the race, so it doesn't matter already, I'd say. Um, we do 100% fuel, that's 18 laps with new tires, and then we run another 12, 13 laps. Uh, like with, get out just ahead of Isaac the, Price, sorry. Yeah, without... Did he get... Ahead? I don't yeah. think so. Well, yeah, he's be just closed. out ahead of Isaac. So, yeah, yeah, he's still on the lead lap. Let's see how much faster is he now, because I think he, he should just drop Isaac for good. <laughs> I love your confidence, but you know, this is Isaac Price. This is, oh, yeah. he was behind me and Gabor is... Let's be fair, Gabor is probably half a second faster than me per lap on average. And I, right, I was managing, managing to keep... Isaac yeah, we'll for find out. Quite some time. <laughs> yeah, they're on different different strategies, different parts of their race. So if it really is as simple as that, then fair play. But you know, it's uh, one thing to assume; it's another thing to actually do it. Let's what see. is what what is interesting is uh, Smokovicius. I think is gaining on Isaac. Oh, he is. Yeah, absolutely. Two point four seconds now. The gap to Isaac Smokovicius versus yeah, Isaac Price has been a topic of the day, and uh, Smokovicius is absolutely nailing it. Yeah, he's Smolkovicius is a quick driver. Um, I don't know. I didn't expect him to be this quick, uh, but he he has been incredibly quick. It's been a very impressive drive for them. Ayub struggled a little bit, uh, but but managed his race really well, and he's given it back to Smolkovicius right there in the catbird seat. Yeah, this is what a lap looks like. Ah. Sorry, we got a, a, an interesting call. You know, just the uh, the interesting things that pop up every now and then. There was a message from uh, the stewards, one of the officials, for a driver to leave if he's not racing, and then a, uh, a disconnect of shame. So we're freeing up <laughs> slots in the server. Apparently, apparently it's quiet enough right now that uh, that the officials can police the the population of the server. Well, it has to be careful. Strafko, uh, Isaac, yeah, Isaac's still there. Yeah, yeah. he's got to be careful. He's got to have low fuel, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the, the more the more time he spends in this kind of range to Isaac, he's going to be giving Isaac some aero drop, um, some some more work for his aerodynamics to do. Uh, so if it if it becomes uncomfortable, the stewards might have a word to say about this. He needs yeah, to convincingly yeah. be driving away. Yeah, they've been I mean, particular think... about blue flags, and I think they're mm -hmm. similar on pace, but it's close enough that they might uh, they might be keeping yeah, an eye on it. If they give a warning, Gabor will just let Isaac go. I don't think that would be a problem. But on the on the other hand, I'm certain he wants to stay ahead and just yep. he just needs a lap or two to to be like uh, to get into the crew with new fuel load. Well, I mean, if it were me, yeah, if it were me officiating the race, I would I would say this is perfectly on because Gabor is. I mean, he's almost a lap behind, but he is racing the leaders. Like he, he has the same pace. He's he's trying to recover his race. It's not like he's he's off and trying to hold the lead lap so that you know he could benefit from a safety car or what have you. Like he is legitimately racing these guys. He's just that far down the road. So, yeah, I mean, the importance of not getting left now for Gabor is in the fact that in case of a safety car, he doesn't have to wait for unlapping. Yeah. He can he can join the back of the field when the safety car picks up the leader. He can do a full lap, make a pit stop, and still be ahead of everybody that is a lap down. So that's a big thing to be ahead of the leader. So really quickly, uh, the number 72 car was just in the pits and is rolling again. Um, that is the car that started 24th position and has worked all the way up. They've run as high as third. Uh, Pedro Picanco was in that machine. Teo Jose, who I believe started the race in that car, is now back in command out in sixth position. That is uh, the road, one of the Road Appraiser racing the team machines who didn't set a qualifying time, started at the very back. 24th, as high as third, and now after a pit stop, still running in sixth position. A very impressive drive from them. So what I see is Isaac 
pushing very hard in breaking zones to give an effect of how he's close to Gabor. No, while, this while is crazy. On the, on the on the straight, he's not really that close. It just looks like he's close on the braking. Maybe the car off the head, off. boys. Um, well off. They just streaked past that car. Yeah. It yeah. was uh, one of the gum garage machines, Tom Fuel. A weird place to go off. Uh, maybe yeah. we can get a replay because I'm curious what happened there. Hmm. Maybe a lapse in concentration. Um, can't see any other reason why you'd go there. Puncture yeah, no puncture. There. So. Hmm. I, I'm personally quite uncomfortable with the distance at which Gabor is close to Isaac. I don't know. I, I feel like certain points throughout the previous lap, Isaac would have been held up by the dirty air from Gabor. This is oh. not as convincing as you made it seem it was going to be, I'll be honest, Jaco, but I know, yeah. I know the toe is helping. Well, yeah. I mean, if he's faster, he should overtake. It's like... An easy solution for me. <laughs> you make it sound. You have so a simple. huge bias here. I, think I, I, don't, know. I don't think this is it's the this is, totally yeah. objective. Yeah, not objective uh, at I mean, all. I mean, I'd say, I'd say, me, Gabor has like he has to push, uh, and why would he? He has to lift for one second, uh, lose a second to let Isaac go. Then he has to let Smokovicius go if he lets Isaac go. Right, yes. but look at this gap now so to what, Smokovicius. Yeah. Smokovicius what is could... catching. Hand over fist. Exactly. Yeah, that, but I, that Isaac fact, was not. Gabor is down. Gabor is influencing the race now. Yeah, that fact could complicate this. Is that you? You could. I don't. I personally don't think this is the case. But you could argue that uh, uh, that Gabor is holding up Isaac enough that it has brought Smalkovicius up to him. Um, I think it is totally on by Gabor to. Uh, I think it's mm. totally on by Gabor to hold this position to to try to benefit from the safety guard because he's on similar pace. Yeah, uh, you see, you see what Isaac did this yeah. here in the braking zone. He just brakes very late and goes for the inside to kind of show that he he is there. But that's that's a never a pace that's going on. So I'm curious. We guessed early on. Um, you you mentioned before the race that there is a variety of of setups, low low to medium to high downforce, and we guessed earlier on that Isaac is on lower downforce because he seems to have struggled through these fast bends where you know you really depend on the downforce, and then you can see him just creep up. Obviously, he has the benefit of the slipstream right now, but you could just see him creeping up behind the leading car. Do you think they're on lower downforce? Oh, there's a warning for Gabor, just as yeah. we were talking about it, ignoring blue flags, so mm. he may be compelled to get out of the way. Yeah, the, the race administration have uh, come down on that side of the fence to say that they think Isaac is hold, is being held up. Uh, Smarkovicius was catching Isaac before Gabor got in got in the mix, but uh, you know they have to pick a side and, so, and they have to be... So what can yeah. Gabor do now? He can like drive faster? like, Or he has yeah, to he has let to... him go, yeah. Yeah, he's got to drive faster or just slip in behind and hold on to them. Yeah, this that is, you know, this is... We'll, we'll see. We'll give him half a, more, half a lap more, we'll see what the gap is. And uh, if it's not convincing, well, he's going to have to start thinking about yielding. We saw a car get black flagged, I mean, removed from the race for this yeah, earlier. I mean, I mean, what would happen... I, I wonder what would happen in a case where he lifts, Isaac gets by, Spokovic gets by, and then he just overtakes them again. Just to show. I agree. It's a <laughs> it's a tricky yeah. situation. Right now, Gabor is probably. Oh, he's gone. Oh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, yeah, I, I, Isaac oh. is really prioritizing entries to exits. Yeah, I don't think this he, is. He really I don't think goes it's a... tight into the turns. Yeah, uh, it it makes it look much worse than it is, and that's objectively tall. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad decision from the stewards, but it is a very tough decision. I, is, uh, I don't envy is. them having to make that call. <laughs> what I'm what I'm now worried about, from the point of view of us enjoying this race, is what happens if this goes on for another lap? Because it's oh. just the same. Oh, oh Smoke oh, Vicious oh. makes a mistake. <laughs> well, this has gotten interesting. So Smoke okay. Vicious made a mistake in the back. Gabor asked permission to chat. He got permission to chat, and Gabor says, I'm faster. <laughs> Which may or may not be true, <laughs> judging by judging by what we can clearly see on the screen. R2 has left the race. What's happened? That was Henrique. That was the Imbica racing car. It's timed out the server. Yeah, so they had see. benefited from that VSC, and now they did. they're timed out. That's a shame. My teammate is on the same page as I am. 
Yeah, but now you're in the now you're in the commentary box and you have to be impartial. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, looking at it, it, it it's it's a problem that he's a lap ahead, so we can see how much of the time he's ahead. But that's definitely more than a second. And yeah, so if if you're more than a second ahead, I am not sure you're you're yeah. really <laughs> slowing anyone down. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, Smart question. Really, is, is really not... quickly, Pete. Yeah, go on. Really quickly. Uh, so the number two timed out. Uh, they've been they've been given permission to rejoin with Dominguez taking over that car. So they are back on, but they are going to lose a lap for that. Please carry on, Peter. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the fact that Gapur has uh, declared his point of view to the stewards that I'm faster. And well, at this point in the race. It's difficult. This gap is so annoyingly close to Jovko. That's that's the thing that I'm. It's it's impossible. It's impossible to know what what the so, right thing to do is here. So yeah. Isaac was 0 0.05 of a second faster last lap. They were I both think... doing 26.3. Yeah, I was about. I was just about to say that. Um, what a complicating factor, or something that makes it a bit more interesting, is that I think if they were. If Gabor were doing 27.5s or 28, then there would be a really compelling argument to move him out of the way on account of blue flags. But his last lap was a 26.3, so unreal. Yeah, unreal pace, and he's pulling Isaac along. They're both going incredibly quickly, the fastest laps of the race. So, and now he has he stretched this gap a little bit. He it's has now, seconds. yeah, he has now. We'll have to see um, if he can hold it though, because if Isaac loses the tiny bit of slipstream that he has, Gabor should with his current pace, be able to pull away. So we'll see. It's now gone he over a critical level, I think. Yeah, so Gabor still has the blue flag banner, um, yep. but he is ever so slightly oh. extending this gap. Oh, that's not going to help. No, no Isaac made the same mistake. Awesome exit. Yeah. You, you really gain on the exit by going wide there. So that's, it looks worse than it is. As Isaac goes, Isaac goes He's wide. really pushing. He's pushing Into to keep the in slipstream. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, yeah. I mean, he wants the slipstream because that was keeping him in the fight. Yeah, I think it's over now. This is this is now a comfortable gap. I would say this this is no longer an issue if if Gilbert can hold this this distance or extend it. Why would you doubt? Well, <laughs> because we have to. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway. who invited this guy? Yeah, why uh, are you in here? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to talk about and what's interesting is that Isaac. Isaac and Lagukas are actually making R3, R4 setup work. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, we, we talked about that briefly earlier, very briefly, in fact, and maybe you can give us an insight on why it's weird. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird because this track, this track does not really heat up the tires that much. But uh, what you get with R4s on the rear is you kind of fix the inherent imbalance of the car car wants to understeer in the slow turns and by giving it R4 on the rear uh, you fix that understeer the car gets to be balanced yeah I mean it's a it's a bold strategy but it's working they're leading the race um, I wouldn't say comfortably right now so Marko Vicious is kind of his, his, his gain has been neutralized somewhat uh, while Isaac has been being pulled around a little bit by the distant toe of Gabor um, he did also make an error, so we'll have to see if he can uh, close up now that Isaac is not being pulled around as much. Hmm. Car in the pits after a brief touch. So the 51, that's Vitor, uh, and Michael Malik in the 47 had a brief coming together. I think that was uh, a bit of a... It seems like it was probably a, a bit of a miscommunication or a mix-up coming around the final series of corners. Michael Malik continued on, no problems, and detour into the pits, and he'll be rolling away in just a moment. Isaac Price has fallen back. We've been talking about this. The gap is now more than two seconds. Gabor still has that blue flag banner, but he is ever so slightly extending this gap. So we haven't seen, uh, haven't seen any further warnings or communication from the stewards. Seems like Gabor is going to be in the clear on uh, on what might have been a warning for or a further warning for ignoring blue flags it seems like he is comfortably ahead of Isaac Price now so he shouldn't have to worry about that um, after declaring that he was faster a few minutes ago uh, but I think Srevko you should be 
Uh, sorry, not not you uh, and Gabor, but Isaac, I think, is due for a pit stop. Gabor was in six or seven laps ago. Isaac, I have to believe, is going to be in soon. Chris saying in our ears that Isaac Price has done 12 laps since his last stop, so a few more before he'll be due in, unless they decide to go a little bit off strategy. Don't see why they would. Yeah. Judging I'm by Gabor. his ass. Seems spot on. Gabor is still about two seconds back to, well, back on the road. Obviously, he's at the tail end of the lead lap to Isaac Price, so it looks like maybe in the last corner. I think Isaac Price got a better run out of the last corner, is a little bit closer now than he had been on the previous lap. So, still tight between this two. Uh, Gabor still lapping in the 26s. Isaac also in the 26s did a 26.25 on the last lap. He was half a second quicker than Gabor. I think Gabor has become the carrot on the stick for Isaac here because the gap to Mark Vicious has doubled almost in the last couple of laps. Um, so yeah. whatever's happening here is working for Gabor and, and Isaac. We called it. We got that one right, Pete. Yeah, so they say. Uh, so they say that Isaac yeah. has lower downforce, but yeah, I had... I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. Looking at it at the straights, how much is the downforce and how much is the R4? Because R4 will still give better top speed. I mean, I know that Gabor is not running high downforce. That's for sure. <laughs> oh. And how is it that you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but you know what's funny? You know what's funny? We were actually watching what Lagukas and Isaac were doing for the laps. And Lagukas had sector one that was like half a second, half a second faster than we ever managed. And um, so we were like, OK, just chop the downforce, chop it all the way down. <laughs> So thanks, guys. <laughs> it is a brilliant insight. Brilliant insight. Um, well, there we go. I, I would like to know more about how you make R3, R4 work. Do you have to bring mm. the pressures down on the R4s to keep the temperature in them? Or do you I, do you do it I all only, with suspension tuning, or how do you make it work? I only did a slight, slight test of it, and well, the pressure really has to drop. And uh, but. You can you, yeah, you, sorry. you can use more. Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. I'm gonna interrupt you for just one second. Dennis Lind is in pit lane, and your teammate Gabor is coming around now. Dennis is rolling away with new tires and a full load of fuel, and Gabor has gone through, taken that position. Small Cavicius will get by as well. So Dennis Lind falls off the lead lap. Gabor promoted one position, and he'll have about a 10 or 15 second lead on the road from Dennis Lind, as you were saying. So. The pressures have to be low for the R force to work, and uh, but you can go, you you can run away with much higher camber. So it's it's a nice trade-off. You you kind of have tire with less grip, but then you get better camber for it and uh, low pressure for the slow stuff and uh, acceleration zones. Uh, so in theory, it should work nice. But we were so far into our R3, R3 setup that we didn't feel like we want to go to it. Like, uh, I always liked it how they say that uh, proficiency beats efficiency. Looks like we're starting a cycle of pit stops. Rick Cardall has just left pit lane. Um, Gabor will be catching him, uh, but he's still got a pretty big gap. Um, the number 72 car, I believe, was recently in pit lane. Uh, no, sorry, not the number 72. Um, I saw Ayub join. Um, Ayub joined, so he's going to be taking over the uh, the number 23 car from his teammate. Yes, Dennis Lind was already in and out. We, uh, we talked about that. Uh, the number 12 car was in earlier. There was contact between the 11 and 12, two of the furtive racing machines, uh, when yeah, one of them was now. coming into the pits, and now they're together again here. Yep. That's an awesome fight. 
If you want to see a really awesome fight, uh, just tab through and watch the uh, the Gum Garage team. Uh, they are on opposite <laughs> pit strategies. Oh, they are on opposite pit strategies, uh, so they are far apart for a while, and then running line astern in formation for a while, off and on during the race. And I think they're having a bit of fun because they uh, they uh, they've given us some good action. Oh, that fun. they have. Fun is fun is why everybody is here today. Yeah, so we should see Smolkovicius coming in. He is to give the car over to Ayub. So Smolkovicius done hard and good work to bring that car back up to second position. He will find a pit box, take full service, full fuel, new set of tires. That is Benoit Lamarie off the circuit and rejoining. I don't see a puncture. I think he just... It's an odd place to loop the car, but he's done it. Yeah. Uh, no Smolkovicius is stationary a little bit longer, and he'll be giving that over to Ayub. Who Ooh, will... this is the car going off? It's Limery. Yeah, it's Limery uh, again. His tires are too hot. He's actually now under the bridge uh, perfectly. Be careful how he rejoins here. Yeah, Ooh. no no VSC or safety car. Ooh, nope. That's well, a tricky spot. Ayub yeah. is out of pit lane now. He rejoins in third place. We'll have Nico Pantola uh, right behind him in just a moment. I thought I saw him in the background. He's a little further back than I thought he was. I confused cars there. So Ayub rejoins in third. I think Isaac will soon have pit because his his lap times now are crazy. He did a twenty-five seven. So that is obscene. That's that's surely a very <laughs> low fuel. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy lap times. And uh, now if Gabor lets him through, it won't really matter. He needs to just be careful that he doesn't hold Isaac up now with these times. Um, it won't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean to be fair, Gabor did 25.9, mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's not so far off. Uh, but yeah, I think he will just let him go if Isaac comes steaming. He's really pushing now. This is madness. I mean, uh, wow. I mean, uh, Ipsal now 34 seconds behind. We'll have to see what the gap is between. Ayub, when Isaac eventually comes in the pits. Um, but a couple of laps left uh, still, surely, for Isaac to come in. Um, he can probably keep this pace up for another few laps at least. Well, you can probably fill me up. Uh, how did Ayub's pace relate to Smoky issues? Not quite as good. Um, he was he was pretty consistent, had a couple small mistakes, but um, but he was otherwise pretty strong. Yep. I mean, he inherited the lead and then uh, fell, I think, as far back as fourth or fifth. And then uh, he wasn't that far behind because Smolkovicius was able to drive to the front again. So, pretty strong. This is where the stewards are going to start to sweat again. Uh, I hate to keep mentioning that, but it's it's true. As uh, Isaac now sets the fastest lap of the race, that's got to be a wake-up to Gabor that now... Yeah, yeah he's... He set the fastest lap of the race at a 25.5, while Gabor did a 25.9. So I think Unreal. it's still, Unreal. I think it's still a really hard call. I don't think uh, he's holding him up. I mean, what's but, interesting? Uh, I think that Gabor has like eight laps of fuel left, something like that, and Isaac should go in in the next lap or two. Oh, Could there's a yellow like, flag ahead of these two. Oh, 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 Gabor locks we up the rear the back into the commentary him. box after this is over. Uh, yeah, I think we should. <laughs> oh, I'll, take, just, I'll take a shower. I think Gabor, Gabor will just let him go now. I hope so. He's too, um, he's yeah. too close. It's, he has yeah. never been so close. It's too, too close. It's too close. Yeah, there we go. There we go. The That's side. the right thing. That's the right thing. Playing. He's not going to let him through by much. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Make him work for it. Yeah, he's going to work for it still. Beautiful. It's not going to hold Gabor up too much now. I mean, Isaac's just right at the end of his fuel. Gabor can just sit behind conserve a little bit and pull away if he needs to when Isaac disappears into the pits. Yeah. I'll be, Good call. I'll be Good thoroughly call. amused. I'll be thoroughly amused. Uh, since Gabor's carrying a little more downforce, he should be able to follow through here. And if he crosses the line having done a 25-6 after he left Isaac through, then I think that will uh, that should put this argument to bed. I mean, he uh, lost time. He, he lost time lifting here. Yeah, maybe three or four tenths. Yeah. In, um, in, a few laps, been... in a few laps, I think, in like yeah. three, four laps, he can go to 25 twos. I know he can while go there. We, <laughs> while we've been talking about these two, uh, Yannick Attila, who is the next car ahead of Gabor, 
Um, pretty far up the road, um, but the next car for position, Yona Catilla has taken over that car from Nico Pintola a few minutes ago. Uh, a, re a strong recovery drive from them. They fell back from the very beginning when the car that Gabor is, well, had been had been pacing a moment ago. Isaac uh, came together with Nico Pintola early on. Isaac now using the slipstream of that Team America car ahead of him. Sanchez coming out in the Master Race Car Brazil machine after a pit stop, rejoins in 19th. Gabor is going to get the double slipstream here. He did a 26-9 on the previous lap, not too shabby after having pulled over to let the leader through. And now, I think now Gabor is just going to stick to the back of Isaac Price and uh, make a point. Yeah, he, he surely won towards him. Uh, yeah, I feel for both of them, because if Gabor had come out of the pits two seconds ahead or two seconds behind, then this would be a completely different situation. The fact is that they've been within that crucial, crucial distance since they both emerged from the pits. It's just unlucky, in a sense. So I am... I am impressed. We, we talked about the, the role that the officials were playing in this when they issued that warning to Gabor earlier. And uh, and I think we all agreed it was a tough decision, but it mm -hmm. wasn't a bad decision. But mm -hmm. then they left it alone. Uh, they've, they've let it go and let Gabor run in front of him for eight or ten laps. Whoo, Gabor, uh, while we're watching Alejandro Tres Palacios, Gabor went two wheels in the graft, uh, grass after a, a nice four-wheel drift. Um, yeah, Gabor paced him, and they they let it ride. Didn't uh, didn't issue any more warnings, no penalties, uh, and and uh, now Gabor's fallen off a little bit after that mistake. But he's shown that he was able to maintain that pace. He actually, if not quicker, uh, was running nearly identical pace, and uh, both of them were able to pull away from. Um, well, now Ayuba's in the car, but they were able to pull away from the twenty three. So yeah, I think. That's hard officiating, but I think they got it exactly right. Well, you say hard. And we got to see great yeah. racing out of it. I, I, I'd say it was mature stewarding, to be honest. They, they, it was. They was gave the warning to say, right, that's that's our stance on it. We're going to leave it alone. And you, you, you know, if, if anything if anything happens, then we'll we'll come down hard, you know. And that's exactly yep. what was needed. You know, the, the stewards no, made their it. position yep. very clear. So it was good. Really good. Impressive job by them. Hats mm -hmm. off to them. Yep. As Isaac Pitts, Isaac Pitts. Right, go on, Gabor. Indeed, he does. Free. So <laughs> this, was, this was two two laps more than Smoke Vicious. I mean, those were five fast laps, so it will be a big difference. He will surely be like five, six seconds ahead of you. One hour forty minutes. What on earth is going to happen in this next? Well, a hundred minutes is what we've got left on the clock. Um, so anything I can mean, happen. Isaac is already going. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be. He's gonna be very sad. He's gonna keep first place. Yeah, by, by quite a bit. is now yeah. at the start finish line, yeah. That's an absurd yeah, advantage that he's ago. managed to pull over the uh, furtive racing number 90 in the time that he's been uh, staying out. That is crazy. Almost 15 I think seconds. So. Yeah, I, I believe if Salah had just taken over that car after a full service, though, so mm -hmm. I think unless, let's see, uh, if Salah is doing 26s as well, so he hasn't dipped in the 25s like Isaac has, but his pace is still really good, so I would expect that he'll cycle back to the front um, with another full service stop. This will be close. Um for these these furtive race of drivers are not slow by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Interesting uh, line again. Yeah, you see they, that the way they, 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 they go this. towards yeah. the apex so early. Yeah, you, we you, talked you about don't... yeah. That we talked strange. about this earlier with Sebastian Santandreu, where they took that very early entry. I wonder, I, I kind of wonder if they just, maybe they have the front end of the car set up so that when they take that early entry and crank on some lock, it helps the car slow down yeah, without I mean, compromising the front tire. You it's, can see it's, the rubber it's on the they're road. both doing it. You can see the rubber yeah, on thought... the road from everybody else, and then the, yeah. the odd lines that go off from the apex is really early are the furtive racing guys. Yeah, I thought maybe it was just a driving style thing from um, uh, Sebastian, but they're both doing it. So yeah. that that makes me think that it's something interesting with the car setup. I mean, it's working well. They're doing really quick lap times. Um, yeah. 
Well, now that nine we had seconds, a few hit actually. shots. Yeah, nine yeah, seconds to so, get to Isaac. So it, something's working for them. It is. It really is. Yeah, so Isaac's just stopped and retained the lead of the race. That gap to Sala in the number 90 car down to nine seconds. Since we're coming close to a quarter of the race remaining, we'll keep running down the order here. Ayub el who took over from his teammate a little while ago, runs in third, 21 seconds off the lead. Teo Jose in the 72, up from 24th. These close. are our drivers of the day so far. Close to P3 after. here. Yeah, close to P3. Um, it, oh, 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 no, that's he's the off. Martin Racing. Yeah, yeah he's Ayub gone. Off. So that's that's the 72. Oh, he's got damage as well. He's got damage from uh, 24th Travis. position. He does. Yeah, we were going to run down the order, but I think instead we'll keep an eye on Ayub here. Every see... time we run down the order, something happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to we'll keep an eye on him and maybe think of something clever to say about it, and then we'll make Shravko run down the order. <laughs> yeah, give it to him. Um, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on Ayub. Uh, uh, Kateros in fifth, Rick Cardall uh, there in sixth position, Yoni Katilla up from a, uh, a difficult early race. Nico Patola getting getting bumped off early is in seventh. Gabor in eighth position on the lead lap, trying to chase down Yoni Katilla. Dennis Lind in ninth, Alejandro Trespalacios in tenth position. We've got Chodini in one of the other furtive racing machines in the number 11, the 40 of Ferreira. That's uh, one of the Rota Praising t Rota Preza racing teams. That's difficult to say, Pete. You're much it better is. at it than I am. In uh, in 12th position, uh, we have Dominguez in 13th, Rona Crompush in the race green machine in 14th. Michael Malik doing a solo job now four and a half hours down, uh, all by himself in 15th. Eric Blixt, uh, Martin Capal's teammate there in 16th. We got the number 52. Uh, we have Cornelis, who we've not talked about today. No, that's true. Um, yeah, so that's uh, Joyner Condellis, a Venezuelan driver. I believe we have two Venezuelan drivers in the field today. Um, I don't believe we've seen him yet in the race. Um, so he's out there now running around in a 17th position. we got Martinez in the number 55 Team America machine in 18th position. Sanchez in the MRC Brazil machine in 19th. John Madigan, the Australian, in one of the Gum Garage cars in 20th and in 21st position. The Frenchman, Benoit Lemarie, the final final position going around 21st in the other gum garage car i got through the order and nothing happened uh you're wrong because uh. <laughs> dominguez went off uh. and uh, hit the wall as you can see from the the car so even even on your second attempt at a run through a car went off but we didn't talk about it this car went off more substantially yeah. by the looks of it that it's twitching around it's got it some really rear is. left damage crabbing a bit crabbing a bit exactly um and Gabor, yeah, Gabor uh, got the notice that Gabor was causing a yellow flag that will have been slowing down out of the final corner to jump into pit lane. We see him there stopped. He'll be taking fuel. And he should be off again shortly. We need to watch Isaac Price. Dennis Lind retakes eighth position. Isaac Price coming I think, through the final Yeah, chicane. Isaac will be far ahead. Isaac only a refueled. Long way ahead. Yeah, yeah, Isaac only refueled. Uh, Gabor took the full service. Well, this, uh, the, the, the next time these two come in is the real telling point on the pace of those two drivers, so we'll have to keep an eye. Car 2 has come in the pit lane for repairs after that off in the sweepers, and I believe we have, oh, we're have we getting a replay queued up for um, Ayub's incident, unfortunately for him. Uh, quite yeah, a crucial while we incident, wait, actually. While we wait for that replay, the number 2 car has been exemplary of great luck and then terrible luck. Mm. They, uh, the only... The only team that were able to pit under the previous VSC and gained a ton of time, basically a free pit stop while everybody else had to go around and then pit after the VSC ended, and now off. That is uh, that is really unfortunate for they them. They timed, the, timed out the server as well, as far as I'm aware. And that, yes. Yeah. All right, replay coming up. We have a replay of what happened to uh, Ayub, so any Born to Race fans, turn away now, but here it comes. Uh, Ayub in the sweepers, just ahead of... Uh, well, he was, he was in P3. Oh, he's already got the damage at this point. He's already got the damage. So it was. So he had a twitch oh, and then went off. Well held. Oh. Ah, and then turned into the wall. So he, he had damage and then added to it. And there goes um, the P3, Teo Jose, getting through uh, on Ayub. So that's, that's what happened there. Just a loss of control. Easily done. What a day yeah, for Rota Preza. Mm. That car oh, yeah. has just a little bit of damage on the nose, where I think it, I would guess they just bumped into the back of another car, otherwise in great condition. Uh, 
even more impressive considering they've had to drive past everyone, everyone. to get up we, to We third. don't want to jinx them, but they no. have been just quietly picking away at positions, and now yeah. they are less than 40 seconds away from Isaac Price. They're in second place. Yeah, this is, this is an incredible drive from them. Yeah. They will have to pit soon, looking at their tires. So probably two free laps at the maximum. I think you're probably right. They are looking a little low and the temperature is starting to go out of them. So I think, uh, yeah, earlier, I think the, the highest they cycled earlier was third position. So yeah, they're, they are due any time now. I haven't seen haven't seen his teammate Pedro Picanco join the server so if they're coming in it will be for tire service and Teo Jose will retain command of that car uh, but they should be in slow Ooh, a little lockup from Teo Jose going in there that is dangerous when the tires are that worn yeah I mean Ayu even with that damage he's doing an okay job at keeping up he's only three three and a bit seconds behind um, so it can't be affecting him that badly, even though it looked like a pretty hard whack on the wall. It really did. He, he was lucky he hit the tire barriers and not the armco mm. or the cement, but even so, that's a big hit. Yeah, the tire walls are softer, generally. Uh, they do kind of, they are more elastic, they do bounce the car out more than the armco or the concrete would. Is a fair point. Teo Jose's pace is good with worn tires, too. Um, he's done a 27.6, which is, uh, I, I would say, that is the best of the rest. Isaac Price and Gabor are are easily the class of the field. But 27.6 is respectable for that team coming from the back. Um, it sounds like we have a replay coming up. Uh, car number two into the sweeps. Is it going to be a similar incident to Ayub? Yes, it is. Almost carbon copy. Um, but this time... Oh, and tail end! Oh, that's brutal. That's really oh. unlucky. That connect of the wall and the fence, really bad to hit it right there. Yeah, that's a that's an unlucky incident to go into the end of the tyre barrier um, and you know cause, well, a lot of rear left damage. So yeah, that Watch was the... Yoni here, who has been closing on Rick Cardall. Still, uh, still a pretty big gap, 18 seconds up the road. I expected, because I drove with him recently, and he blew my mind. Um, and we know he's, we we know he's quick enough that at times we have seen him just toy around with the rest of the field. I think we expected to see Yoni Cadilla drive further up the order, um, but he's uh, he's making slow progress. I really expected to see him up in a top five. I mean, there's still an hour and a half left, so he could, but um, I think it's been a tricky day for them. I mean, it wasn't helped by their start, really. They, they, yeah, they really set back for put sure. down quite early on, and uh, to, to recover to here uh, is, is already pretty impressive. And like you said, uh, there's 90 minutes to go. Anything can happen. This is, this is the point now where you really have to start gunning for every single tenth in the race. This is it now last 90 minutes yeah speaking of gunning for every single tenth uh dennis lind has uh has had a cup of coffee and a nice stretch um he is dipping into the 26s now so dennis lind really quick that'll make it difficult for gabor to catch because gabor is only slightly quicker hmm dennis has a mighty gap ahead of him to yoni this is a minute a minute gap it's is it insurmountable in the time i mean surely someone's gonna have an, an issue in order to for for the knight of Velox team to pray that they can make a position i don't i don't see it happening i mean it's it's a it's a large gap it's a minute i mean yeah but we've seen it's a gap to yoni mm. the yeah. Zero, yeah even worse i would say we have seen everyone except Everyone except, I think, the 72 car. Uh, and they probably have, and we just missed it. We've seen everyone on track make a mistake today. And some drivers have some drivers have been really unlucky, and some drivers have gotten away with murder. <laughs> um, 
there's there's 90 minutes left for anything to come off. One small mistake, especially around a corner like this one where we're watching Teo Jose go around. If you know, you put a wheel off there and collect someone and end up you know upside down beached in the in the gravel, um, that's a safety car and it completely shakes up the race. So, and we've seen it before. the uh, The end of the Kyoto race was was just mental with with cars going off and safety cars and and all of it. So, still, uh, still, I think there's still a lot in store for us. I won't predict a safety car, but we've seen crazier things happen. All right, something's going to happen. It always does. This is this is where the drivers are. The you know they're pushing for everything. So uh, it's only a matter of time. I I love this camera shot. Watching watching that car from above snaking through those bins is it? so cool. It yeah. looks so good, and these cars just look incredible. It's a good looking car. It really is. The the nice thing about this car and this track in the sector is. That it's just, just a bit on the limit. You you can't drive it flat out, so it's not easy. Uh, you just have to like uh, feather the throttle a bit, brake a bit, and there you can really try to push your luck and try to make a difference as a driver. In some other cars, this track uh, you don't really have the ability to pull your weight. I don't know how much of this car you saw while you were on track, but um, for those who are wondering, yeah, that's not an error. Michael Malik is doing the entire six hours solo, or he's attempting to, and the damage that he's got in this car, namely on the front left, um, he's had since pretty much the first 20 minutes of the race. Uh, Quinteros, meanwhile, getting past Abel Hanuni. Um, has he been in the pits there? Or has he made another error? I think he's made another error. It does look like an error, maybe turn one. Looks like he's been off at turn one in the gravel somehow. Uh, he's lost a lot of time, um, so we're going to pull up a replay of that and see exactly what happened to Abe. Uh, that was also a bit of a lag there. Interesting, um, with, with people mm -hmm. pushing more and more, safety car is the only thing this race needs now. It's the only thing it hasn't had. It's had everything else. Yeah. Um, there were a few opportunities for one earlier on, but I think the I think race control were correct to not throw one um there'd have to be a car beached here just here to to justify one i think i think or turn one or turn one yeah yeah turn one is a big big sand pit mm -hmm. yeah i've been impressed with the with the calls uh on the whole from the argentina turismo team and as we go into the last 90 minutes of what's been a fantastic afternoon of racing, I definitely want to thank them for all the effort they've put into the preparation for this one. Car number as 90 Abe, plus. Another error there. The weird oversteer error. Uh, car Some 90. Pit two pits. Yeah, pit two. Ah, here we go. That is the 90 furtive racing machine in the pit lane. And on the way again. But where is TJ? TJ's coming through the final chicane and it's not going to be close enough to affect the pass as this car's already leaving uh, leaving the pit lane now. Ipsal. So, there was only a few. We've also had a slow lap. 29.2 potentially pushing a little bit too hard yeah, I think things tend to happen when you step away which I've just done <laughs> I came back to see that he had a slow lap so didn't see how or where he went off his uh, his split on this lap is good um, so he's whatever's happened he gathered it up um, so we got a fight brewing on for 5 Ayub has a big target on his back because Ricardo is right on him. You're not exaggerating. Ricardo is right there. He could make a dive here, uh, but he chooses not to. Still on board with Isaac over here, but we'll switch to this fight between Ayub and Rick Cardo in just a moment. Yeah, Rick is uh, Rick is looking feisty. Ooh, he nearly, yeah, he nearly tucked under. He nearly made an optimistic move there on Ayub. Ayub clearly struggling with this car. His teammate has had a much better go of it. 
And now, now he has his hands full of Rick Cardle. It looks like Ayub has a bit less downforce because he was able to streak away at the straight. Ooh, Cardo really goes to the edge of the track. Yeah, that's uh, that's tempting fate going that far out. Oh goodness me, Rick had to be on the anchors there on the exit. He was yeah, and, and Sanchez was off track on the inside of the circuit there, so they will have had a yellow flag while they were running nose to tail. I didn't even see that, so yeah. As Isaac posts another fastest lap of the race. That R4 on the rear really works wonders. It really does. But it shows you that even even in his... In his uh... Oh, goodness me, that was wide from Rick. Card event, yeah. It really shows you the experience and the... I guess the... Isaac's not complacent at all. They're willing to try these alternative strategies and you know going for our falls on the rear something which no one else has done and pushing well, are they hours. the only one i think so are they um yeah we did it one we did it on we did it at kyoto yeah you didn't do it right. here <laughs> yeah. is the point i'm trying to make yeah as we, yeah yeah so good yeah, what's, what's really impressive is that uh um is that he's able to make this work and he doesn't turn up every week. We got a replay queued up right now. This is Ayub going off in turn one. We'll return to talk about Isaac in just a moment. Looks like he's gone just a little bit deep and then wide yeah. on the exit. Yeah, that'll do it. Easily done. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what cost him all that time. Oh, he's a lucky boy. He is. Yeah, Isaac, um, you know, Isaac is making a somewhat, <clears throat> a somewhat unorthodox strategy work. Um, and he's not he's not racing that often, um, which really it's really a testament to his talent. You know, guys like you know, Rick Cardall and Gabor and Yoni are in are in these regular events that, that we cover every week. And Isaac Price turns up and just wrings the car's neck um, with something a little bit different than than everyone else is doing. He's the Isaac is just immensely talented. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, he's not driving LFS that much, but he is probably driving more than anyone else. Um, really fast yeah. guy. Yeah, thank you for saying that. That's what I meant, is he's not driving LFS that often. Yeah. Uh, but they do they do well managing that. Um, I, I'm not sure how fast Lagukas was, but I'm also sure he wasn't that much slower. Watching, watching Ipsale in the furtive racing car now, coming around to the final sequence of corners. We'll have to see. I'm curious what his pace looks like when we come across the line. It's not. It's certainly not going to be as fast as Isaac. But if they are running quickly enough, they could still be on for the lead at the very end. We know that they're on slightly different pit strategies, so there will be a. Uh, a change, maybe a change of drivers, but at least one more tire change. So Sally comes across the line 27.30, so he's almost two seconds off Isaac's yeah, pace. That's uh, probably enough for Isaac to hold this lead, no matter what they do with strategy. I think that is uh, probably fair to assume at this point, unless a big issue befalls the 99. Uh, we have a bit of insight into why Gabor... Um, was going slowly or had a slower lap. Um, this is what happened to him. It was into the well, into the final sector. Was it a wobble over the curb? No, it was before the curb. And then he goes over it. Oh goodness me! Launches the car. And amazingly, he holds it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a incredible. code round. Yeah. Um, while we we're watching <laughs> that's, this, that's what two hundred thirty slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while we're watching this, Pedro Picanco has taken over the 72 car. Um, that is one of the road appraiser machines that, again, came from the very back. Uh, Pedro Picanco in for Teo Jose. We believe Pedro Picanco is a little bit quicker, and he has rejoined in seventh. Um, and we know they're capable of running in third entirely on, on the merit of their own talent. So I think we'll, with the cycle of pit stops, probably see them make up a few more positions and then... 
uh, as we close in on one hour to go the uh, the complexion of at the end of this race will unfold I think it'll depend a lot on depend a lot on talent and a lot on strategy it remains to be seen just how the strategies are going to shake out as the race draws to a close yeah I, I mean to be honest it's in, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens from kind of uh, third place to the end of like well, where Gabor is basically from third to ninth is the real mixing pot. Like anything can happen in that group at this point. Um, I think uh, Dennis and Gabor probably too far back now to get really in amongst that pack. But um, you know, I think the third spot on the podium is completely up for grabs. Um, you know, anyone could Five get that. Five teams in it, I think. Yeah, I mean, That's look at this. Cardell so close again. Exactly, El Hanouni and Cardell right together it's again. It's a drive zone. Oh, he's gonna go for the outside. It's big over speed. Oh, Ayub, Ooh, he goes goodness wide. me, yeah. Ayub, Ayub pushed, uh, he, didn't, he didn't push him as in physically, but he was right there and, and forcing the, the gap and... Well, yeah, he did the right move, he did a great Great move. effort, fantastic defense. I mean, it's not, it's not easy to outplay Ricardo. Nope. And Rick got a great run out of the final corner too. He, he did it. He, his line he's just waiting. Came he's waiting. He straightened it out. Yeah, now he's right there in the slipstream. Yeah, he's Ayub waiting for will A of cover the inside. No, Ooh, he, he moves quite late. Yeah. So Rick takes him, even gives him a bit of dirty air. I think that was uh, Rick sending a message with that chop into the back into the racing line. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's really tough when you get a load of dirty air in the turn like that. Okay, I have a, I have a bold prediction here. So we have, um, I don't know the gap to the leader. I'm waiting for that to come up. Maybe we'll see it on the timing here in just a second. But tabbing through the top of the order, um, Isaac Price will definitely need one more set of tires to go to the end. Drivers in P2, so the number 90 car, um, they will also need another set of tires. Uh, Rick, uh, who we're watching now, needs tires. Ayub uh, is on fairly fresh rubber, so it would be a stretch. He might be able to go to the end, but we know Ayub has been struggling. In P5, we have Yoni Katilla on fresh rubber. He has recently taken this. These tires might very well go to the end, and mm -hmm. I wonder if he's close enough that he could make it work. I don't think he has the pace to catch Isaac. I don't think anybody has the pace to catch Isaac. Um, Isaac's looking pretty comfortable in the lead, but I wonder if, with a combination of strategy and a race pace, Yoni could snatch the podium. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. He's got a tangible gap there of 16 seconds to the Rick Carl El Hanouni uh, fight, so I think, as Stravko alluded to, he's definitely in that bubble um, if, he can, if he can deliver. And Ayub and Rick are fighting hard enough that uh, though Rick has gapped him a little bit now, I think it looks like Rick is probably going to drive away because Ayub has struggled with the car. But um, if one of these guys comes together uh, and makes it a little bit easier for Yoni, Yoni's 15 seconds. Yoni's gaining on Ayub a ton. Um, yeah, Yoni's Yoni's in a good position. Rony Krumpush in the pits. Um, he is handing that Carter. Uh, he's handing that car over to his teammate. Uh, that's Lorenzo Lucidi, who has joined the server. So Rony. Done for the day, giving that over to Lorenzo, who will roll away in that car momentarily. Yeah, so uh, Rony did an hour and a half uh, of, uh, of the race, so just about a quarter, and hands over to, as you said, Lorenzo. See what he can do in the dying laps. He was in the car right at the beginning, uh, took the start. He's had a bit of time to, to have a break, and now he's back into the sweaty, sweaty cockpit. And Watching, it's no surprise. Uh, oh, sorry, Pete, go ahead. No, no, okay, well, yeah, Isaac, Isaac is, it's no surprise that Isaac is pushing flat out. He was so uh, out of shape going over that curve. It's, he, you know, no lap is the same, um, but he's really, really pushing now. He really is. Um, Pedro Picacco is catching Fernand Quinteros on the circuit. Um, so they are... Uh, they're slowly working their way back up to P6. I don't think they have a chance to catch Yoni on a pace, but 
looking at their tires, they should be good to go to the end of the race, too. So they're behind Yoni, and I think Yoni is on a superior strategy unless he's going to need to take an extra fuel stop. Um, don't know if that's the case. We'll go back and look at the uh, look at the log to see when pit stops um, recently shook out. Um, so not not over for Pedro Picanco and the Road Appraisal team. They could be in the hunt for a podium, looking more likely that it'll be fourth. Um, my guess is they're racing Yanni Cotilla for that podium position. Uh, though Ayub, even though he needs to take tires far enough ahead of Yoni, that I think with, well, with the fuel and tire stop, he's going to fall behind Yoni Cotilla. So, not sure, yeah, not sure how this is going to come off for Ayub. He's, uh, he's obviously had a lot of trouble with this car. His teammate, uh, had a much better go of it. Kind of wonder, um, we talked earlier and then, uh, and then Stravko, uh, talked about this uh, after he joined how you make compromises in the setup um, and especially when you have a much quicker driver you tend to favor the the quicker driver's prefer preferences and I think Ayub was not the preferred driver in this car having a hard go of it today but doing well to hold on to fourth oh do you do you prefer the faster driver because usually the faster driver can kind of drive anything fast so you wanna you wanna bring up the slower driver to a better level because if you if you share the race distance equally it could mean that you get fastest race time by just uh, making setup suited to a slower driver yeah i think i think you make it as easy as you can for the slower driver um so that they're comfortable um but then I, I think you lean toward maximizing the performance for the better driver because you know a really strong driver, especially an alien like Isaac or or Yoni, um, they can you know with the car just right they can extract so much more performance than you know a, an average guy like like me would do. You know I will I'll keep the car between the lines with a comfortable setup and I'll struggle and ruin a race with an uncomfortable setup. But you know if you and I had the same car. Um, you know, I would I would absolutely defer to you so, to, so you could extract the most from it. I think that would long term, especially with especially in endurance racing where it's so much of the race is beyond your control. Um, you uh, when you need the pace, you you give as much as you can to the uh, the driver who can extract the most pace from the car. That's that's a fair point. Fair point. Yeah, I mean. Especially, that would even work better in a case where you put the best driver to drive last. Then maybe a lucky safety car bunches the field up. Yeah, you, get you, you the put best a rabbit like that. Yeah, you put a rabbit in front of that guy and tell him like you have to set qualifying laps to try to get another spot. Then you, that's when you really want a perfect car under uh, under the driver who has exactly what he wants. We're watching Martin Capal being caught here by the Imbica racing car. Um, gradually this has been happening, but now we ride on board with uh, Dominguez as he tries to affect the pass in the hardest possible There's place on the There's a car going very slow, car okay. number 40, in the middle of a track. Are they out of fuel? Out of fuel, that would so be bad. I, I, okay. I, oh my just goodness. This changes is, everything. Is this it? This is it. I, Isaac just went through the oh. safety car. Is there a safety car on track? Safety car yeah. deployed. Safety car deployed. Oh. So looking for Isaac Price, who is halfway around the circuit. Unbelievable. What does Where he do? Does he Gabor? come in? What does he do now? He's got 40 second gap. Gabor has just gone around Frera. Well, we get to see where everybody is on track. So Isaac Price is coming around to the hairpin, the furthest point on the circuit. Ipsale is also about halfway around. Rick Cardall is just... Oh, Rick Cardall just missed pit lane. This happened oh, right as he passed pit me. lane. Well, this car is in the worst possible place for a recovery. Really and they is. will try to recover this car. Um, I wonder which of the which of the cars has been scrambled, actually. Um, yeah. Sorry, Pete. I'm going yeah. to interrupt you. Yanni Cotilla is sitting in pit lane oh, taking service me. with Hernan Quinteros behind him. Yanni Cotilla is rolling again. Well, Incredible luck from Yoni. Well, 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 Gabor was in the worst possible place on the track. He's been calling for a safety car 
all race. Look where he is. He's absolutely nowhere. It, yeah, he and be he's to, behind Isaac. Yeah, he might be able to gain from this, but... Not enough. Not enough, especially at the speed he's travelling. He's got half the lap to go. So, Zdravko, what do you make of this? Well, well it's not much. <laughs> <I> think, uh... <laughs> oh, goodness me. Uh, it all depends how long the safety car will be. Uh, they did say that unlaps will be going on on the safety car. So even if they clear the car fast, the the whole procedure we expect the whole procedure to go on. And when I say we, it's me and my teammate. <laughs> oh, this is this shot is very cool with. The da oh my goodness the the dashboard on the car with the track map and the status deployed this is this team has done some incredible mods to spice up the to spice up the sim I'm really impressed with their work all of it has been spectacular so we have uh, looks like uh, Wheeler is going to take over the 40 car after they get Frera home again for him to do so. Looks like Dennis Lind leaving pit lane. There's Isaac stopped. Uh, he's taken repairs. That car looks uh, looks like it got a new nose on it. Yeah, he came he's in. He's got some time, so might as well. Um, well, yeah. So the the safety car was out on track. There were cars anchors on, um, and the, the safety car was out too soon. As Gabor pulls Sorry, in. Sorry, Pete. Sorry. Yeah. So will I wonder? Oh, uh, I might have ducked in the pits here to take fuel to go out ahead of Isaac Price and then get waved by because he's ahead of the leader here. If he can go ahead of Isaac, then he will certainly be waved around. Well, the interesting thing here is that the rescue is underway. The rescue car, uh, which is being driven by... Gabor uh, is going. Gabor Dakira. is rolling and he is ahead of Isaac Price. Oh my goodness me. Well, <laughs> unbelievable. Well, well, well. Uh, and okay. he is right behind the safety car. If he gets waved Isaac by... Him. If he gets waved by, it's game Gabor, on. <laughs> Gabor has asked for permission to chat. What, I think it's what all do you mean? If, what? what do you mean if the safety car okay, is the leader? Uh, yep. Oh my goodness I think me. Gabor is a bit eager. He's asking. Ima to, uh, express imagine this. His opinion. Imagine this. His wishes have been answered. I'm, I cannot believe this, honestly. He's waiting to Isaac be given has permission. To be sick. Oh Isaac, now Isaac has me. to be sick because now he knows he will have to race Gabor. Oh, uh, well, yeah, well. Oh, five. Yep. Zero, five pass. Oh, my the goodness me. There you, there so, you go. We have so been waiting for... Your teammate is back in it. With I can't hours. believe it. it. I actually cannot believe what's happened here. Um, this has changed the entire face of the race. Um, Chris, meanwhile, is he's he's not giving into the hysteria. He's got us a replay. Chris, uh, fire it up. Um, oh well, yeah, he's going to get us a replay of uh, something <laughs> while while this is all going on. Um, yeah, Fer Ferrera running out of fuel is the reason why this uh, safety car has been deployed. He's being pushed around by one of the recovery vehicles driven by Sequera. Yeah, we had we had a bit of mis of a miscommunication there. Uh, Chris was asking us in our ears if we wanted a replay, <laughs> which we do. So he's working on that. So actually, it's just um, me who is getting now, caught up. Yeah, in now while we're while we're waiting for him to uh, find a replay for us, um, I'll I'll ask you, Stravko, are you uh, are you in two chats at the same time, sending coded messages to your teammate who is now uh, at race pace, catching up to the safety car? <laughs> are you in any communication with him while all of this is happening, and you're in the commentary box? I think he's muted us so he can talk to his teammate. Yeah, I think he must be in a strategy <laughs> call. I think he's. Uh, I don't blame him. I think this is this is so exciting because um, he he's got two caps on today. He's he's now he fully really fully invested in this. Uh, absolutely crazy situation. Ooh, Gabor's but... going to come flying by the rescue vehicle here. Okay, he's he's seen the yellow flag and is safely out safely through. That was a bit quick. Yeah, Gabor... it's too quick. He might be penalised for that. Frankly, that was way yeah. too quick under the safety car. Lots this is he's pushing begging. flat out. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of cars are begging for permission here. Gabor asked for permission and then typed a chat message. This is too quick. Did not simply request perm. So he might. 
Uh, yeah, I hope Gabor doesn't get in trouble for this because he had it all come to him, and now he's well. If it's deserved, it's deserved. Unfortunately. Yeah. And I mean, I think see. I think it's all clean enough. I mean, he got through safely, but a little bit. Uh, this might be a bit ragged from Gabor. I hope. I hope he hasn't given this away. Well, one thing we've got to point out is that the the safety car driver Galvin has been sat very patiently at the end of pit lane for about four and a half hours, five hours in fact, yeah. And now it's his time to shine uh, since the pace car lap. And I cannot believe that we have had a safety car at the, well, it would be the 11th hour in a 12 hour race, but it's the fifth hour at the six hours of Aston as we look top down onto the mod that was put together specifically for this event by the Argentina Turismo team. They've done an Im immense amount of preparation for our own, for our entertainment and enjoyment, so full credit to them. And we're going to have a safety car restart once um, Ferreira has been pushed back to pit lane, which is happening now. It might be too soon for them to organise the restart, so there may be one more lap. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it all depends on the lights on the top of that safety car. I wonder, I wonder where Zdravko's gone. I wonder if he's uh, finished his yeah. team talk. Yeah, I, if I were him, I... Oh, there he oh, is. Oh, he's back. Here he is. Yeah. Okay, your, your uh, thoughts. So, Share so, so I, now I understand that you can't hear my whispers. So I have been whispering to no one yet. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, what I went was uh, why I think it not teammate. He can, he can mend for himself. Fair enough. Okay, well, anyway, we've got another lap. I'm so, I mean, for Gabor, this is a dream scenario. Uh, the, the What isn't the dream scenario is that Gabor was going flat out under the safety car for uh, a lot, a long time. Um, I, I don't know whether the race administration saw it or whether they're going to do anything about it, but it was quite quick. Well, we, we've said enough that if they're listening, then they well, say they couldn't have missed it. No. It, it looked safe enough. He caught them on the straight. The safety car and maximum did, speed did, is 150 definitely... k's, though. And he was doing probably twice yeah, that. that. Yeah, a lot. Chris is asking, if the, is that the max speed for the safety car or the max speed for everyone else? I think it's the max speed for everyone else. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it well, is. We need to get uh, clarification yeah, quickly. We'll, we'll consult the roll book. Yeah. Gabor is now honking at the uh, at the drivers ahead of him because Benoit Lemarier is so, holding up the line here. So the rules say that uh, in case of an in-track incident, a yellow flag can be produced appearing on screen as yellow flag with a consequent departure of safety car. Immediately warned on screen, all drivers must slow down to around 150. Until okay. the race control indicates everybody can increase the speed to catch the safety car file. Gotcha. So he, he probably so, was speeding during the time when so it was he was probably allowed. catching up yeah. the safety car, yeah. Well, he's currently quite away from the safety car and is doing probably just under the limit. Um, oh no, they're back up to speed now. Here we go. Dennis I mean, is... I, I'd, I, I'd <laughs> say that 300 is around 150. <laughs> oh, An order dear. of magnitude. We need a maths now. lesson here in the commentary box. But, uh, well, Dennis and Gabor are, are, are circulating here. And uh, yeah, I'm guessing they'll be allowed to catch up before we go green. Taking yeah, another while. Yeah. I, I think, so I think the... that Dennis, Dennis has to play it smart. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be too far uh, behind safety car. But they do want to have nice hot tires. Sure. Well, these guys are going to be getting colder tires at a point in the race where you do not want to be getting colder tires. Isaac Christ getting so close to the back of the safety car. Um, and uh... I mean, I mean, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's easy to spin behind safety car. Um. We have the most boring replay in the history of all replays. I don't know, it produced right a lot of excitement, Pete. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty underwhelming for you, mate. Uh, here we go. This is a car running out of fuel. Oh, you, that's, that's the worst feeling, too, because you could see him at full song coming up the hill and through the bend here, and then suddenly dead stick. Dead. That's, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Uh, you've got to terrible. feel bad for the guy. This yeah. is uh, Ferreira running out of uh, running out of juice, unfortunately, and rolling very undignified. There goes uh, so, Dennis. So everyone 
everyone in chat is still screaming for permission to speak, and mm -hmm. none of them have received it. Um, Isaac and Gabor both. I assume Isaac is going to ask them to keep the lapped cars between him and everyone behind him, and Gabor is going to ask to send them through. Ah, there's Isaac has been given permission, so we'll see what transpires, what politicking the uh, the drivers okay. the oh, lobby here. We're in a dream scenario here. We are the onlookers. We, this is the best entertainment. Isaac wants to know what the rules for the restart are. Okay. Oh, Pete, sorry to interrupt you. Dennis Lind has just timed out. Are you Gabor joking? Is going oh, to inherit my a position. oh, my goodness me. Oh, so... no. Let's stop locking. And there's contact between the 72 and the 2 car. So, Alan or looks Dennis like... need to rejoin. And it's a long drive around. The, the cars are just about to get to the, to the straight. And are we yeah, going around they... again? Yeah, they won't be given again. permission. Yeah, they won't be given permission to rejoin before they lose a lap. So that's Dennis Lind. Yeah, the number two machine. They're they're out of the running now. Can you believe? Can you believe it? Um, well, anyway, here we go. The cars filing their way past the start gantry for another lap, and well, Dennis Lind oh. and Alan are gonna have to join at the back of this queue. Oh, what rotten luck! Yeah, Dennis has just gone for it without permission. The to, ball's in so. the pits again. Okay, what's happening here? Can we get any insight? Is this is this fuel? We or we what? wanna we wanna put new new tires and we yeah. wanna refuel. Oh my because, god! Uh, because then when we have to fuel, when we have to stop for the last time, we will spend less time. Okay, but you're gonna you're pit. gonna have to join at the back of this queue now. Yeah, but he he can slow down. He's the last one. Yeah. He can heat up the tires. Unbelievable. He has the space because there is no one behind him. What has happened here is that basically all of the strategy... Rick Cardle has gone off the track and he's rejoining. He'll be... Will he be able to... Yeah, he'll be yeah, able to move got... his way back he into has position. Damage. He has time. So this... Any, any strategy plans that anybody had six hours ago have gone out of the window entirely. This is a new... This is a new race, essentially. Uh, we are going to have the... What is it going to be? The 50 minutes of Aston, essentially. So, so buckle that's... up. That's how many laps? 20? 21? Oh, well, about 20. depends how long the safety car lasts, because and at this point... fuel is only 18 laps. Yeah, so yeah. they've... Um, Isaac asked for a reminder about the restart procedure, and um, Sakara has told him that it's single file, leader decides when to go after the red line. Single file. They haven't said, they haven't said whether they will be restarting this lap. I assume they will be, because they've bunched up the pack. Uh, Gabor is now Gabor is the last car in the order. Yeah, they're going to find yeah. out soon. They've got about half the half a lap to go before they find out, but we'll see. Um, either way, I think Zdravko, the answer to your question is yes. It'll be around twenty laps, so there's going to be a one stop, one yeah. stop race to the finish. They all they all have to stop again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if somebody will try to fuel save for two laps worth of fuel. Is it worth it? At this at these speeds, do you think two laps is a lot? Uh, this is, if you, can catch, track. if you can catch Drift. Okay. Well, this is fascinating, and if you're just joining us, then you've missed a lot, it's safe to say. We are about to go underway again for 51 minutes of racing, if it were to start now, uh, at the end of the Aston Six Hours. And uh, it is Isaac Price who leads ahead of Ipsal, El Hanuni, Catilla, Pacanco, Saitoni, Cardal, Gyur. Tres Palacitos and Vargas, your top ten. And uh, well, is Isaac going to start to back up the pack? Have they have they been given the word, or are we going round again? More contact in the back. Rick Cardell collected one of the. Well, uh, this is the sector line. The if they don't hear now, cars. we're going again. Yeah, the safety car lights are still on, so I assume right. they have. They, they're going to be. Yeah, they'll go around one more time. Well, Everyone's this... still screaming for permission to yeah. chat. <laughs> if if we go around one more time, then the the the. the more people might pit because this gets tantalizingly close to being a zero stop. Yeah, so if it were if it were me at and the that back, that delays the restart like, again. Yeah, if it were me at the back, like Gabor has just done, if you know it's a three minute lap, it's more than that. It's close to four minutes under safety car conditions. They take four minutes off the clock. You're inside one, just barely inside one stop, maybe with a little bit of saving. So it's a sprint race to the end, and they have to be going around one more time. I mean, the lights are still on. They've given no instruction. Yeah, they're going around again. Start the race. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the, the drivers have been given no warning, no opportunity to stack up. So inevitably, we're going around again. Now, who pits now? 
Is anyone gonna? Is anyone gonna go in the pits? Oh, I can. I it? can tell you of one team. Will. Is it? Is it Gabor? Is he going in? Or is it? Yeah. He is. Unbelievable, Paul. What? What is happening? Ah, they're sending. <laughs> oh they're sending lab cars around too. Imagine. Martin's in as well. Imagine being enough fuel till the end. Oh my goodness me. I, if he can do this on a zero, then kudos. But, you know, what manner of thing has to happen? Will Dennis be able to, able to unlap himself? There's not enough time, surely. Uh, he'll probably, well, he's probably very unlucky, and he'll probably be stuck in the middle of the track, um, in the middle of the pack, a lap down. Yeah, so all the lap cars have been sent through. They are racing speed, uh, going around and catching the back of the grid. I believe the Team America cars are at the front of that line, just the way the 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 order on track is shaken out. Um, yeah, and there's a line behind them, Lucidi, Dennis, Lynn, Dominguez in the background while we watch Isaac Price there behind the safety car. So all the lap cars will go around. Gabor, because he stopped... He should catch up the leaders. He will be at the back of the leaders when he comes around. Isaac fact, Price should must have already be caught, yeah. spitting feathers. Yes, <laughs> that's one way to put it. <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't. He, he if he if he was to bail the lead now and pit, he would be behind Gabor. Yeah, he can't. I mean, Gabor has caught the the line. And Gabor he has to is... pit now. He has to pit if this safety car lasts another lap. There's no way Isaac can make it. Chris says it's 44 minutes for a stint. If it restarts now, everybody is pitting again. But it's so close, yeah. the margins he's, here. Isaac even at might safety have been, car speed. Yeah. Isaac yeah even at safety car speed, here. he's used three laps of uh, your three laps of safety car pace fuel, which is probably clear. It's a, that's a significant fraction of, of a lap of fuel at race pace. So... It'll be tight for Isaac. Hey, he, oh. he never he never could have come in. That's just the unfortunate position you end up in the you know, safety behind car, the safety car sometime. The safety car is in this lap. Isaac Price is going to be saved, I think. It's going to be marginal, but if the safety car is in this lap and everyone is up to full racing speed, it's almost certain that everybody will have to stop at least once, and we are going to have a fair fight to the end. Uh, if it lasted another lap or two, it would have been in doubt. But I think we're safe. I think we're good. I think the organisers have done a a good job here. It's it's a it's been a long safety car period because of just the the time that it's come out, boys. I think that is the that is the only reason why this has been a little bit uh, longer. Yeah. But we are going to go racing in one sector time. The fifty five has managed to get themselves a drive through penalty during the. Uh, during the safety car period um, in the pit lane, which is a little bit weird. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Isaac Price, the number 99, rejected by Yaraloko Esports, who's about to do this single file restart, which is a bit unusual. Um, but we will see. And to think, I was about to take a break from all this. Yeah, well, you, you well, can't. I'm in now. for the finish now. Yeah, you're... <laughs> no way. All right. Oh, this will be interesting. Let's see. Yeah, Gabor is lagging the start a little bit so he can get a Isaac run out of the gone. final corner. Isaac goes. Yeah, and everybody's at racing speed behind him. So Isaac Price coming through the final chicane at full song. That is Augustine Ipsali behind him by Yubel Lanuni in third. Yoni Katilla in fourth Yoni position. Drift. Everybody's still running in a straight line. Yoni, Yoni has, has the drift. Take it, Shroko. It's already over. <laughs> you only managed you a good restart. Yeah. And you will try to fight it back. Oh, you only will have the inside. I think you only will go. Ooh, that's very Ooh. tight. And you have to go well off the throttle. But look who's back in will, the hunt. Will Pedro Pikenko come behind Ayo? He's catching up. But I don't think he will be close enough for the hairpin. His pace was really good before the safety car. Uh, on fresh rubber, he was running high 26s, low 27s, and full load of fuel. So they uh, they don't have Gabor or Isaac pace, but they are pretty strong. Uh, but there is uh, there's your teammate lurking in the background, Strafko. He's right there all over Rick Cardle's bumper. And 
Man, you guys yeah, just... I mean, do, do you think he can stretch it? Can he go the distance? For the fuel, I don't topping think. off? I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I don't think we will even try. He will just drive flat out. We will have to refuel for two or three laps. It doesn't matter. Everybody will have to do it. We just have to beat him on pace. As Catilla attacks Ipsala. Oh, I think... contact Ooh. together. And I just want to bring into attention that there's a there's a difficult situation emerging right at the back of the field uh, while we watch this fight here. Uh, Dennis hasn't been given... Oh, he's just been given his laps back. He has just been given his laps back, I believe. He's in P11. Yeah, so challenge for your teammate right now, Strafko, is uh, Pedro Picanco is trying to get through Ayub Elanuni, and Ayub is holding up this entire line. There's a two or three second gap building ahead of Ayub. Pedro Picanco has superior pace and is yeah, all over him like I a see, quilt. I see no other solution than to overtake them all on the draft. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that Saitona will go through Picanco and Ayub now. He's very close. Well, we know Pabuleski is very quick. He's all over Pedro. He's got the he's got the run on the outside. Can he make this stick on the outside? Yeah. Oh, he gets it done. Good he easily effort. clears him. Yeah, now uh, Rick Cardall lurking in the background with Gabor behind him. The two of them, if they can get the slipstream. Gabor, <laughs> Gabor asking if he can bump draft, <laughs> of course. Oh, goodness me. And now here we go. They're running too wide. This will punch a big hole in the air for Gabor to try to get the slipstream and fly past all of these guys. He's a little bit too far back. Rick Cardall gets oh, it. Oh, a Rick Cardall off. Pedro didn't leave him any room. That promotes Gabor up one position while Pedro Picanco and, and Pablo Satone go Catilla side by side into the first corner. And Catillo overtook Ipsala for second place. Can Yoni get Isaac? Do you think he could do it? I think this he can a... try. This is a flashback to yesteryear going on here at the front, uh, but still side by side between Saitonu and Pekanko. Oh my goodness. Um, no room to breathe today. As Gabor gets very late on the brakes and there's contact. <laughs> what on earth? As Ipsala spins it. Oh, Ipsala not only losing out to Yoni, but losing out to a bunch of other guys as well. Down five places now. Yeah, Pablo Satone was forced a little bit wide into the hairpin by Pedro Picanco, and Gabor just dove for it. Got Gabor into the side. Gabor yeah, got into his door a little bit and tried to force the issue, but now he's going to have the inside after the chicane here. Oh, he's easily cleared him through the slipstream before they even turn in. One more done for Gabor. So that's behind. While Pablo Satone puts a wheel off on the inside. Well, Gabor was a victim of his own uh, breaking progress, I would say. He breaks very, very late. He breaks like five meters later than me, and he just couldn't stop the car when he saw Setona and Pinkanko coming together. Well, Frero will not realize it, but he has produced an instant classic, I think. No matter what happens here today, this will be talked about for a long time to come. 45 minutes to go in the six hours of Aston. We are running full green flag racing finally after an extended safety car period. 21 runners still in the race, and it's going to be a grandstand finish. Yoni Catilla, three seconds behind our leader. El Hanouni currently backing up the pack a little bit here. Six seconds adrift. Um, but what a story we have further down. Gabor, after being a lap down earlier in the race, back up to P5 and only seven seconds off. And now he and Pedro Picanco need to dispatch Ayub as quickly as they can. Ayub is definitely holding up this line. Yoni Catilla has taken off six seconds up the road from... Um, from Ayub, uh, sorry, three seconds up the road from Ayub now. Here comes Pedro. Pedro. Pedro has draft. He lifts. He lifts. He's waiting. He's waiting for it. He's biding his time. The smart way past. You don't want to give your opponent any slipstream. Oh, goodness me. Ayub. Yeah, I think Ayub is defending hard but fair. You know, kind of a late fade there to make Pedro Picanco think twice about diving on the inside to take that position, but not a late move. He doesn't block him. Um, I think Ayub knows that he doesn't have the pace to race with these guys, and he's just trying to preserve as many positions as he can. Yeah, the moment it looks like there has really, really good tires. It looks like uh, Pikanko will drop Ayub. 
So Ayo will have to have fun with Gabor soon. I think it's going to be sooner than soon. Uh, let's see how Ayub can manage uh, the chicane. Oh, Gabor gains so much on the in on the first part of that, but not going to be enough to get past in the hairpin. Just have to get closer in the sweeps, a bit wide of the apex for Ayub. Again, just giving away time at the apex there. Yeah, and while we were Gabor can see his prey. Yeah, all of this has unfolded. We talked a lot about Isaac Price and the uh, the rough luck he had to do all of the work securing that lead and then uh, the safety car unraveling it. Uh, Gabor's incredible luck to bring uh, to bring himself and uh, and his teammate, our friend Zdravko, back into the fight. Um, Pedro Picanco is is hanging out there in third place. So from 24th on the grid. Um, restarted behind the safety car in fifth position, makes up a couple spots to join the podium, and he is holding that position on pace. Um, Ayub is holding up Gabor behind him. I don't know that Pedro Picanco has pace for Gabor if Gabor gets through. I assume Gabor will eventually get through, probably on this lap, because Ayub goes, Ayub wide. goes very wide there. Gabor will be right behind him coming out of the final corner, but Pedro Picanco and the the road appraiser racing team incredible effort from them to drive from dead last up to the podium i think he should have draft or maybe easily not. Mm -hmm. uh, that's only not easily. that's only three car lengths i think he's probably uh, yeah, no, just he breathing the throttle a little bit to to time it or maybe he's not close enough oh I yeah. was... keep your connection so um, yeah. we know the answer on the downforce question now yeah, a massively lower downforce there. <laughs> Chris has got a replay for us to see just what happened to Ipsal. Why did he drop down and lose five positions uh, in a in a corner? Well, here comes the answer on the Super Broadcast replay. Salah does his uh, his typical early entry into the corner and then a little bit tight and a little bit early on the throttle. Does a half spin, lets everyone through, and uh, that's how you lose four or five positions with very little drama. Just yeah. a little bit too eager to get back in the power. And I mean, you're, that's his, uh, you ask a lot from rear tires from that angle. Yeah, this deep shot through that corner, you can see the downforce difference, and I expect here, through this part of the lap, we will see Gabor right under Ayub's bumper. Yeah, this is this is where uh, Gabor's setup will outmaneuver Ayub's potentially. No way through there, though. Ayub doing a good job at defending here. They need to be careful. We don't want to see more incidents and drama at the end of this race, but Ayub is doing a fantastic job of holding on here, and that's all he needs to do, really. Yeah, it's costing yeah, Gabor, Gabor so will much time. Not be happy with that. Well, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Abe's doing everything right. Oh, he's gone so wide, but he keeps on the road just. And now his superior lack of downforce is going to help open that gap back up. Yeah, I think Gabor will have to take a breather of a lap or two because mm -hmm. the tires are toast now. Unbelievable. Well, the gap ahead of him is uh, growing as well. The the gap between Yoni and Isaac is pretty stable. Uh, Pedro Picanco, a further four seconds back. Ayub, uh, obviously struggling a little bit, but Gabor might be in trouble from behind here because he's got two very, very fast cars. The furtive racing team are in heat. Yeah, Gabor got a good run out of the final chicane, and Ayub got it a bit wrong, clipped the tires. So Gabor might, uh, this is about the same distance he was back the previous lap, but don't think he's close enough to benefit from the slipstream. And he's got these two furtive racing cars, I think, catching him while Ayub holds him up. He really needs to get through Ayub somehow. He does, because he will risk losing out. These guys are no There's slouch. There's a car in turn one, Gravel. Okay. There's a car stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. Who is that? It's the number 51. It's uh, Sanchez. It's the it's a safety is. car. Oh, my goodness He's me. Beached. Not another one. This is absolute gem time for Dennis Lind and co. Alan Terzic and Dennis Lind, breathe a sigh of relief. You might... You might be um, saved here, potentially. Yeah, is this late this enough to save? It's just a car this... beach, though. It's not It's not necessarily fuel. It's not necessarily going to be an extended safety car period, but that car will still need to be removed. 
Yeah, um, so the leaders have yeah. the leaders haven't caught any lapped cars that they will need to cycle through, but I wonder because I mean they will do at least one lap into the safety car. I wonder if this is timed in such a way that it will save Gabor the fuel he needs but still cost Isaac. Because they've all been running <sighs> flat out oh, knowing yes, they've all run flat right. out knowing that they need to take one more stop. Well, we've got cars but in the Isaac, pit lane. Yeah, there's a, I can't see which car that is. We'll have to tab through. But Isaac, you know, Gabor, Gabor stopped to top off. So hey, this has come in. Yeah. Interesting. Ray Screener yeah, is as well. One of the gum garage cars in. The 42 is in. The number 12 is coming in. 11's coming in. It, this, well, this is this is shaking. I, I can't even this keep is track. Wild. I have no idea. This could end with anyone on on on, on the on the top step of the podium at this point. Yeah. Dennis Lind was stopped long enough that he's I suspect leaving, he took full service to see the tires. He's going to be ahead of the safety car. Yeah, Dennis Lind has taken fresh tires and a load of fuel that should carry him to the end of the race. Yeah. What's Isaac going to do? What does he... What? What is going through his head? He has the most impossible decision to make. Rescue car is at the scene as well. This is going to be... Short safety car, potentially. The rescue car is waiting around. I'm not sure if it's being, if it's waiting for race control to tell it it can approach the car. Um, I think they're waiting for the cars to go past before, before maneuvering to put into place, which is very sensible if you're, uh, if you get my drift. Uh, while this is happening. Michael Malik has repaired his car so that the uh, the unsightly damage under the front of that machine is... Uh, Isaac Price is in. And he should... I think he's got enough room that he should be able to top off Yoni with fuel. In. Yoni behind him, yep. Yeah, they should be able to top off and be okay. Pedro in. Abe and Gabor in. Now... Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, this if I were... wild. Because... Yeah, this is this is tough for Gabor. He's got a oh no! Is he stuck? Yeah, Gabor was stuck behind Pedro Picanco because Pedro took the second to last slot in pit lane, so Gabor had to try to drive past him on the left and just bump the wall, and he's fallen behind Ayub because of it. My goodness, Picanco had a longer stop as well. Um, so yeah, it's all going. So Yoni Katilla now leads. And... Uh, Ayub, sorry Pete, Ayub uh -huh. handed the car over to Mentus Smalkovicius. Oh, okay, oh, so Smalkovicius is back in. This is fireworks now. Yeah, because he was faster, so yeah, why not? Makes sense, exactly. And he's, he's got the advantage over Gabor. Isaac Price down to third place is two cars ahead of Gabor. One one car behind Smalkovicius. And, well, if you thought the first safety car was cause for a grandstand finish, you haven't seen nothing because we have a second safety car. Uh, this should shouldn't last too long. We hope. So um, we yeah. we have not we have not missed this. But in trying to keep up with the, all the action, we did not say that in that shakeup, Yoni Catilla has inherited the lead of the race. Yeah, with, I did mention with it, Pedro, but yeah, it was lost. With Pedro Picanco in second from twenty <laughs> fourth on the grid, Isaac Price behind them, Smelkovicius taking over for Ayub, who has struggled, but. Uh, done well enough to put them in a strong position, and Gabor up to fifth from a lap down. I want to this get a is, word from Michael Malik. Michael Malik joins us in the commentary box now. Michael, what on earth is this race? Michael Malik doesn't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I'll let him, I'll let him speechless. get back to it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll chat to him at the end um, and see what's going on. But yeah, Michael has repaired his car and will be able to hopefully give us some insight into his race at the end. Obviously, he's doing the whole thing solo. Um... Yeah, a little bit speechless, I guess. Ah, so, Roni, Roni in chat uh, has has answered your question, Pete. Uh, he says it's a lottery. <laughs> it is a lottery. Yeah, Roni, you're absolutely right. Um, the safety car is in this lap, and we have Yoni Katilla out of absolutely nowhere is leading the race. Remember that car spearing into the wall before we even got to turn one? Well, look at it now. Yeah, I. I... Wouldn't have, you know, based on how the race was unfolding earlier, certainly couldn't have predicted this. Uh, but yeah, these these things happen, and sometimes you benefit from great luck. And here it is, 
that car in the fence, as you said, and, uh, and now in the lead with Yoni Katilla, who is no slouch. He, uh, I, I raced with him uh, just a month ago to, to, take the, to take the checkered flag in the top spot in a 24-hour race, and now he's poised to do it again in a six-hour race and live for speed. Um, but he's got his work to do. There are, there are three or four very motivated drivers behind him. Yeah, even more than three or four. I mean, even if you look at P7, we got Tip Saleh who will be kicking himself about that mistake. He will surely push hard. And then you got Pauli Peltokangas. Yeah, they, they I were just maybe noticed that slow myself. At the, they were maybe slow at the start of the race, but six hours in. Is that. I think that Saitone went off. Yeah, the last the car off. When is Yoni yeah. going to bolt here? The safety car is off into the distance. The drivers are warming their tyres. Isaac went just after the hairpin. Yoni's going for it. I think he's gone now. Yeah, Wide past exit the red line. He's backing oh, them up. He's decided he's to hold them up. up. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is probably is he, smart to, he's, uh, to he's neutralize waiting. the slipstream. He's, he's waiting gone. for he's Dennis gone. Lind to come. <laughs> well, he's gone, and we are going to be back to green flag racing very, very soon. Hopefully, everybody makes it through the final sector cleanly. But Yoni Katilla leads the six hours of Aston in a crazy change of events. As we head across the start finish line, we will have 31 minutes of racing left. Smolkovicius has Isaac Price's slipstream. They're strung out ahead of Isaac, but Smolkovicius is right there. Might just get close enough to have a look in turn one. I think he's a little bit too far back, and Gabor struggling with that high downforce. He'll be a little bit quicker through the middle part of the circuit. Isaac Price goes wide in the middle of the corner. That's going to let Smolkovicius catch up ever so slightly. Is he close enough to benefit from the slipstream and then make a dive on the brakes into the hairpins? Hard to say, but there's Isaac not much time be... left. Isaac's going to be worried. He knows how fast Markovicius is, and this is not what he needs at the end of this race. Uh, one of his fierce competitors from the first stint right behind him with Gabor there as well. Um, my oh my, Yoni Katilla has a, a, a job to do here. He has to make use of this opening few corners. Yeah, Yoni's got a bit of a gap. A bit wide. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Yoni's got a bit of a gap, and Pedro Picanco is going to hold up this line because he is. He, Pedro is quick, but he is not as quick as the other cars around him. Isaac needs to hit up those rears. He changed the rear tires. Katila did that. So Isaac has a new set of tires. <laughs> I, this, this race has been something else, and we've still got 30 minutes to go. What a treat if you've joined us for this race. And if you know anyone who isn't watching, then go and grab them, because this is not going to let us down, is it, at the end of this race? Unbelievable. Yoni's not getting away from Pedro Picanco. I, I wonder if Pedro is also in running a high downforce setup because Yoni, uh, you, he's so quick and Pedro has not been as quick as the cars around him. I think we expected him to fall off a little bit. And it did appear as though he was holding up the line behind him in the first half of the lap. But now he he's there. He's within half a second. He's got Isaac right behind him. The two cars behind Isaac. Smolkovicius and Gabor have fallen off a little bit, but Pedro's not going away as Yoni runs wide. Yeah, he went deep. Oh. Isaac's going to have the slipstream coming through the final corner. He is indeed. If Isaac gets slipstream on Picanco, he might even jump Yoni. He hits the tires. Yeah, Pedro Picanco had a great run out of the final chicane. Isaac clipped the tires, as you said. Gabor is still right there behind Smelkovicius, but struggling. That downforce is really holding him back. Nothing doing, this time by the start-finish line. Yeah, Isaac, I think this is where the lower downforce does not help. You get that you get the fast run down the straightaway, but that very fast corner, you benefit so much from downforce and the arrow wash really hurts. And that is perilously late on the brakes from Isaac Price. I think he closed two tenths in the braking zone. Pedro Picanco a little bit early on the power. You could see the rear of the car twitching on the curbs and now Isaac Price is all over him. He could 
Yeah, Isaac Price poised to make a move here coming into this fast chicane and then the fast right hand bend. How does Pedro Picanco Ooh. defend it? Goes inside. Yeah, Isaac has it. Yeah, he will have to go wide. Smoky Vicious will come. Isaac oh, goes wide. Oh, Isaac's gone too wide. Yeah, Smoky Vicious will be interested now if Isaac has the retires. But Yoni yeah. is not running away. They are fighting, and Yoni is still not running away. Yeah, Isaac managed well. to avoid. Isaac managed to avoid picking up some dirt, but now he's there's a little bit of a gap to Pedro Picanco, and he has mirrors full of Smolkovicius right on his bumper. This is some proper racing. This is. Yes, um, this is. I'm. Is, um, I'm actually. Speechless, frankly, this is absolutely amazing. Um, we just got to sit back and enjoy the end of this. Yeah, the problem for Gabor here is he can't follow in that fast, fast left hander, he can't follow a car through there, and he just came behind Smoke Vicious and had to lift. Yeah, watching these guys come through, I am ever everyone is at the limit and so impressive but i am i am most impressed with pedro picanco to drive with this poise having come all the way up from 24th position on the grid and if you watch him gumming into these hairpins you can see him at the absolute limit of braking just just locking up coming into these corners and he's able to breathe the pressure from the brake to to be Smoke right Kavishius. on the threshold mokovicius had a draft on isaac but it was too late. So he has lower downforce. While Pedro and Isaac have the same, I think. And we could see Pedro Picanco now losing out to Yone Catilla. Yone extending that lead to one and a half seconds. So Pedro definitely holding Isaac, Menta Smalkovicius, and Gabor up now. Pedro is just so good on the brakes. What's Gabor doing here? Is he is he biding his time or is he is he on the limit? Well, I guess he's on the limit, isn't he? He's pushing pretty hard. Yeah. It's just the downforce is letting him down. He just, yeah. he just can't, can't overtake because he catches up in the turns. He has the yeah. speed. Well, I mean, he's one second behind Picanco in second, so... Yeah. But you can see Yoni just affecting his advantage here. Um, a bit of a wiggle on the exit. He's really, really pushing. He's not leaving anything on the table, and why should he? 25 minutes to go. And it is, oh, it is a, a race that none of us are going to forget in a hurry. No, this. Uh, but this meanwhile, was... meanwhile, ahead, Yoni, Yoni is stretching his legs now a bit as Pedro has mirrors full of Isaac. This is working a treat for them. Yeah, I mean, what Isaac really needs is for Pedro to just pull away to 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 bridge that gap because once he catches up to Yoni. Isaac can close up himself, but it's not happening. Um, Isaac probably needs to get the job done himself if he wants it to happen. And it's difficult. There's different setups from all these drivers, pretty much. Yeah, Yoni's not getting away quickly, but he's getting away enough. It's a tenth here and there. It's Isaac enough. needs, yeah, Isaac needs, he needs to nail the final corner because he's got the low downforce. He should be able to pull Pedro Picanco, but he has to get the final corner perfect because Pedro Picanco himself has been so good. Oh, great and exit that's, from Pedro. Yeah, Pedro got Isaac just, will be under so attack there. now. Isaac will be under attack from Smokovicius. Yep. Unbelievable. It's going. Potentially a podium chance going away. Oh, goodness me, did he swipe across too soon? I think there was contact between the two. That's how much it means, the smallest of margins. Isaac not going to be able to get around the outside. This is going to give Gabor potentially a sniff. Oh, Isaac's Ooh, Isaac, off. Isaac's yeah, still... Isaac's wide in the grass. He's off in the wall. And our race leader for pretty much most of the race is down to P5 and ailing now. It went without damage. Not, oh. many, not much damage, so... Unbelievable. Car is still drivable. Yeah, now Smalkovicius, uh, with Isaac Price out of the way, is is just breathing all over Pedro Picanco's neck, but Pedro Picanco has... Re can Pedro Picanco resist this pressure for another 23 minutes? Because Isaac Price had him done, and then went a little bit wide, 
and he kept his head, was right there behind Isaac, did the over-under coming through this bend right here on the previous lap and retook the position, and he's still there. This is, inc uh, this is incredible from Pedro Picanco. Oh, he's a dipped a wheel. Wide there. He's dipped a wheel. Is it enough? Smart Covicius can smell this. He's trying to go around the outside. This would be incredibly, if he pulls this off, has he done it? He has, I think and he's he has. capitalized on the tiniest mistake from Pedro, and hats off. Mantas, small, uh, small Cavicius, unbelievable, up to P2. Yeah, I fear I jinxed out. Pedro there, but still incredible driving from him to hold the inside line and run Mantas, small Cavicius side by side there. He's, uh, he can't be unhappy with this effort. They've had such an incredible day. Gaborgia and Zdravko Topolniak are one step away from the podium, but look at the way the car was fighting Gabor through there. Unbelievable. Having to work so hard to keep this car on the grey stuff, and you could just see how much time he lost there uh, because of that. But uh, yeah, the podium is in sight now. The podium is well and truly in his grasp. It is. Uh, Pedro Pekenko is right there behind Smelkovicius again. He was right on his bumper on the brakes coming into the final hairpin. We know Pedro is good through this corner, and he's got less downforce. We think he has a little bit less downforce than Smelkovicius. He just misses the tires. I don't think he's close enough to have the slipstream, but Pedro Pekenko not giving up. He's on the podium, but he's, he wants P2 really badly. Yeah, born to race P2. What a, what a, what a massive effort from them. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, 3.18 seconds to Yoni Cotillo, who, well, he's played his cards right. He was dealt a bad, bad hand after the incident uh, Nico had on the first lap, and so far, so good. This has but been an absolute like treat. Switch. I just want to say that. It's been an absolute treat to be involved in this race. Yeah, Gabor is Gabor there Gabor is now. closer, yeah. Gabor is closer to Pedro than Pedro is to Smokovicius. Well, if you want to prove what you've got in that tank, Gabor, now is the time to do it. I think that for Gabor, uh, tire, tire temperatures are the problem for now. They're yeah. just too, too hot for now. He talks the talk, now he's got to walk the walk. Yeah, Pedro Pekanko has his tires are in the perfect operating range. They are right where he wants them, but I think you are right. Um, Gabor, they're just a little bit warm. It'll be a lap or two, and they will be they will be exactly where he wants the maximum performance for Gabor, but he's got he he has to extract as much as he can from the car he has. And then and then use the extra pace that will come to him in a lap or two to try to get past Pedro Picanco, but I'm, I'm still just so impressed with Pedro Picanco running with running with the real giants of Live for Speed. Well, I mean, Pedro is really fast, and yeah. well, his, his teammate is a Fragmasters Fox and GTI champion for the two years in a row. Yeah, but he's holding his own right now. Um, he, He's holding his own and he did it from the back. <laughs> yeah, he belongs in this battle for sure. Um, and uh, well, it's coming to a four now. 20 minutes to go, uh, plus a lap. Here comes Yoni through the final chicane. Nicely does it. Then we've got Smelkovicius. Oh, goodness me, on the absolute edge. And Pekako and Gabor glued together. Yeah, and Gabor is there now. I think maybe Gabor has drift. He's got it. Yeah. Stravko talk us through it. Uh, he takes the draft and he's through. Yeah, pretty he goes for the, Yeah, he goes, <laughs> for the, he goes for the inside to lose the draft. I think if he doesn't make a mistake here, it should be okay. The problem is that Pikanko has less downforce, so better to stay offline as he does to avoid getting drafted back. I Who think breaks later? That's Pedro or Gabor? Done. Gabor always. <laughs> Well, Gabor, sure? breaks, <laughs> Gabor, Gabor breaks so late that I often think he will just crash into me when we <laughs> drive together. Yeah, he but, leaves that to you to crash into him. I feel like the last of the late breakers this race has been Isaac Price. I'm always absolutely 
flabbergasted by how late he goes on the brakes, but uh, ultimately very unlucky for him. Um, down to P5 after that tiny error, uh, just a little bit too wide at the first corner, and he got pulled onto the grass, and uh, a 3.7 second gap back to Pedro, 18 minutes. Um, we've seen crazier things happen. It's not an insurmountable gap, that, but it's going to be an effort. Yeah, I Pedro think it will be hard to the get there. the win, but podium is still on cards for Isaac. We saw his speed yeah. end of stint. If he can run that half a second lap faster, there's still like how many? Five laps? Even more than that? Yoni has just passed through the four second uh, buffer that he's got. He is not letting up. He is pushing absolutely to the limit and well we know what can happen to Yoni when he does that. Uh, We've seen that he is not um, unbreakable. So hopefully he just so, does what he needs to do. At the moment, this lap, fastest split two time, goes to Gabor. So there is speed coming to that car again. Yeah, Pedro Picanco, with a good exit here, is going to be on top of Gabor once again. Um, he was really good through that, that long sweeping left-hand bend. Gabor washed a little bit wide and had to come back on the circuit. And now Pedro is... Oh, Pedro clipped the tires. That's going to compromise his exit. And Gabor, you can see, stretching away now. Yeah, but smoke issues will be even harder to pass. Because yeah, of the does. low down force. Yeah, it does look like Yanni's got it done, but... I admire you guys for uh, for not quitting. You uh, you drove a mighty race to stay in contention, and then with a bit of luck, Gabor is there on the podium. Yeah, it might just happen. Well, it's uh, it'll be a story if it does. I mean, no one can take anything away from anyone here. Um, what a story we have. We follow Yoni Katilla who is holding that gap at 4 seconds, down to 3.9. So Pikanko has fallen off. And Ipsal yes, drops down, we are hearing. Yeah, he's dropped down behind Dennis. So um, the car that was in contention for the win earlier is dropping down the order. That's a shame. But uh, yeah, it, was, it happens. It was interesting, interesting how the 60 car, uh, with Dennis Flint driving, was giving their lap back. They lobbied with the stewards to say that um, they had come around and shouldn't lose one of the laps. They were discredited when they disconnected earlier, uh, and I guess uh, I guess they agreed uh, because oh, they were they promoted up to it looks like seventh position. Yeah, uh, he he, um, he was able to unlap himself on the recent safety car. Oh, I don't right, think, right, right, right. Um, yeah. I don't think they got a lap ahead, because by that logic, Gabor would be a lap ahead of everybody else then. I they think didn't get they, their lap back, yeah, yeah. They, they had yeah. to actually physically unlap themselves under the safety car. Their so they argument, got that, the yeah, argument that was, was that the timeout happened in the last sector. Mm. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, they would, they would need to finish the lap to get it. And yes, yeah, indeed. It, it, it's unlucky when it happens. I, at the start of the race, I stopped seeing cars in the last chicane. So on my PC, I actually crossed the finish line. But when I saw the lap count, I just knew that the server didn't see it. And it's a desperate shame. It doesn't happen to you very often, but that's one of the only things that we cannot control in sim racing. It's well, our hardware failure. Now that, now that the race is a bit neutralized, I can tell you a story about how I actually bought a new internet package just for this race because the new apartment oh, no. where I am <laughs> has, has bad internet <laughs> and basically gave 60 euros just to have a Wi-Fi modem with SIM card connected to USB to my PC that nothing else uses <laughs> and it died. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> you can't predict that. No. Nope. Yeah. 
I, I wanted I wanted to connect it to my phone, but then the power connector started having troubles and disconnections. So I was like, okay, let's spend money just to make sure I don't get a disconnect. You can never make sure. Not enough yeah. money in the world for that, unfortunately. Uh, but there we are. Yoni is doing everything he needs to do at the moment. And uh, I, I wish I was a fly on the wall in wherever Nico Pantola is right now, because I bet his jaw is on the floor. I bet he can't I doubt believe it. it. Is. Yeah, the two of them have run together so many times. And um, I mean, when we when we ran the 24 hour um in in august or september whenever it was a few months ago um yoni like nico was strong and I mean, everyone on our team was strong and then we put we put uh yoni in the car and he just blew everyone else away he is so much more talent well he's so much more talented than anyone we were running with a few months ago um and in this race you know he is he's competitive with all of these guys at the front but He's I mean, today. He's just he has that little bit more, a bit of luck to get up to the front uh, with safety cars. But now that he's there in clean air, you can see, you know, Yoni's just just that tiny fraction better than everyone else, and he's stretching his legs in front of the very best drivers in the game. Yeah, we're we're pretty sure that no one has to pit, right? I think we've got a replay actually. I'll, uh, hold that thought. Um, a replay from Ipsal. Here it comes. Uh, seeing what happened to him a couple of laps ago. Apparently, it was the same place where he had trouble before. Yes, it will be. It will be at this hairpin. Um, yeah, it looped it again. So, same place. This is the second time he's managed to um, partially spin the car there, losing another place. Yeah, it's unfortunately qu quick quick thinking by him and nicely done to uh to quickly loop the car out of the way of Dennis Lind who was coming through behind him. And Gabor, I'm watching Gabor while uh yeah, Isaac's Isaac's been hard done by. We see him mm. on screen now. One he's catching. mistake is he is catching. He's he's catching, but one one little mistake has unraveled his race. Gabor has he picked up more damage. Or is that the yeah, same damage I don't think he has. Yeah, I think okay. that's the same damage he's had. They did a repair under the safety car earlier in the rear of that car getting away from him just as we switched. I think he got it. Yeah, he did catch it. Gabor has uh, Gabor has got that interval under one second. He hasn't had it below one second for a couple laps. No quit, but the drivers ahead of him are just so fast. Yannick Attila nearly has a five-second gap over Metta Smokovicius. I think the best that Gabor can hope for is second, but he has so much work to do to close this one second gap. If you take a look at the chat in YouTube, um, we have a an insight into how Nico Pintola is feeling. Get in there, Yoni, he says. <laughs> Happy boy. Yeah, and uh, up and down race. Nico also says Galvan is my driver of the day, the safety car driver. <laughs> hey, he's done a fine job. He has done a fine <laughs> all, job. All credit to him. Uh, I think that's not the cause of your success here, Nico, but uh, a symptom of it. So, Hermi is Zanella. Loco has connected. I don't know if he's going to be taking over that car or if he's just spectating because oh, the we're car is in on the end of the, the race. race for a long time. Yeah, so I assume... Oh, yeah, I forgot that it had. I, mean, yeah. I guess he's just watching because he can at this point. Yeah, it's you a shame. I mean, not... yeah, it's a shame that he never got to drive the car, of course. You, you, you do all the prep for for an endurance race, and if the car is uh, out before you get the chance to, to join in, it is a, it does feel a, a bit of a blow, but, you know, it such does. is the way sometimes in, in endurance racing. Yeah, and I think, I think the joke's on us now because we'd thrown a little bit of shade on... Uh on Isaac the 99 early in the race because they had gone backward when um, when uh, when Haraloko and it when their team was doing so well uh, and now the uh, oh how the turn tables mm -hmm. Isaac Isaac uh, a bit of rough luck to fall down to fifth pace after you know inheriting the lead but certainly in a better spot than uh, than Jeremy Zanella Yeah, 
this gap from second to third, just rubber banding around one second. Gabor gets it down to eight tenths or nine tenths, and then Mantis extends it a little bit. Is there, Strafko, is there anything Gabor can do that he is not already doing? Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, maybe, 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 maybe it will sound harsh, but he can, uh, you know, he can stop overdriving the car because that's what he's doing. <laughs> I love it. He's he's oh. overdriving it, and uh, that's why the tires are hot and the uh, apexes are missed and the exits are wide, as you see it now. Yeah, and it all loses time. Speaking from experience, there's yeah, the, I mean, the I mean, thing. it's hard. You know, yeah. it's hard. I, I understand it's hard because uh, we've been waiting for five and a half hours for a safety car to come into the fight, and uh, you wanna give all you can. Uh, yeah. But reality is, setup is made for tires to be perfect on lap 30 of a stint, and having only 20 laps of a stint is not helping. We went for a slow, slow early phase, very fast end phase of a race, and here we will end the race with a middle phase, and that's just not quick enough for Gabor's liking. We said that, but he got a good run out of the final corner. He is, uh, he's ticked the gap down by three tenths. Speaking from of gaps, the previous trip, Isaac Price, yeah, yeah on the topic of gaps, has yeah. uh, has done a lot of work on Pedro Picanco. A Pedro Picanco has been holding it pretty steady, but Isaac Price is going to catch him. Isaac Price done the fastest final sector on the previous lap. Unbelievable! Five five hours and forty, what fifty four minutes in, and he's setting fa fastest sectors. Crazy yeah, way. we can see yeah, one of the gum garage machines getting well out of the way of the leaders up ahead of them, and he is catching Pedro Pekenko by a rate of knots. Now down to one second, and if you look at the tires on Isaac's machine, he doesn't have much time left. There's seven, six and a half minutes left in the race, good for three laps, maybe four, depending on when the leader crosses the line. Um... Pedro Pekanko gets the benefit of a little bit of slipstream. Ooh, the gum oh, garage oh. did well to get out of Isaac's yeah. way. Good, uh, awkward, good awareness. Awkward spot to catch him. Yeah. And Isaac's tires in perfect condition to set the fastest laps of the race. I I expect Isaac, uh, I think Isaac may have a fastest lap in his hands here before the race is done. Yeah, but you know that Pedro will not give up easily. Three laps before end, you're gonna fight with everything you've got. Battle here between Lachidi and Michael Malik, and uh, this has been brewing for a little while. We've been reluctant to turn the cameras away from the lead for obvious reasons, uh, but here we go a fight happening. And another fight that may be brewing. These two will go side by side into this corner, Ooh. side by side through the corner. Michael Malik <laughs> wisely gives away. <sighs> That's a great uh, But pass. further ahead, Gabor yeah. is now much closer to Mentis Malkovicius than he has been. It's about six tenths gap. Gabor carrying more downforce, as we've talked about uh, for much of this race. He needs a good run out of this corner. Gets it. Just misses the tires. Pretty good run. Smolkovicius got a good exit from the corner, too. I think I think Gabor is listening to the stream. That's a f much faster lap than he used to pose before. Four yeah. tenths faster than Smolkovicius. And Isaac Price is the quickest of the lot. He did a 26-1. Yeah, the gap is less down to less than a second to um, Picanco, but four minutes 30 remaining. He really needs to... I mean, it's gutting, honestly, that potentially a podium isn't on the cards for Isaac because I feel like they definitely deserve it after the race they've had. But such is life. What can he manage? What can he, what can he salvage from this race? Can he manage to get past the Road Appraiser team? Hard to say, but ahead of these two, Isaac is closing, but Gabor is even closer. Um, we uh, we have a trophy dash on our hands. The uh, these drivers who have who were working with somewhat extended gaps for the last 10 or 15 minutes now closing it up to give us a grandstand finish. Gabor kind of a rough exit out of the chicane. He didn't get through the second hairpin very well, so he's lost a little bit of time. But into those hairpins, he was right under the rear of Mentis Malkovicius's car. And we have the same thing brewing right here with Isaac Price and Pedro Picanco. 
Isaac very close now. Oh, Look how so late on the brakes. It's so, so impressive. Yeah, this is where it's tricky for him because he has to contend with a low downforce. Not as much downforce on Pedro Picanco's car either, but he has the benefit of clean air in front of him. So Isaac just needs to use as much of the tire and the mechanical grip as he can to get through here cleanly. Get right under the rear of that car, which it looks like he has done if he can keep it tight through this bend. He should. It looks like he has a good run out of this bend. Perfect run out of that corner to get right under the rear of Pedro Picanco's car. If he gets a good exit out of the final chicane, I think he has a shot here. Gabor has fallen back a little bit from Menta Smelk Vicious. So this is this is the race right here. Late on the brakes again, using the rear, using the rear break? of the car to turn it in. Oh my goodness. Well you you predicted that someone might do that. Do you think he did? I I wasn't looking that hard at the dash, so I didn't see it, but it looked like that. Or maybe just a just a good setting on a diff to just throw the rear of the car. Here he comes. He has the draft. That's that's so much over speed. What can Pedro do now? Nothing. Easy. Job done. Absolutely unbelievable. Isaac so Price takes about. Yeah, sorry. Matis Kamalkovicius had a back marker. The back marker jumped out of the way, but it did let Gabor catch ever so slightly. I don't think he's close enough to make a move here. He won't be, unless he's a hero on the brakes. He'll take a late entry in the corner to try to get a good exit and tuck right under the rear of the number 23 born to race car. I don't think he's quite close enough. Ooh, well, he's he got was... a good exit out of the hairpin and the and the chicane. But he's got higher downforce. It's not going to come to him, is it? Not here. Yeah. The best running bet, out of laps, The yeah. best bet is to just be close at the exit of Sector 2. And I think this will be the final lap of the race. Yoni Katilla coming we'll through. We'll have one more after this. Is it not yeah. plus one? Okay, interesting. Yeah, so it's the, right. the lap. Yeah, the lap ending after time expires is the final lap of the race. And there are, there's one minute remaining now. So Yoni Katilla coming through this fast sequence of bins. He might just start another lap, but it will be close. Oh, it's going to be, exactly. I mean, our timer is slightly behind, yeah. we think, uh, by maybe a second or two. So we'll, we'll have to see. Unbelievable. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on Yoni Katilla at the front. There's four seconds close. remaining in close. the race. But we will watch this battle with Gabor, who is right behind Mentis Malkovic, just now coming into the final corner. I think we're he watching might this have battle. Drift now. I think he does. We'll watch this battle and we'll watch the clock with Yoni. Yoni's at the final hairpin. This is going to be too close to call. We might have to stay with Yoni here. Uh, we will get classification. We'll keep an eye. Chris is on the Chris is on the clock. Uh, we'll see what happens. But here we go. Yanni is coming through to start one He's... more lap, unless Ooh. he jumps on the brake. One more lap. Yanni's crossing the line, so Gabor has one more lap to try to get Manta Smolkovicius. Take us around with your teammate, Stravko. Well, he's trying <laughs> to get a tight line. He's, as Isaac Price sets on your fastest lap, point 0.25.48. He's only two seconds lap. behind the podium. Two seconds. Do we yeah, expect Gabor, somebody to crash now? As Gabor I don't, if goes Gabor, through, if Gabor goes for end it. of the dress. Yeah. Yeah, if Gabor can Gabor catch Mantis the and edge. they come together. Yeah. Hope not. <laughs> yeah, I certainly not. Yeah, no, not now. That would be too much. Um, well, the high downforce sections are on their way, but not before we go down another long straight. Can Smalkovicius for Born to Race hold on to P2 ahead of the team that were billed as being the team to beat here. This will be an absolutely amazing effort from Mantas if he can do it. And, uh, you know, we cannot discount the effort that Yoni Cotilla and Nico Bantola have put in here. Six seconds now in the lead. You can just see Yoni disappearing off of shot. This is the final lap. He just needs to nurse that car around up one and a half sectors. Uh, but we're going to keep our cameras firmly focused on this battle for now. Can Gabor catch Smolkovicius in the sweepers here? 
He was really quick into the right-hand bend, and you can see him fighting with the steering wheel, trying to put the power down here. No lift on the way out of the corner. Now this is where he has to use the downforce and oh, just maximize the performance. Oh, no! He's, he's turning off the traction control and trying to get advantage with that. It's not working out. He's changed the formula on the final lap. And Isaac Price is right there. He's going to be livid with himself. And, and, uh, and the, you know, just the way this race has panned out, the gap down to two seconds um, to the podium. And honestly, you couldn't have wished for a more entertaining race here. Um, I'll take it to the end. Yoni Cotilla and Nico Pantola. Very fast monkey sport. Just one chicane to go before they cross the line in what has been one of the most entertaining and drama-filled races in recent times in Live for Speed. Take a bow. The number 77 weaves its way to the line, and it is Yoni Cotilla who takes the win. A very well-deserved win at that. Smalkovicius will have P2. Born to race, take P2 in the race. Gabor and Zdravko, congratulations on P3 when it looked like it was all going wrong. Isaac Price, well, I feel like he's been robbed. Him and Vitalis Lugutskas for rejected by Yaroloko Esports. Uh, a little bit robbed. He'd set the fastest lap of the race, a 2.25.4 on that final lap. That is unbelievable. Pedro that is Bicanco, a stunning lap. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Pedro Picanco, P5, and we'll let the other cars finish while we discuss this. I mean, this race had everything. Yeah, all of it. Uh, we... Yeah, a, a fairly a fairly typical endurance race in the early and middle running. A little bit of shuffling in the order. You know, some cars, you know, cars that ran in the front for for a lot of the distance uh, and and managed really well. Um, a sprint race at the end after a couple of safety cars. Um, what an effort from from Rota Preza. Pedro Picanco was and. Uh, um, and his teammate, the Rota Preza drivers, up there at the bare front, Teo, his teammate, ran as high as second position from 24th on the grid. Incredible effort from them to take a top five. Um, I, I don't think there's any more I can say than that you haven't already, Pete. Like, this this race had everything. And a, just an insane finish from Yoni Cotilla to stay in it and then and then take the win. This will be your final car, Sanchez, who is approaching the final chicane now. Zdravko, any thoughts on uh, on on this? I know you're probably a bit. Uh, well, how do you feel about your podium, first of all? Well, considering everything, happy about it. Yeah, um, no reason not to be. Yeah, considering we were a lap down five hours into the race, it's not a bad return. Absolutely not. Now, before we have a, uh, a very special thing happen, um, we had better get through our uh, results for this race. The final classification for the race is as follows. Had a bit of a technical difficulty. Sorry about that. We'll bring the, uh, we're getting the, the results ready now. There you go. Pete's got it. Very fast monkey sport with Yannick Attila and Nico Pantola at the wheel. Take the top spot. First position for them. Born to race in second and rounding out the podium. Yes, motorsports. That's good. Gabor and Zdravka Deponiak, who were down a lap in the early running. Lucky break with a safety car. I managed to get back on the lean lap and secure a podium. Rejected by Haraloko Esports in fourth. Rota Preza from 24th on the grid to finish fifth. Number 10 furtive racing car in sixth position with Nitor Velox in seventh. Another furtive racing machine finishing eighth. Team side is far off the pace. Rick Carlo, one of the drivers of that machine, finishing in ninth position and rounding out the top 10. We have Furtive Jr. Take us through the rest of it, Pete. Uh, where are we up to? Top 10, yeah? I finished the top 10. Brilliant. Uh, P11, we have the number 11, Furtive Racing, starting where they finished, finishing where they started. Uh, Imbica Racing, number two, finishing in 12th. Then Race Green Autosports, Ferret Motors, Road Appraiser Racing Team, went up, they asked in SimSports after causing a couple of VSCs with uh, issues in the gravel. Then it's the two Team America teams, 17th and 18th. MRC Brazil, finishing in 19th. Gum Garage, in 20th. 
Uh, and Jaco, why don't you take the uh, the final screen? Why not? So in position twenty one, we got car forty three gun garage, followed by uh, cars that did not finish the race. We have car thirty, thirty junior with eighty five laps down. Fifth, car fifty six lost connection. Do you know? Did they lost connection? Uh, car number fifty six lost connection team. <laughs> Uh, I believe they were, if I recall, they were asked to leave. They were black oh, left. Oh, okay. I don't think so anyway. they, were, they were denied the connection. So in position 24, we have 75 Lincoln Racing. And in position 25, we do not have my team. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh... yeah. This, <laughs> we drove this race twice. <laughs> uh, so posi real position 25 is no real position 25 is I think in Bika Racing 0 2 yeah, yeah I think we I think we've had a mix up with the graphics here and a bit of the timing so sorry about that bottom three are discounted only 24 cars finished so yeah 24 finishes um, you anyway, gave me a hard of, job <laughs> yeah enough of that look what we have at this oh, that's sweet here um just just to put into perspective the amount of effort that went into this race i mean look at this podium presentation that the uh the the, the guys and girls at um argentina turismo have put together for us i mean uh yeah can you even i can't even yeah this is an incredible mod to uh to make to make little little placards and a trophy out of uh out of live for speed cars uh, the uh, I'm I'm really pleased with the polish on this presentation. This looks really good, and the cars uh, the cars have managed to end up on the podium in pretty good nick too. Um, that uh, that born to race car has has been through uh, has been through a lot, but looks pretty good behind the uh, the scenery there. It does indeed. So Yoni Katilla in the middle there, uh, with Snarkovicius on the right and Gabor in front of shot. And, uh, well, that brings to a close what has been an absolutely epic race. And lucky for us, we have someone joining us in the commentary box now. It is a Mr. Katilla. Yoni, amazing. What an ace. <laughs> yeah, congrats. I mean, well, after the beginning, Nico got tapped by Isaac, so... You have some bad luck, and you have some good luck in the end, and you'll be in the race. So I can't be more than happy. Yeah. So talk us, talk us through your your emotions after. Uh, well, I mean, the lights went out, and basically everything went wrong almost immediately. What was the mood in camp like at that point? And was was there a was there a plan immediately to get out of the of the doom? No, I was actually having lunch with my parents at the time, so <laughs> I just saw the start and had a laugh and came home and yeah, it is what it is, it happens, so we just try our best to recover what we can and we hope for safety car earlier, obviously. But obviously, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the perfect timing for us, actually. A number of people were praying for a safety car early on and it didn't happen until very late and then when you are, well, when one comes along, they will come along at once, we've got another one and that's the point at which you um, took over the, the front of the race and uh, and that was that in the end. So uh, a good deal of luck, but you had to be there to take advantage of it. So congratulations, Yoni. Um, how does this go down in your kind of LFS book of of, uh, of wins that you've racked up? Is it one of the sweeter ones? Uh, one of the more dramatic ones, I guess. <laughs> sure. But I enjoyed my time, Nicole. So, so yeah, thanks for the Argentinians for the organization. And yeah, see you next time, maybe. Absolutely. I think Travis has a question. Hey, Yoni. Anya Tulit. I had to uh, step away for a second. Congratulations. That was, uh, you're now, you've now done the 30 hours of winning uh, endurance races. <laughs> that has to feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the night I mean in the books. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done to you. That was an impressive job. Thank you. All right, let's see if uh, if Michael Malik is up for having a chat. He completed the race solo. Michael, are you with us? Hi there, can you hear me? We can. Hi. Sorry, we tried to talk to you during the race, but we figured you must be very, very busy. 
six hours solo, how do you feel? I feel great. My back doesn't feel so great, but I enjoyed the race despite <laughs> having no practice beforehand and it was full of lot of uh, up, ups and downs and I'm satisfied with the way it went in the end. A uh, little upset with losing the position to race green of the sports in the final laps, but it is what it is and it was a great racing today. Absolutely. Really? Um, you, yeah, you brought your car home in 14th, so that's very respectable. Yeah, yeah, considering when I was starting, it's a very pleasant uh, result. Yeah, yeah. early on in the race, uh, you had a big off that damaged the car in a way we have not seen before. Uh, and you gave us an entirely new experience. Um, and it uh, looked like it might have been a bit of a handful, but I think you recovered pretty well. Did it, like, what, what happened that took you off? And then, and then how did you manage it after that? Well, there were uh, multiple collisions with not so competent guys who had uh, troubles to go straight in the straight line. So I, I had some offs which sent me to the wall and luckily made only cosmetic damages. But it kind of forced me to use the uh, hood view because uh, from inside the cockpit I didn't see much. So of course, because the car was going great, uh, I didn't uh, repair it until the f full safety car because I would be losing time, but uh, I had to use a different view. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for you, Michael. But uh, yeah, hats off to you for doing the entire thing solo. We know you like to do it. Um, it the first stint, I think, was, was the point at which um, everything came undone. I, I think that's the, the case for a number of teams. Obviously, the conditions with the wind putting everyone off, um, they didn't really know what to do with it. So you had your issues at the beginning, and then it kind of just settled down. It, yeah, it took some time to get used to the wind, uh, especially in one turn that's uh, in the second sector when you when there's the historic uh, fast right-hander and you, you take uh, some sort of uh, quick left-right chicane, it was really difficult with the current wind and I, I went off there like two times on my own, so it cooked me uh, quite a few times, but eventually everyone got used to it and we saw quite a clear race afterwards. Epic stuff. Well, thanks for joining us in the commentary box. Sorry we couldn't talk to you during the race. Um, we know you've been here the whole time, um, but yeah. How does this rate for you in, in terms of the LFS endurance races that you've done in the past? Well, just, just to make it clear, I, I did hear you, but I had some messed up uh, sound settings, so... You couldn't you are... adjust them while driving, yeah. Uh, not really when driving and when trying to catch the safety mm -hmm. car, but yeah, that was the reason why I wasn't very uh, responsible. But I did hear you. Uh, anyway, in, uh, I think this was a great experience, and I think everybody knows that I'd like to make it what, 20 to 24 hours race one day solo. So <laughs> let's see what the future brings. You are a crazy, crazy man. Thank you very much uh, to you, Yoni, and to you, Michael, for joining us in the commentary box. Congratulations again, Yoni. Uh, you and Nico must be thrilled with that. Uh, any final words from either of you before we before we sign off? See you next time. Please, no wind. <laughs> Fair enough. Yoni has spoken. Um, let's race. Sounds good to me. Let's race. Well, we've just finished. Let's have a break for, a, for an evening, and then maybe we can pick it up on Monday. Uh, thanks, boys. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Travis, Strav Stravko, uh, that's been the six hours of Aston. Any final thoughts while, after listening to the interviews that we just had? I'm a bit sleepy, uh, but the right, timing yeah. is good. I get to enjoy more racing today. Uh, I'm, I'm just getting started. It's only noon here, so um, that was absolutely worth it. I had a blast with you guys. That was an incredible race, uh, and I hope we do it again soon. I hope we don't wait uh, another, was it seven or eight months between between Kyoto while, yeah. and this? Yeah, we, we, gotta, we need to do another one of these soon because these are, these are fantastic. Excellent racing, and I, uh, I really enjoy covering them, spending the day with you guys. I echo that. Stravko? Yeah, I echo what Harry said. Hopefully, hopefully we get another one sooner. I like I like driving those. And it's it's nice to see a big race where like many good drivers come to drive. Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been one of those events. It, uh, everyone's come together. We've had a good day. Uh the results were well, should we say not everyone had the day they were expecting, especially at the beginning of the day. 
beginning of the race. Uh, it, it turned itself upside down and then again towards the end. Um, we have a lot of thank yous to say, of course. We need to say a massive thank you to the Argentina Turismo team for all of the preparation, all of the work that they put into organising this event. And obviously thank them for having us along, really, for the six hours of Aston. Um, you know, got to thank you guys, uh, Chris, uh, Stravko, Owen, Travis. Thank you very much for joining me in the commentary box for this. And a massive thanks to the enormous audience that we had today. Um, we had a, a staggering number of viewers across both Twitch and YouTube, so that's awesome to see. Um, and last but, le but, last but not least, uh, we have to thank uh, New Dimension Racing, who obviously support the event and allow us to um, you know, uh, do some cool things with the stats behind the scene and uh, controlling the race. And no, I didn't forget them. The drivers, we, we appreciate you massively. Uh, obviously, without this, we can't race. Um, and you put on a show for us today, and we're very thankful. This one will go down in the history books. All right, that just about does it. Uh, we will say thank you very much to everyone, and we will wish you a very happy rest of your weekend. And we will see you on the next one. From all of us here at Sim Broadcast, we hope you have a great evening. Thanks for joining us. Bye.